Hello there. You figured out how this works? to tournament stream.
Chaz Cash, you're aware that you're muted, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, Yever and I just finished our game, so uh, we've all moved over to here now, and they're, they're listening to us talk like gentlemen. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. And different people are going to be jumping in this channel uh, to talk. So anyone on stream who uh, thinks someone's too loud or too quiet, just let me know, and I'll turn them up or down in Discord. If I accidentally click a different channel, it moves me to that straight away. There's no asking if I want to leave this one. It's very annoying. Yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a stupid idea. <laughs> I'm I'm hyped to see these brackets. It's going to be interesting. When are you When are you doing the shuffle itself? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Excellent. So that is a seven minute warning for everybody who wants to get a cup of tea, coffee. Hot chocolate, or if you fancy like me, a mocha. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try and shuffle the brackets on the stream, and then we could probably go through and just uh, have a look before the tournament starts, and just uh, see which games are going to be interesting. You can uh, make predictions on challenge as well. So oh, that's you, a good point. Yeah, a few people did it for the the BA Cup. You can make predictions for all the all every single round of who you think is going to win, and you get points for guessing it correctly. It's pretty cool. I better sign up then. Um, anyone who wants to jump in the voice chat, say some words now and then, or just like, you, you don't have to speak, just if you've got a decent microphone, you speak English, you just want to chill, um, I think you can put a request in on this channel. And then we should be able to accept and you'll be able to sit in and speak whenever. Mm. Show request. Okay, I've not used this before. Okay, uh, but do you see request to speak? Boom. Alright, but do you should you be able to now. join now. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've so, never used I mean, this before, so hopefully it works out okay. Well, let, let's start with a, a question here. Should Badosu be required to rename himself to Bad Sue? Because, I mean, that's how it should be spelt, in my opinion. It's I bad, think he made bad a type to a, He's a Bad Osu player. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah yo. <laughs> okay, a voice in Twitch sounds good. Cool. <laughs> Right, I've got an I've got an account on challenge now, so I can start making predictions once the shuffle happens. Okay, right, I'll make I'm you a, an admin as well. If you, if oh, you thanks. yeah, if you is it just um, Typhoon? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you should Typhoon. be able to um, manage the brackets and report scores for people that um, missed it. All right, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so pe people can report their own scores. So when you finish a game, just go on challenge, and I'm not sure exactly how you do it because it's been a while, but. You should be able yeah, to click on the game that you played and then put in lost or won or whatever and uh, it should should handle all that stuff automatically. Yeah, it looks like I've got admin abilities that I can move stuff around but I can't set any scores yet because obviously it's not started. Right, I'm going to go AFK and get my hot drink. I'll be back shortly. Cool.
Okay. It's almost time. Excellent. I'm ready. Right. Let's do it. Okay, clicking the button. Alright. Uh let's see. Right, it's done. Alright, so for people watching, these are the brackets. These are the final matchups that are gonna be happening. Right, what we got? What we got? I'm just taking a screenshot. Teddy and Duck Duck. So yeah, that's gonna be an interesting one. Sorry, Duck Duck. Katouche versus Berith, that should be a good one. Oh, there's some good games here. Mm, very much so. It's quite split though, actually. It's quite. There's not. Um, all the good players, all the best players are quite split. Yeah, Johannes versus Mighty Sheep is another good matchup. Ah, yeah. Sweet, okay. So, um, for the players, just uh, find who your opponent is, message them on Discord or the lobby or whatever, and get set in a game in a lobby ready to play. Anyone with any kind of issues, message Jazz Cash or someone else who he tells you to, and they'll get look into it straight away. Yeah, I, I'll um, I'll probably be busy streaming games for a lot of it, but if you just put a message in, I'll probably I'll probably look at the stream chat more than anything else. So I'll try uh, to keep it on tournaments then. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Feel free to reach me at Badozo as well if you need anything. Cool. With regard to your results of your match. Adam's got the first question, he just sent it to me directly. How can he find his opponent? Yeah, so if you if you check the brackets that I'm showing on stream at the no, moment. He, he knows who his opponent is in the brackets, he's not sure where they are in bar. Oh, if um I think most people's Discord names are um the same as the ones on, on challenge, but um mm. yeah, if you just try finding them on the on the bar Discord. Um uh, just send them a message but yeah, jump into a lobby yeah. to make sure that you're ready for them as well. So that way you can point them towards the lobby that you're in. Yeah, if everyone could just sit in a in an empty lobby ready, and uh, yeah, just message each other to organise which which lobby you're going to be using, which uh, server. No. The only ones I see a discrepancy mostly is Johannes. I know it's Midfit and Mighty Sheep. If I'm not mistaken, is wrong, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, Governor Touche is um, BA Governor, I think, on yes, Discord. Now, I've got the interesting decision of picking which games we want to watch. Because there's That's a lot of sets great. here. Um, yeah, Rag Ragnar versus Behrib seems like a good one. Yeah, that, that does seem like quite a good one. Although I don't want to just like follow the same people all the way through, so yeah, I want to try and get a good spread and, and see as many players as possible. But yeah, for the first round, um, who's Ragnar playing against? Zadka. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Teddy versus Duck Duck might be good. Yes. I'd be really interested to see how Mitwit goes. I've been losing some matches against him earlier in the week and uh, he has improved considerably over the last few days and he will be facing Drone. Yeah, that will be a good be one. An interesting one as well. Okay. The the winner the winner of um actually yeah, Teddy Teddy and Duck Duck, the winner of that plays against the winner of Katouche versus uh Behereth, so we could probably That's catch that in round two. Yeah. So, so yeah, we could watch we could watch uh, Mighty Sheep versus Johannes first. I think that'll be a well, good one. That. Right, let's see if we can find uh, find that lobby. Uh, 
I'm trying to find Duck Duck. Duck Duck's I found him. In... Oh, yeah, oh that's Duck Duck, yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got to download the game again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to experimental, it now downloads really quickly. Cool. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, actually, you, you can use the um, the battles section, the active battles section on the website to see all the lobbies and see who's sitting in, in lobbies waiting. That, that is a very well written feature. I mean, who made that, I wonder? Yeah, that's an <laughs> awesome page. Well programmed. Uh, yeah, whoever made that, like that really knows what yeah. they're doing. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, you know, the, the, that was the first step of we're going to drag bar beyond what it's currently at. You know, incremental changes are great. Jazz Cash came in. Yeah, you know what? I fancy something completely different. Yeah, you know me, taking it yeah. to the next level. Oh, looks like Teddy has joined the um, the EU00 to play against Duck Duck. Okay, I can see drones sitting in the lobby, so uh, I'm just going to sit in there and, and wait. I should tell some of my friends to come watch the stream, actually, to see what they think of it. Maybe I'll wait for the first battle to get underway. So you're going to be watching Drone, you said, was it? Yeah. Drone versus Johannes. Oh, sweet. Which server is that on? Um, oh, I found, I found it, never mind. Okay, cool. Yeah, they, they keep on shifting is the, the most annoying part at the moment. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, I, I don't know if it's default, but if you do um, preset Tawny as a command, uh, when you join, then it should it should set up all the boxes and stuff as they're meant to be by default. Uh, just a comment: uh, Beharif versus Cartouche should start soon. Okay, if that starts first, then I'm down to uh, down to watch that one. Thirty cents for you. Okay, so it starts. In, well, yeah, I, I guess we could start early. Um, just just start when you're ready, I suppose, because there's no point waiting ten minutes. Um, no, no reason. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like several lobbies are ready to go at the moment. Okay, so I've got which, a... which one do you fancy watching first, then, Jazz Cash? I've got a game. I've got a I've got a game started now. I think it's the Drone versus Johannes one. Brilliant. All right, hopefully it works okay on the stream. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there we go. Yep, right, first game. Uh, okay. So the start boxes are going to be really interesting for this because usually people are used to fixed positions um, mm. where it, you start in the same place on every map, every game. Um, but yeah. I think start boxes are so much more interesting. Oh, yeah, agree. I think Quicksilver is a special case for this because uh, Middle is the most well balanced one, while the Peninsula and the Hill have interesting options as well. Yeah. So I think the, the options on Quicksilver are more varied. Yeah, I, I, for me personally, I think the middle is is probably probably the best spot because you've just got so much more map control when you take the middle early. I think starting in the corners time. puts you at a bit of a disadvantage in terms of territory. Yeah, you can see now why Whoa. I wanted to spec me to beat the game. This is uh, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a forward position. I've I've not seen this at all yet. That's no. so far forward. Yeah, he goes for very bold moves like this. Uh, it's really entertaining. Drone going with the three mech start, whereas Mitvik's going uh, with one mech, yeah, the... solar wind, and a bot lab. Absolutely, yeah. These are like polar opposite starts. Yeah. Looking forward to this. One thing to look for on Mitvik game style is that he likes to make it expand while forcing the opponent to retreat with the army from his pushes. So it's uh, something to look for if he's going to do here. But hmm. as I said, he often goes for a really unorthodox game style, so we might see anything here. 
What are your thoughts on the fact that both players are ARM and both are going bots first? I think ARM is a lot more... For me, I think it's a lot more aggressive just because of fleas and, and peewees are, are better at raiding and stuff. So if, I'm, if I want to be an aggressive player, I'll, I'll usually pick ARM. Yeah. Yeah, for see, see how early this fleas are. For your hand is in particular, I think it makes sense if he goes for the single max. Uh, especially if he can get around an LLT and we can see that drone has not yet, so midfit should be able to get one max here or two if like. Yeah, this is quite a greedy start from drone. And now he's gonna that have trouble defending good this. Response, though. Okay. I mean, the, he's, okay. He's denied him some power, but he's not taken out an actual max. Yeah, that's a pretty good defense. Yeah, with, with a peewee and a commander, the commander's midway through buildings, and that's that's a very good micro. So I think I think the greedy start from drone could definitely pay off it. I mean, to give some uh, to give some um, uh, analysis into the start there, drone's currently at seven hundred and ninety metal versus four hundred metal produced. That's a massive advantage at this stage of the game. And the position for mid is really good when you can make a rezzer, so you don't need to invest a lot into energy, especially if you're in a stable position. So I think that might be a factor here from drone. So drone, yeah, drone doesn't actually know where mid bit started, so I think he's no. just like he's just scouting around for now. He's probably guessed that he's in the corner at this point. Yeah, he's he's all the units are coming from that direction. Yeah. Either he can teleport units or he's uh, started there. I think he's really surprised. He's going to be surprised by the fact that there's a constructor here already. Oh, I got reclaimed! Oh, that was nice. Cool. That was good. Oh, uh, there's some peewees sneaking through though. Oh, if they can get up the hill, which is what he's going to think of So there. there's there's no defense here from Mitvit against these peewees. There's no LLTs. Yeah. So this could do a lot of damage. This could be game though. Yeah, if Mitvit does not close this hill as soon as possible, it's probably over. He's done for, I think. This was a big gamble, and it seems it did not work out as much as expected. He, he's just lost an LT, two windmills, two solars, and two mexes, I think. Sorry, one solar. Yeah, it will be very hard to recover from power this and metal. Drone, on the other hand, you know, he's, he's obviously just using up all his metal. Uh, drone's producing seven versus bits three of metal as well. Yeah, this is, this is going to be game. Yeah, I think this one's done. That was a cool start though. That was nice to see yeah. something a bit different. Even if it didn't work yeah. out. I mean, he's not giving up just up now, he has. That's a forfeit. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that's a quick game. Let's see um see what else we got going on. So we can do, um Bereth versus got... BA Governor. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably quite a good one. Okay, I'm gonna try and jump into that. It's currently the most watched game at, uh, game by the active battle screen. Yeah, so if any anyone has got any games they want to see in particular, just let me know and I'll I'll jump to those after we finish each game. So, yeah, Katush, I think. I think Katush, I would say, is probably one of the, the favourites for sure to win this because he's he's got such a good record in, in tournament history. In, so Katush uh, is BA governor, I assume then. Yeah, yeah, so he's been he's been playing for a long time and he's he's been winning tournaments for ages in BA. And uh, bar isn't the same as BA, but it I'd say the skill set is, is is pretty much the same. The units are are very similar. There's there's balance balance tweaks and changes and stuff, but I think, you know, if if he if he gets warmed up and, you know, if he, if he's had a bit of practice, which I don't think he has, but if he's practiced at all, then he should be quite comfortable in these early rounds. Well, he's got two chevrons, so he's got at least several hours of gameplay, so he must be at least familiar with the tier one units, which, let's face it, in a, a map like this, is probably all you need. Yeah. I think the bigger discrepancy is going to be present uh, most of the scene for the BA players. Otherwise, I agree, for T1 is pretty much the same. So 
So, obviously, I'm looking at uh, the start here. So, Behereth's gone for an NLT before even a factory. What are your thoughts on that? That is super defensive. Um, I think I don't mind it so much because if, if you're going for a greedier start where you're getting all three mexes um, and potentially starting vehicles, I don't know if he will, but if you're getting all three mexes, it's it's nice because if the opponent does a, a really quick rush like um, we saw last game, where one mechs into a into a bot lab, and if they're armed as well, then you, fleas come in so early. So yeah, drone did quite well last game with a similar setup. But he skipped the LLT and went for a peewee instead, which fortunately worked out really well for him. But I think I think the LLT start is fine. I wouldn't go for two. I think I think one is fine, but two is pushing it a bit. Because you're spending, yeah, it's just, you're spending that early time and that early metal on stuff that isn't directly winning you the game. It's just a, a sort of defensive move. Mm. I think they're just. Uh, Ragnar has just posted in tournaments saying that his opponent is missing. Okay, well, if people are missing, well, the official tournament start time is right now is um, 1500 UTC. But um, yeah, if people don't turn up for 15 minutes, um, then they automatically drop their first game and will go down to losers. I've just replied to Ragnar to let him know what the situation on that one is. Okay, it seems we're back to the game. Okay, right. Yep. Let's see if I can what their strategies are. So, Behereth, he's actually looking up the hill there. And Governor is as well. They both the other starts on the hill, whereas actually it's a, it's a mirror star position. Yeah, this is quite an even start, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think... Mean, I think it makes sense, you know, these guys, they want to be conservative on the best of one. They don't gain anything by trying to be cheap. So Katusha is controlling the map with these with these few fleas. He can um, get information of what Bereth's doing and when he's expanding. Whereas Bereth has so, only got one. So if you're in Behemoth's position, you know, you know that your opponent is sending some fleas about, obviously you can see a handful of them, but you can assume that they're, they're watching you. What do you do? Do you do you push out gently in multiple directions? Do you spearhead one direction? I think... I think here, the, uh, uh, in the middle start, you start in the middle because you want the middle control. Mm. So I think getting to the middle of the map as soon as possible is probably a good idea. People usually push with their commanders like Katusha is doing now take that control, get a radar in the middle, gives you full information about what they're doing. Whereas, yeah, if, 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 you, if you're if you against someone that started on the cliff, then you just you just want to expand everywhere and, and box them in, I think. Yeah. So, Katusha's start was, um, was quite risky, because he didn't, he didn't get an early LLT in his base. He just had one PV to defend. He sent all the three flees that he made over being aggressive with them rather than defensive. So yeah. I think he was sort of counting on on Bereth being a bit safer and not doing anything too cheesy. And it should which pay off. Which fortunately for him, which fortunately for him was the case. And um, it's really interesting that Cartouche has uh, trying to secure the mid position on the map at the moment. He should be able to, perhaps, if he's able to close the North Passage, to get his side of the map. Yeah, I think he's going to be able to draw a line through the middle here, quite nicely. Behari tried to take on Max there, but Kartush was able to deny the insertion of these. And you can see that uh, Kartush is also be escorting his expanding instructor at the left side. Well, I think he's pretty safe. I think Cartouche might get uh, some earlier economy advantages at the moment. And I'm not sure what Barif is doing. Maybe he's going for a snipe. He's accumulating a lot of QEs. Yeah, I don't know what this... This looks like he's just trying to build up a big army and maybe take Cartouche by surprise. Um, it could be just that he's looking to win a decisive battle. Rezor will claim the difference and then 
use that as a, a springboard into winning. Yeah, I, I, I've yeah, seen this quite a lot, where people build up a little mass of units in their base without revealing them on radar, and then you, you can just take people by surprise. Mm. But it, it is, yeah, you definitely have to do well with this, because if he doesn't, then he, he's sort of, he's given up a lot of map control. Massively, the uh, Petrusha is in 25% mech in the moment, it doesn't matter produced. And those, those deaths are happening by Petrusha's base, so that's a risky strategy. Yeah, this is this is metal donated nope. if he wins. Nope, nope, that cartouche does not have any LOT at the base. So not at all, actually, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. This can do a lot of damage. Yeah, those four windows are pretty close together as well. Okay, okay. I, that wasn't as sure devastating as I thought it could have been, but um... Yeah, the problem, the problem is the exploding structures. If the, your units are too close of them, you lose the PV, so... Yeah, yeah you have so to be, be careful. Important. He's gonna but try they it again. Are unequal... They are on equal metal income now, and it seems that he, Cartouche, uh, Arif has more metal on the field at the moment. That third seems a little bit unprotected, okay. He's supporting it now. It seems, it seems the, the game is stabilizing now after that, that attack. Both players are on similar incomes. Yeah, Beth is starting to take the the mid control, but he's only got construct, uh, constructor there, not calm. So, yeah, I think Katush is gonna he's gonna get all this metal, and I imagine he's gonna snowball a little bit because there's so much metal in his base now. He's gonna be able to leapfrog off that. I agree. Just a few LLTs, and he can secure the the soft passage for his his base. I don't think Barry investing in PVs at the moment is going to do much there. Unless he must go around or something now. He is I'm expanding sure in a lot of directions. Uh, these fleas might be able to get this constructor. Yeah, that was a good play. That was a brilliant place. And he got it. That was nice. Yeah. Were they the three That's fleas good. that he made at the start? Yeah, they've been there since the start of the game. Nice. Yeah. Um, Katouche has 5.2 versus Behemoth's 4k metal, so that's that's a really nice advantage right now. So, I mean, for the newer player watching, at what stage do you think that one of them should be looking to take up to tier 2, if at all? Um, in, a, in high level games, in a 1v1, I, I personally would never go tier 2. I would try everything else first. I think, I think. At this point, it's a question of when they're going to swap to vehicles. So that's usually what you see in, in high level 1v1s is that people start bots and, and transition into vehicles after about okay. between between 5 to 10 minutes, usually. Okay, so as you said, transition to vehicles. So, do you mean have a bot factory and a vehicle factory, or remove the bot factory and build a vehicle factory instead? I think it depends um, on your build power and how much metal you've got. Because um, the the bot factory can still be useful, because fleas fleas and peewees are always good, res bots are, are always good. Um, but yeah, if you've got the build power, I, I think it, you can reclaim the bot factory and just pump out a load of early vehicle units. It can be really strong. Jazz Cash, there's a possibility you may not have actually started the tournament yet. Oh. On challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to pick anything into it myself. No, Taku has now started that at least that's fine. Okay. That's just a... Uh, yeah, there we are. I'm, I'm really liking Battle Reef Control over the left side. He has denied Kakush expansion up there that side. And he's expanding himself, so... I think it's working pretty well, as long as he can defend his base from this push from Governor. Governor has a strong position in mid, while Battle Reef is going by the sidelines. Behemoth is going to the sidelines, but Behemoth's also producing a lot more metal than Behemoth. Yeah, Behemoth is strong, that's a big deal. Unfortunately for Behemoth, he's quite a bit too thin. So, let's see. But he's only spread thin if Katush actually takes advantage of that and sends out flanking and raging units. If Katush keeps on attacking Behemoth's main base, he's not spread thin. 
that's a good point. Uh, these peewees are going to get up here and, and kill all this before the constructor finishes the LLT. Oh, completely. So that's going to be three mechs as you'll be down. That's quite the punishing. massively short on energy at the moment as well. Oh, I wasn't. I was. Um, I was looking at challenge, but it, I didn't realise that Behereth has taken the whole left side of the map. He's killed all this expansion with Peewees. It's quite decent. If he can hold, he, he might be able to make a comeback for sure. But yeah, Kartush needs to, needs to go use his Peewees that are on the map and try to find these naked expansions. Otherwise, Behereth might snowball. I've started I'm seeing um, hammers a lot more lately. Usually it's it's rockers and storms. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that's what I was going to mention. I'm really surprised that none of the players have gone for a rocker spawn and instead going for food. Probably because there are not a lot of LLTs around. So, what are hammers good against and what counters hammers? Because obviously they look like they're very powerful right now. Yeah, um. Uh, for me personally, I think hammers and thuds are, are really good on maps with weird terrain, so on hills. Like anything that shoots plasma gets a massive advanta advantage when it's on high ground. It just gets a, a lot more range, which is an interesting spring mechanic that's been around for ages. But um, I think on this map in the middle where it's just all flat, I, I personally would prefer rockers, but I've seen Katoos do hammers and thuds quite a lot. It's, Kind of, kind of a preference thing, I guess. So we can see Behereth putting up some more defences at this point. Is this the mindset of someone who's about to lose and just hasn't realised it, or is this a sound strategic decision? Um, I would say, I would say it's fine. It, you're not investing too much into that, into that beamer and an LLT or two, but it. It should it should hold pretty well if um, if Katush wanted to just risk it and start going all in. Kartush might be having a little bit of tunnel vision into this headphone fight against Behariv. Uh Otherwise, he should be sending just a few light infantry units around the map. And maybe he's not aware that Behariv has a lot of naked uh, maxes. And also, Kartush has a few idle constructors that could be taking empty maxes. He knows that Behariv it does not have units to go around. Yeah, it, it does seem like Katusha has tunnel visioned a little bit because he's he stopped trying to take back map control in a lot of places. He's, his expansion is um, is almost non-existent compared to Behereth's. Yeah. I cannot uh, say Behereth's name. Be Behereth. Be Behereth. Behereth. <laughs> Uh, Katush has actually drawn level with sorry, Behereth has actually, has actually overtaken Katush in terms of metal produced. And we can see him now transitioning to vehicles there with his commander. Here we go, yeah. So I think if he can get this vehicle lap up and, and producing, he should be able to start making a good a good comeback here. What unit What unit would you recommend from the vehicle lab to try to break this stalemate? I think I think Janus and Stumpy. Janus, Janus especially because against um, hammers that are kind of slow, you can you can kite the Janus in and out and and pick them off quite well. Mitvit has raised a very good point. That vehicle lab is out of nano range. He's got four nano turrets. But I, he must have just realised. I think he's going to reclaim it. Yeah, that's true. Well, he's, he's letting it expire. That'll take a while. Hmm. His command is he's not committing to vehicles. Uh, this engagement no. is. I don't think. No, no. I don't think Berth needs to take this. Yes. And he is getting the metal behind death. it with the res bots. If he can get yeah. more metal, then then he's. It's not terrible. Stop Kartush has been hammered. Back. He's gonna win. So obviously, Berth is reinforcing his hammers with stumpies. Are the stumpies gonna provide him an advantage against hammers? Katusha is, is slowly taking back map control as well. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of taking that back.
So yeah, there's a, there's a few raiders that uh, Katush is trying to move around and stuff, but he seems to have split his attention a little bit too much and can't move all of them all the time. Would he have done better to have queued up more orders, or would that have been a risky play? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough. You don't need to have all the answers, just some of them. No, the, the question I've asked was... The passivity of Cartouche, I think, he might be hurting him too much. We see that Barry still has some metal lead and has been able to, to almost break out of this contain. Mm. Even even though Cartouche has actually been able to deny some access around the map, uh, Barry is still a little bit ahead. Fortunately for him, uh, Cartouche uh, is starting to make a, take a few maxes with a single constructor. He still has another idle one as well, and the base is pretty much stale. Yeah, they're currently producing the same amount of metal. Um, but as you say, so Stumpies, are they a counter to Hammers? I would say definitely, yeah. I, I love Stumpies, they're, they're so versatile in, in what they can do in what matchups. Them... So, they, 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 I mean, Stumpy, they're, they're just resilient, they're just so, they're so tough to, to kill. And being vehicles as well on flat ground, they, they've got a bit of a, they've got decent movement. Yeah. I think, I think, I don't know, something about Stumpy Ball is just so strong. I mean, they do have twice the health of Hammers, and know to be more DPS for not more, not twice the cost, so yeah, very cost effective in that way. Yeah. I'm Hammers surprised actually that, that both players are still so hard committed to bots. I would, I'd have thought people would be, um, at least one of them would have gone full vehicles at this point. Oh, is that, is that yeah, Behrif has, Behrif, Behrif has finished his vehicle lab, even outside nano range, and he's going for Janus. Mm. If I was Behrith in this position, I'd feel like I was losing so hard. And, yeah, maybe, I guess there is a good case for that now, but five minutes ago, it, it still looked like he was contained, but he wasn't that far behind, really. But now, yeah, no. Katusha's starting to take back the whole map, and... Um, I think I think Katush will come out on top because he's getting all these wrecks now as well. Um, Barrett must do something really soon, otherwise this might be over. Contain is too strong. Even though Katush wow. lost a lot of thuds that he went for a flank there by Barrett, uh, he's, he's still ahead. I don't think he's lost yet. If Katush pushes too far into that beamer and Barrett like takes him apart with that. Yeah, that's that's a, a potential comeback. Don't get me wrong, Katush has definitely got the advantage right now, but uh, he's not he's not won it yet. Those three maxes at the top hill of Barry, the, the fact that Cartouche has two PUs there and he's not using them is hilarious. Yeah, well that's that's you know he, he's focusing a lot more on the front line at the moment. But Harris doing a great job of keeping his attention there. The LT contain on the right side is pretty good as well from Cartouche. So Katusha's is swapping into into full vehicles now. He's reclaimed yeah. his bot lab and he's going uh, pure stumpy by the looks of it. Stumpy on repeat, and uh, the first few of them have rolled off the production line now. Ah, look at all these res bots he's got at the front as well, healing all his hammers. Yeah. It's really efficient. Yeah, I think it, it's very it's efficient. With Janus, it's really careful because the AOE is so much it can splash over to them. Yeah. He's he's microing the, the few Janus quite well that he's made. You have to be mm. careful because they're they're quite fragile. But if he oh, it just shot its own ah, hammer. Fall. Yeah. The neck and neck for metal produced overall damage dealt. Katush is ahead at 93 to 82k. But uh, stats stats wise, this game is neck and neck. Yeah, but I think. On the ground, it's probably over at this point. Yeah, I, I've got in favour of the two shit stage. Yeah, there Look we go. Stumpies, the crowd's like gonna pop it. Yeah. He's seeded yeah. It's a decent it's game enough. though. That was a superb game. So, uh, we've had a few wins and losses so far. So, Ragnar has progressed through, Teddy's progressed through, Trollol has progressed through, Sanya. Um, Yeva, Mighty Sheep, Taku, and uh, Andy have progressed. Okay. 
Yeah, so Teddy beat Duck Duck. Nice. P Tex beat Monty. Cool. Uh, Triton's just reported a win. That's cool that it updates in real time. Who 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 would you say is the predicted winner for this? I'm, 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 just, I'm just curious. I, I know who I think is going to win, but... My main disadvantage is I don't know any of the players. <laughs> like, few of them are very good players. Obviously, as, as a bar player, Ragnar is definitely one of my favourites. And Zao, despite playing on a potato, a literal potato, is an incredibly good player, but he's not great at 1v1 so far. Um, so yeah, I honestly don't know at this point. Have we got some games going on that we can join? I'd expect so. Let's have a look. Dude, first Teddy versus Katouche. So we we just watched Katouche, but um, yeah, I think it'd be a quite interesting game. Teddy Which versus Katouche. This is the first bracket of the second round that is defined at the moment. Which server are they on at the moment, or are they not starting? Uh, Katouche, Katouche is in the the server we, we're in already that I'm in. On the loser's bracket, we might have an interesting matchup as well. Johannes versus Shark. And Duck Duck versus Barry. Ah, uh, yeah, I've not looked at losers yet. Yeah, it might be good to catch some of those, because we, we won't see some of those players again once they get knocked out. Definitely. We could catch... Well, we've seen Berith, we've seen uh, Katouche. Johannes versus Shocks, yeah, I'd love to catch that one. Can we find out what... Um, Oh, okay. Shox is having some issues, I think. That's less great. How okay. did he forfeited? What? Oh, is he? Is it that bad? Okay. He's been having some issues for a while, but not sure actually what's causing them because no one else has them. Yeah, I remember him, him having some, some loading issues, but I, I don't think anyone knew what the problem was. Um, no, it seems to be specific to him, unfortunately. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's see what game's are in progress. God A versus Shorts. I'm just going to join this one until uh, until anyone wants me to join a different game. I think that's a great idea. So God A is like the the zero K legend that's been uh, been top of the leaderboard and winning tournaments in zero K for a long time. He's just he's been in spring games for ages. He's an an all round player. He's played loads of different spring games and done well at them. Mm. So. I think, but the thing is, he's, he's not played BA or, or anything like BA in a while, so it's going to be a little, uh, a little out of the game here. I'm sure I'll do well. Up to the game at the moment, but uh, interesting developments. Yeah. Push out and expanding hard. Yeah, Gode started on the on the cliff, so it's a lot safer. But it's sort of um, usually forfeiting the expansion for that. Ooh, com com push in the middle. Shorts' com is quite yeah. low. That was risky. Wow! Look at all the the LLTs that Shorts has made. <laughs> ah. He's definitely walled off that part. <laughs> yeah, but the fact is, there's nothing to support them. You know, yeah. a couple of rockets, a rocket, sorry, and he's sorted. It's not really. Yeah, it's. God, he's just ignored it and <laughs> he's totally fine just leaving it there. Yeah, I mean, static defense is great, but unfortunately, it is static. Oh, short commander is down to 20%. Oh, the D guns! The D guns! Oh, they were some interesting D guns. Mm. <laughs> He's really going for the D guns! To be fair, 
playing with 400 milliseconds of lag versus 166 on shorts. <laughs> so there, there is a notable disadvantage there to playing on shorts. <laughs> Look at the marks on the map. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for him to draw a picture at this stage. <laughs> I just uh, Goddy is floating a lot of metal. Yeah. 1.8k. It's 3.2k of metal excess over the course of the game. That's almost as much as he has metal above shorts as a whole. I think that's one of the no. things. Tra transitioning from 0k to play in BA or bar is that the build power is like really different. So BA, you, you kind of want to ramp up your build power a lot as the game goes mm. on. At this point, when he's got this much metal, he's doing fine on energy. You you probably want a lot more than this. Yeah. Very so Shorts is building a, a literal field of wind farms, and there's not much defending it. This could be interesting if uh, Kilda realises that. Uh, this is a lot of peewees. I think this is uh, probably God. game ending. If we can get all these peewees in behind the yeah. base, then... Uh, Okay, he's going, he's going for an engagement. A couple of good D-guns though, good soldier, and there's the hammer supporting him. He, he is running pins back and forth at the moment, which is not great. Uh, oh. Is he going to go for the comm? Here we go. He needs to do a bit of damage. Yeah, that's it. The comm was so low to begin with. Yeah. I mean, ideally, if the comm had been more healthy, he'd have split the peewees up to prevent one DD gun taking out so many at a time. Just had a question from someone directly saying, um, is this game, you know, is this tournament just today or are loser brackets at a different stage? Loser brackets are taking place today along with the winner brackets. Almost all games should take place today, if not all. Yeah, it might be a little optimistic, but um, I'm, I'm going to definitely try and finish the whole thing today. Because <laughs> I know people aren't around tomorrow. Um, yeah. So if, if, if it came to it, if it got really late, we'd have to postpone it to next weekend, I think. But hopefully it won't come to that. Um, it looks uh, like a lot of the games are going pretty quick. Yeah. Behri versus Duck Duck started a few minutes ago. Okay, alright. That could be quite good. We did just watch Behareth, is anything I will say. We haven't seen Duck Duck. I, I just I kinda just wanna jump into as many games as possible, I think, because you end up sitting around in lobbies waiting for people to start and uh, I just wanna showcase as many people as possible, as many games as possible. That's fair. Uh, so I just confirmed with shocks, and unfortunately he will have, he forfeits. So oh, midfit proceeds to the deck on the bracket. Okay. Yeah. So um, if there's any people that haven't showed up for the first round yet. Um, just, just let. Uh, I'm kind of busy streaming, but if you let um, Typhon or Ptac or Monty, there's some other people that I've made admins. Um, if you let them know that your opponent hasn't showed up yet, then um, they should be able to mark them as a, an automatic forfeit yeah. on on the bracket. Um, or, or ultimately, if you don't want to message one person in particular, if you post it to the tournaments thing, there are a number of people watching that channel, and they should be able to jump onto it. Yeah, be best to just post in that channel, because everyone can see it. If you DM me, I, I might not see it for a while. Might not? You won't see it. You're forcing so much of this, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, this is a, this is a different map now. Um, Avalanche, if memory serves. Is it Avalanche? This one's Baron. Baron, my mistake. It's a classic. Um, yeah. Yeah. What are the differences that we should expect to see with this map versus Silverside, like we just had? Silverside? I uh, mean, uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't care about this. <laughs> so, Baron has been around for ages. Quicksilver is, is kind of newer, but Baron is sort of known for having a really low metal start. Because, yeah, there's there's four mexes in the corner, but they're, if memory serves, they're all like 1 or 1 1.8 in value. Duck Duck is in serious trouble. Uh, these. these yeah, these peewees. Oh, oh no. it's not bad. It's not a bad hold. Oh, okay, that could have been a lot more devastating for sure. Yeah, but yeah, um, 
So, so you get four mexes, and two of them are a 1.0 in value, and the other two are 1.8. So you really don't get a lot of metal at the start, and it's kind of deceiving when you think you know you've got four mexes. It's not going to be that bad, but after you've built your lab and wins or LLTs or whatever, you don't have a lot left to work with. So the the start is usually pretty scrappy. Mm. But, um, I usually have a hard time on this map. What position you'd expand first into? Do you go for the hill and the other side as Dick Deck did, or you go to the other side? Um, I, I think, uh, I, I, I can't say what would be the best, but um, for me personally, I like just sending a. I think I'd probably send a constructor. Um, up the top over the cliff, and and because you you don't really want to overextend with your expansion because you get shut down really quickly if you get caught with a constructor in between uh, traveling and stuff so I think something interesting is that Barry is going for the same thing that he did previous game he has not expanded a yeah. lot yet and he's accumulated a lot of PUEs it seems like his style where he's just sort of uh, spent a lot of his early metal on an army hoping to get something done I think this might be too hard to do, actually, unless he flanks. That yeah, the, the the ramp in the middle is so hard to push up. So if he can come around the edge and come down the sa the south side of the map, then he'll get a lot better angle. Given the ramp's positions, are vehicles a terrible choice this map? Um, a lot of people would probably say yeah, but I like I like vehicles here. It it, it can be quite difficult to make it work, but. Samson's and, and Janus are, are quite good at, at kiting stuff and, and taking out little balls of units. Yeah, also I think artillery is very good in this yeah, map as well. Definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely, But as a start, I think bots is very necessary here. You can start on vehicles. Uh, again, the Berth's got a lot of peewees. It's looking quite scary. But. Depends what he does he with can't them. Use too many defenses, he can't get to the, the soft, squishy economic underbelly. Yeah, there's two LLTs here, so. So long as Duck Duck makes some AKs and and knows what's happening, he should be able to defend this. I think just the two LLTs on their own without AKs would do it. Obviously, he's making AKs as well, which is brilliant. Duck Duck's gone for a very defensive style, which. In theory, looks very strong, and it's it's certainly what a newer player would often do. But be very careful if you do this yourself, because you leave yourself very vulnerable to be attacked when you're not strong. As we said, the the last game was spectating. Static defenses are static; they don't go anywhere. There's a lot of uh, naked expansion going on in this game. So both has expanded. He started expanding with his two constructors, but there's no LLTs or units with them really. So that Raiden some, some, would be good. Something that might be also a relevant factor here is that Duck, Duck has a lot of metal at his side of the map. Yeah. But in terms of metal income, he has less metal extractors. At the moment, Behrif is being able to expand, while Duck Duck is being harassed on his maxes. There's, there's 800 to 900 metal lying around Duck Duck's side of the map at the moment, which is enormous. It's a, it's a lot of AKs, to put it simply. But Duck Duck seems to be stabilizing, he might be able to push these PUs back. Uh, probably I'd look at uh, trying to close some of these ramps, but it's a little bit hard against bots. Well, and Duck Duck is... So you can go. Duck is prioritizing uh, resin units, it might be also relevant here. Though I would not mind getting that metal and perhaps going for vehicles later for some advantage of artillery. I think that's a very fair idea. The other thing I was about to say is Duck Duck is making heavy use of static defenses, which can early game give you a very strong feeling of security and safety. Um, however, as the blob of units grows and your border grows, your re your power in at one point relative to your opponent's power does diminish. And I think that could be his undoing if he's not careful. 
but he's doing a superb job of pushing forwards here. Behereth having only light defences here. He won't kill the Com or anything, but he might do some damage, take out an X, some windmills maybe. Yeah, there's still only one LLT down the bottom here. I, mm. I think I think Duck Duck could definitely get something done here, but yeah, the, the LLT, see, he's, um, he's rallied his units past the LLT instead of yeah. out of its range, so he's going to lose a lot of those. The Duck Duck's got three res bots re uh, resurrecting all these wreckages instead of reclaiming them, so I think Ooh. he's got the energy to do that, so... Um, it's not a bad decision at all. I like it. Yeah, I like I like the usage of Twilights by Barry. Yeah, yeah I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I, I was saying um, earlier how uh, Barith was was being quite risky with his naked expansion with no turrets or anything, but with the Twilights, the Duck Duck's not even noticed that he's been hitting Twilights, <laughs> so <laughs> they're still just sat there getting metal. Yeah. He, Behereth made use of them last game. I don't know if he used them for his expansions, but I'm guessing so because otherwise, you know, they'd have been spotted sooner. So you see, you see what just happened was um, Duck Duck noticed that there was a twilight, and um, yeah. and then he realised that there's probably twilights on all the other spots as well. So he's just forced attacked on the ground and uh, killed off both of those. Duck Duck <laughs> has a significant is... territory advantage right now. And also a very scary ground army at the moment. These buoys, yeah. that that level T won't hold anything. Yeah. He's got 22 AKs, four storms, and a Rocco. Those Roccos, if they get on the hill, I think it could be a very good position for that. Hmm. Sorry, he doesn't have a Rocco. I accidentally selected uh, Behar's Rocco and uh, thought it was uh, Duck Ducks. I think they're they're both resurrecting stuff now, so they're going to have all sorts <laughs> of units. Yeah. Yeah, it's not completely my fault. I'm not. I'm not incompetent. So, I'm not look, look at it here. Behemoth looks like he's outnumbered. Um, his very nice idea of having naked metal extractors has not really worked out at this stage. What can he do to even the odds, or to to make a comeback? Essentially, I think at this point you just want to start making units and and get out as many peewees as you can. And um, and hopefully, just hope that your micro is good enough that you can that you can hold on and win an engagement. And if you win that first engagement, then you can use the wreckages to to make you come back. But um, yeah, it's going to be quite tricky for him no matter what. Here, there's so much stuff from Duck Duck. I'm surprised that Duck Duck has not sent uh, skirmisher units like Thugs or Rockos to that hill on the bottom. Yeah. He could contain on the sides with the PUEs and just use. And he's losing a lot of those rockers unnecessarily on that skirmish. So, given it's a low metal map, I'm assuming the answer is no, that's a terrible idea. Don't ever do that type thing. But would it be a sensible idea for either player to build an additional lab as an air lab? Uh, I, I don't think that's the metal for it here. Even if you got the lab finished, there wouldn't be much you could do with it that would, that would change the state of the game. Um, maybe if, if one of them was core and they made blade wings, that can definitely make a difference, but... Yeah, when... Uh, when... They're going for... Go on. They're going for a forward vehicle factory, but he has not a lot of metal, and he's not reclaiming his uh, bot lab. I'm not sure if it, it will be done soon. He might lose the contain if he keeps investing on that, and it seems that Behrith might be retaking that control there while he's wasting time with uh -huh. the vehicle level. Okay, Duck's going in. Is, is this it? So, yeah, behrith has got a lot of Rockos here, which are not great against uh, AKs and Peewees straight up. But he does have three LLTs right behind him, which are very good against AKs and Peewees. These Twilights in the top right have been really paying off for Behrith, but I think Duck Duck's starting to wise up now and, and realize that there's Mexes here. <laughs> Well, they require sort of micro to take out, don't they? Look at it. Yeah, you have to split your units if you want to take them out effectively. It's very, it's very intensive, micro intensive, because you don't. As for example, the duck just had a lot of of AKs paralyzed there. You just want to send one or two, and you have to micro that. So Barry's a very nice strategy here. He's pushed out and made duck duck fall back a little bit, and he's yeah. used that to reclaim all of these wreckages. Yeah, so he's done exactly what I said he needs to do if he, if he wants to make a comeback, is he's, he's made units and and pushed back and, and resurrected and reclaimed behind it. So 
He just needs to keep control of these wreckages and not get too greedy. And uh, he should this be alright. This stamp is from deck deck. Might nullify this advantage. As long as he uses those. Yeah, it's uh, sort of idle from there a bit. Okay, I, I'm not sure Duck Duck needed to take that. He's he's being a bit aggressive and yeah. it's just given more metal to Bereth to um, let him cling on. So this is what I was saying about it's, it is a, a low metal map and he's got two labs now. He's got his oh he's reclaimed his bot lab. Okay, he's gone full in on vehicles. He's sort of, um, I think what's happened is he's he's moved his lab uh, from his main base up to here, but during that time he's, he's, so, he's not been producing units as fast and he's, he lost that ground, but if he can get his build power back up to where it was and start pumping out more vehicles then he should be able to, to start pushing in here. And the Raiders versus um, the Rockos is interesting. Yeah, raiders there are very strong, but you need a significant amount of them to do to do DPS that can overturn that engagement. It seems that Duck Duck now it's being able to produce faster than he's losing, while at the same time Barry is yeah I don't he's still raising some units, but as far as economy goes, Duck Duck has double the amount at the moment, yep. and I think he might just be able to produce more units than Behrif can res or produce. Yeah, he's microing against these Rockos perfectly where you just keep moving the Raiders. It doesn't matter where, you just keep them moving and the, the Rockos will miss a lot of their shots. Oh, Duck Duck just stopped re uh, producing units from the factory, maybe a mistake here. It looks like he's realizing. Okay, he's back to producing. I'm surprised he has not gone for levelers. I think they would be really strong. There are yeah, at least a few. Definitely. Barrett's still got these mexes in the top right. It's, um, it's definitely paid off those twilights. Oh, massively. Sorry, I was just giving someone's uh, questions about their opponent not showing up. Yeah, I mean, if Behereth is given time to resurrect all of these, then. That's going to be interesting. That said, I like the vehicle lab on the other side of the ridge. That's a really nice idea. Yeah, because you're you're skipping the ramp, and the vehicles take so long to get up this middle ramp. So if you just build the lab on the other side, you avoid that completely. Yeah, it seems that even with that mistake, with the factory being idle for a while, Duck Duck might still be able to get back that positioning on the middle. Though Behrif has been doing a really good job taking control of that ravage. Yeah, the thing I worry about for uh, Behrith is he's not really scaling up here. He's sort of just doing the, the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, he's not brought anything new to the table he didn't have a few minutes ago. Yeah, this is a point where I think... It's amazing to start building up in a big way. Yeah, this is a point where I think your suggestion about the air would be a good one. For the Hereth or...? For the... the because he has... He had metal to use and I think a few bombers and hurting Behrif's energy income would be huge here. Is Duck Duck potentially throwing the game by putting his commander so far forwards at this stage? Um... I don't think so. Uh, yeah, come. Yeah, I, I don't think. Well, we, it seems that actually the position of Barry uh, taking the top with the Tugs and Rockos is something that I really like, but I don't think he'll be able to snipe that back here. Barry's going in here. He's getting, uh, he's he's getting confident. Yeah, this is a number extension, I think. He's not got the numbers to take out the factory. The tanks can just body block him to start with. Yeah, okay, I think they're just giving up here. It was a decent game. Uh, very a decent. Really long skirmish that happened there at the top. Mm, well played by Duck Duck. Nice. Yeah, I was surprised that Behrf went for the same strat in both games, but it seems not bad. It's just that 
um, you give up a lot of a lot of early game map control by producing that snipe army at the beginning. If we go to EU08, we've got Smurf against Zhao. Okay. Uh, zero... Or Triton, his actual his, uh, his, uh, tournament name is. Okay, let's see. We gotta also. There's another matchup God versus Trollo Loka. I think there's so many games that I want to see. I think mm. I'm gonna have to like do some uh, some post analysis or something. It'd be good to like go through some of the, the the replays and just do some commentary on on them after the tournament's finished. Oh, if, in fact, don't start watching that one that I recommended because that's just ended. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> too late. Yeah, that's that's not happening. <laughs> All right. Which one are you watching? AU zero two, is it? Um. Th yeah, there was there was PTAC versus drone that was about to start. Oh, that sounds like a good one. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm going to try and catch this yeah, PTAC versus started. drone game. Yeah, if yeah, it's just started. I, just I think that'd be the, the best thing to do, is, is find games that are about to start. Yeah. So we're not joining them as they're finishing. Guys. Yeah. Also, you can discuss the opening moves that they make on the different maps. Oh, there's some good there's some good sets coming up on the bracket. We've got um, oh, yeah. Triton versus Andy next. That should be quite good. The winner of Ragnar versus Zartax is going to go up against um, Governor Touche, or Touche. That should be good. The fact that people have different names in Discord, BA, Bar, and the tournament is really <laughs> irritating and confusing. I really like this uh, this revision of the Outer Crossing. Mm. It's a lot cleaner. I noticed that the, the old one... The old one had um, trees everywhere. They were just sort of scattered over the whole map, but... Um, yeah, this one they're a lot more sort of clustered. It's a lot cleaner. Definitely a fan. I'm really interested that Pitek has going for a very aggressive start at the moment. Yeah, very aggressive. Yeah, that is. Now, if Drone does not make an LT or flees near his base, it might get a few maxes from Pitek. Pitek might take a few maxes. So, quick question, Jazz Cash. As the highest profile and probably best looking member of the FX clan, <laughs> when, when are we having a clan tournament? Oh, I'd love to have a clan tournament. <laughs> I think we need some, some, some other clans, though. There's not many around at the moment. At least, well, there's uh, the Zed clan, obviously. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> there's, I, I there's some old clans that, um, that are sort of uh, hanging around, but I don't know if many of them are... Uh, still playing actively. Okay. Some good positioning from Drum, denying those fleas. Mm. Really like that. And the res bot is already uh, already built and it's huge. Res bots are huge in this match for the energy. Yeah. I mean, we saw him in that first game, didn't we, where he had the, the really good Peewee and Commander dual combo fighting off the fleas. He's so good at that. Yeah, it looks a lot like the first game he played. Where he just used Peewees to defend and not LLTs. Drone seems to be trying to get control of the areas where there there are metal present, and he is actually taking this metal while Ptak is still investing those please. And Drone does not have anything to defend at home. Yeah. At least that explosion. Ooh, we got the max. Okay, nice catch. Yeah. Now this is a really open map. So, are you surprised that neither player has gone vehicles first? Um, I think bots are more common here, and that's mainly for one reason, which is um, the features on the map. You need there's there's quite a lot of metal to be reclaimed if you include all the rocks on the map and and the trees as well. Is that you can you can kind of just live off res bots for a long time um, and not have to worry too yeah. much about the mexes or the or the windmills. You can just you can just reclaim everything that you need for a while. 
So much so that drone is almost excess metal at the moment. Yeah, drone drone's at a thousand metal, just from reclaiming all the rocks. I think. He already got all of his side, uh, just missing the bottom and the right. I think if this map was more common, you'd see it in you'd see matches that become sort of about sniping resbots at the start. <laughs> and and just building loads of fleas to kill off as many res bots as you can because it's if you let someone get all the all the rocks then they can get so far ahead. Yeah, that's what drone went for, and I think it really paid off. A drone could even go for vehicles if you wanted, or just expand, or keep containing, trying to contain Pitak. And Pitak being very bold at the moment, going out with the commander. Is, is it that bold? I mean, he, he's going out with the command, but he's not pushing forwards, he's, he's just off to the side. What are the odds he's going to get found by a massive group of DVs? Well, Drone invested in, in Tuds at the moment. If he had a few more PUEs instead of those uh, Tuds, and he got intel where Tech positioning is, he could have gone for a, a, an attempt of snipe there. So, mm. it's a little bit far-fetched, but I think it would be feasible. But not at the moment. But those studs, I think, might be overwhelming here. That base, I'm not sure Tak will be able to contain this But Pitak is doing a good job with the fleas there, trying to deny Drone's mm. expansion on top. I like the fact but that this... even in the initial phase of the game is over, he's still getting some fleas every now and again and sending them out to harass. Yeah, Pitak does this every game. He has like a 40Q unit and he always makes a lot of different units there and he never, he never looks back at the factory production. So he, he always has a very micro-oriented approach, which I really like. Some micro, good micro here from Pitak as well. Um, usually, if you get a critical mass of thuds, you are not able to push back, even with like infantry, but a good micro was able to hold a little bit of those. I still think it might be an overwhelming amount here against uh, drone against Pitak. I just think that drone would gain a lot by being a little bit more patient and messing a little bit more thuds there. I think that's a fair comment. What do you think of Pitak building a lot of mexes on the, the southern hill? You know, out of sight, out of mind, and out of radar coverage as well, because on the hill. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, he's. He's, I think he skipped that one max there, but um, yeah, the, the thing is, you, you haven't got your commander around to to defend stuff, and I guess it is risky, but... He, he didn't skip that one, that one was blown up and cancelled, and he just never oh, okay. resolved it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's risky, but it's what Pitako needs to get back to this game. If he gets contained there, it's the only way that he might get a metal advantage. Fortunately for him, he's also been able to send a constructor nerf and scout it, so that could help. Though I drone, just yeah, the drone, drone just is just sending a third there to check. So the, I just checked his well. view. He can see uh, Taku stuff on top of that hill. He didn't notice the commander there yet, but he knows there's stuff on that hill. This this could be a very big mistake from Taku. He's got his base in one point and his command in another. If he loses either of them, he loses the game. I think if drone commits to this uh, this base raid right here, then he should be in a really good spot. Yeah, I think he might be the force uh, concede. The problem is he's waiting so long. He... I think he's just playing safer. I think he just wants to to ensure the win and just box Pitak in, deny expansions, and just get map control and and just play it safe. Because yeah, if, if you just go in and and try and raid, then you you risk losing all your stuff and giving them. He's going for a snipe now. Yeah, I mean a win after fifteen minutes is the same as a win after ten minutes. They're both wins. Yeah, exactly. I think Drone has stopped trying to break the base and is going for the snipe. He has he's been sending some warriors maybe to support there and break the LLTs. That's a lot of LLTs for Taku. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be enough. No, it's not. It's it's gonna kill the initial wave, but now that he knows that the commander's there, drone's gonna he's cloaked have his a commander. Few well, if there's a way Pitako can get back to this game, is by holding this. Oh no, yeah. Oh, that was a nice ambush. But I don't think it's enough. He's just lost three of those LLTs. Yeah, it's a, it was a decent play. Ah, the Peewees are coming in around the back now, though. Oh, Drone's gone in. 
my sketch. Mm. Yeah, so I think P Tex is gonna how be. Um, he's coming so low! Nine percent, that warrior nearly finished it. He can laser with the commander. <clears throat> yeah. If he goes with the commander. Those LRTs will be in range of his commander at the moment. Oh no, Taku's aware of it. That was really close. And he's not out of the woods yet either. Pitaco won't be able to reinforce that position anytime soon. His economy is in shambles at the moment. It's, his economy did not do well at all. Uh, drone is at 22 metal, Taku's at 8. I think this game is probably over. Taku just doesn't know it yet, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong, if he, if he manages a comm snipe, then uh, brilliant, but there are two LTs on top of that hill. He's, he's not getting up there with his comm. It was quite an interesting play for Drone to go for his comm. I think I thought he would just ignore it and, and just take out the base. But, um... I, think I liked the got attempt us. to go for comm. Yeah, oh, yeah. The only thing I would have done differently to Drone, and obviously this is hindsight and uh, full map and spectator map vision talking, is potentially have made it harder for Taku to be able to run his comm out of there. But at the same time, that would have taken time to build up, so it's not necessarily the right move. He did still, uh, Drin still raided though, even though he was sending all those units south for the comm, he still sent Peewees in the back and I, I think that probably just solidified, ah, oh, these warriors are so cool. Yeah, yeah. Look so at tough. this, that's awesome. Really, really great choice of unit composition, even though they are quite vulnerable to oh, the guns by, by the commander. <laughs> yeah, this, this that's, is that's a nice try. Yeah, he's gonna try and cloak, but I think Drone knows. So yeah, I think it was... <laughs> the, the, control, the control of mid with the metal and trying to get the metal income of the resources over the map while denying opponents is crucial. Early mm. game, I think um, Drone did that very well. Um, EU101 is pretty good. We've got Ragnar against BA Governor and it's Ooh. only just started. Okay, it's great. on the same map we just watched. Nice. All right, let's catch that. It's our first uh, Ragnar game, actually. I'd be interested to see uh, what he's been holding back, ready for his 1v1s here. There's so many games that have happened already. It's like, mm. oh, we missed so many good games, I think. Oh, you can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, we, we've seen Katush, I think you said his uh, other name was. Governor, yeah. Wasn't it? We've not seen Ragnar play yet, though. So he's going bots first as well. And same build order. Yeah, similar starts for both of them. Ragnar's a fraction of a second ahead in terms of health on his lap, though. <laughs> I mean, technically, advantage Ragnar at this stage, but... <laughs> <laughs> and for those watching, Ragnar's not actually Polish. He's just uh, on tour at the moment and has borrowed a laptop from Taku of all people, I think. Yeah, he said he, w he was worried that um, he might not be able to play, but yeah, mm. I think um, ta Taku, Taku, I, I might Taku. just call him P-Tak, <laughs> just, <laughs> just easier. Uh, Taku, um, yes, yeah, sent him a PC. Pickaxe. <laughs> Definitely pickaxe. Let's see if why, uh, why would Cart degun his lab? What's the reason for that? Has he done that by mistake before, or is there something else? Oh, there's a. I've got spec chat disabled, I think. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> someone, someone is, is suggesting that uh, Cartouche will degun his lab. I'm assuming he's made a mistake before and accidentally degunned it. Maybe. Uh, I've certainly seen know. someone else do it once. They were on my team, 3v3, mm. they degunned their lab. We did not win that game. So. Uh, Katus just sniped one of Ragnar's uh, res bots, which is oh. kind of critical at this point in the game. It's so early that you, you, you kind of need that. He's also got six peewees and a flea against almost nothing. Like, I don't think he can, like, just kill Ragnar right now, but that's map control straight away, that is. Yeah. Has Ragnar got a radar? He does not. He has an LLT on the top side. Yeah, so like we can see from his vision that he doesn't really know what's going on. No, he, he's got no idea of what's around him. It is 
Cartouche went for the general idea of controlling the map, but he's not being as efficient at getting the metal at the moment, and he has not gone for the three maxes, so I'm a little bit concerned there. Um, so he's actually got spare metal at the moment, and he's doing a really good job of focusing more on having peewees than constructors. I think that's working for him here. Obviously, it's not like long-term sustainable, but for now, it's definitely working for him. I think the problem for Ragnar is he's not got enough reclaim going on. He's got one res bot and he's, he might even lose that right now. Now, interestingly, Ragnar has already almost finished his first nano turret. Yeah, so you that, see uh, see how Katusha has skipped both the two mexes in his base and he's, he's only got five windmills and he's been constantly producing units mm -hmm. non-stop. But his, his resources are fine because he's been reclaiming everywhere. He's getting all the rocks, he's getting all the trees. And I think that's how you're meant to play this map. He and actually Ragnar's has gone for the 200 more metal than Ragnar in yeah. total, and Ragnar has three mexes. Yeah. One observation is that Ragnar really likes the play style of uh, controlling the map with LLTs and pushing forward from a uh, back position. I'm not sure if Kartushi has an overwhelming amount, but yeah, Ragnar is trying to get some value from the commander. That's a way to try and to try and get back to the board here. Mm. Governor has a lot of metal in the field at the moment. I think he would gain a lot by flanking and he's going there. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, if he can attack from several sides at once, he's going to do very well for himself. If he can uh, dodge D-guns, then yeah, he should do really <laughs> well. Yeah, Ragnar is very good at D-guns. He is, yeah. He's, he's, he's uh, really I good, I would say yeah. one of his defining features. I have attacked him with twice as many units as I would have other people, and I've still come off the worse. Now, uh, Cartouche has stopped producing units and is going for the expand at the moment. I think it, it's good because he has already contained Ragnar a little bit and he might get additional maxes, while he's still got a bigger board and he's going to get a uh, bigger metal income from the maxes as well. Yeah, so completely I think agree. he's in a pretty good position. The only thing he needs to be careful of is Ragnar has a lot more build power. So if Ragnar gets hold of some metal, he can overwhelm Katush very quickly. Yeah. Katush has no nano turrets in his base. He's got a couple of uh, constructors now, but that's it. Yep. I'm not sure why Cartouche is retreating. Um, if he gets intel on where Ragnar is taking the expansions, he might be able to deny those. Though Ragnar has amount, has amassed a considerable amount of units, so his base must be kept to watch. I... Ragnar is aggressively transitioning to vehicles. He's reclaiming his. Oh wow! Arm. Yeah, that's that's, that's so early. Path. Yeah, I like it. The nano turret's really helping with that transition though, because it adds an extra 200 build power. That's more than two level one uh, construction robots. What do you think Ragn is going for? Stumpies. I think... mm, Stumpy and Janus. Yeah, Stumpy and Janus. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's exactly it. Yeah. He, it's, a, it's a combo he's practiced with. Um, and. It, Okay, Katush has control of the map, but Ragnar's got a couple of choke points, and Katush isn't pushing through them. I think Katush has given yeah. Ragnar too much breathing room here. Yeah, Ragnar's up to 5,000 yeah. metal produced versus 3.2. Where Ragnar that has from? been... He has been naked expanding here. That That's... Katush had a possibility of splitting a, a few of these units to try and deny the top and bottom sides, but... Instead, I think was a little bit concerned by Ragnar pushing forward. And I'm not sure why Cartouche has so many constructors. I think it's a little bit unproductive at the moment. Okay, he's now sending them to expand. But as the game goes on, I think Ragnar should be in a more dominant position if he's able to amass more units. I Yeah, his multitasking is so good. I just noticed that um, Ragnar's got idle res bots, but it, I think it's intentional because there's no metal to be reclaimed over here. Yet. But yeah. um, he's full on energy, so he's he's just he's not sucking up those trees until he needs it. So that's quite yeah. conservative. I like that. Keep it for a rainy day. Um, I just realised why Ragnar has so much more metal produced. It's because he reclaimed his lab. It counts as metal produced. Ah uh, right, yeah. He's not actually got a 2k metal lead. <laughs> He's obviously got a metal lead because that lab did not cost 2k metal, 
but it's not quite as sizable as we thought. I, I would say these two players are probably two of the favourites to win this whole tournament, so it's interesting that they've come up against each other this early. Mm. Um, I, I think Ragnar, he's, he's been playing bar for a long time, doing 1v1s, and he's, he's definitely warmed up, more warmed up than uh, Katush, who has not really played bar at all, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited that we've got this game so early. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a rematch later on mm -hmm. if uh, if one of them comes back from losers. I, I'm enjoying the asymmetry of their playstyles as well. Kertus with a nice flank in the top there. Yeah. Almost mm -hmm. let that Constructor take it. He could try and get around and see other places there. And Ragna, I think a little bit over committing units for the defense. He could be also counter raiding the other side. I like the Katush thought. Should I push forwards? No, let's back off. Don't waste the peewees. That was a really smart move. I agree. This Ragnar's little ball of vehicles from Ragnar is actually really yeah. scary. But if he, because if he's micro with Janus's and Stumpies, um, Katush can't really push into them very hard at the moment. He needs to envelop them with a lot more peewees or something. Yeah, that's the the thing is, I don't think that Katush can answer this with any unit from the bot lab right now. He's not got the, the build power or the resources to start pumping out units no. either, so he, it's going to be quite tricky. Yeah. yeah oh, Rex coming in with Peewees. Oh. Oh, this knife. Yeah, this is yeah. over. Oh. Uh, yeah, this that's, is over. Yeah, that's bad. I think Rex is Let's see, let's see the Deacons. Deacons. <laughs> a lot of so, units are lying there. Not bad. Oh, oh, What's not bad. oh the Janus though. Yeah. 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 Janus, okay. That yeah, was a pretty good match. Superb match. Both players played so well. I mean, the early game from Katush was amazing, I thought. Yeah, that was um, that was interesting because Katush got such an early advantage with the res bots and, and the big ball of peewees. And I thought he was gonna gonna raid and um, go for go for the harass and stuff, but he decided to use them more sort of defensively and just sort of kept a map map control with them rather than trying any raids. But I think that came back to hurt him in the end because he didn't expand early enough. And yeah, uh, he, had, he had the control, he had the map of uh, control, but he didn't apply the pressure with it. I feel. So this is a best of three as well, right? So I think. Is it? Oh. I believe so. Yeah. It's so. Uh, they're going to play again. I don't know if we want to, if people want to just like stick with the same sets or. I think this would be a really good one to stick with. I mean, they're both very good players. There's a lot to learn for people watching this now and also later. And I think we're going to see varying play styles across the three different maps as well, or two different maps, essentially. This is actually going a lot quicker than I thought it would. So it might be a good idea to like um, hold off on some of the games so we can we can catch more of them on stream. Yeah, so Andy and uh, Drone are ready to play <laughs> Mighty Sheep, but yeah, they're so far ahead that it might make sense for, for them to wait so we yeah, can catch their wanna, game, maybe. Mighty Sheep's not on the Discord, so I think you'll need to message him directly on that one. I think I think some of them are catching it on the stream. Oh, fair enough then. Yeah, so if you get to if you get to round four, I'd say just um, just hold off for now, and uh, we can we can try and catch some of those games on stream later. I'm just making an announcement to the tournaments um, Discord. Sure, yeah, sounds good. Just a, just a notice, if you already played your game and it was not updated on challenge, or someone forfeited the game and it's not being updated, please uh, announce on tournament so challenge can be updated. Yep, yep. Just uh, shout out in Discord. Alright, game two. Ragnar versus Katush. Just gonna go AFK for a couple of minutes. Sure. So they're looking at the start positions that they're going for, they're they're quite different. Katush is starting in the corner, and uh, Ragnar starting as close as he can to the middle.
Quite a safe start from Ragnar with the LLT. Oh, Katusha's going for the third mech, so I wouldn't have expected that. Because it's such a small map, I'd have, I'd have thought he would get a uh, an earlier lab. Ragnar's still not gone for a lab. Third LLT. This is so... <sighs> it's not greedy because he's building LLTs, but it's so slow. Yeah, Ragnar, he has this style. I think we saw it last game. He really likes to go back from a safe position and build forward. And he's going very aggressive with this vehicle. I think he's going for Genesis and Samsung. So, in my opinion at least, I think it's a race to destroy your... Okay, both are going vehicles. Okay. This is going to be a kind of symmetric match, though I would expect the Genesis player to have some advantage here. Yeah, I think you're right about that, because the this makes sense now with the LLTs next to every mech. He doesn't... doesn't uh, it seems like he doesn't intend on expanding and, and uh, playing a standard game. He just wants to go straight down the middle and possibly go for a, an early comm snipe. Cartouche base is a little bit exposed, but Ragna does with the dead start can't capitalize on it at the moment. So what do you think? Do you think it was worth it for Ragna to, to have this forward vehicle base? I think it would have been if he'd um have taken if he'd take the middle a lot quicker but it looks like Katush even though he started all the way in the corner and has done a slow com walk all the way to the middle he's not that far away from the center it looks like Ragnar's still going to get the center but it's just one mechs more at this point i don't know if that's worth any more no it's still 2.0 so it's hard to say i think the problem um for Ragnar is, is expanding, is it's such a slow start, he's not got as many units out on the map and uh, Katush is starting to make a lot of units. I don't think that's too grim for Ragnar, uh, he has come back from harder games I think, though Katush is certainly not an easy opponent to face against. Especially getting this value from, yeah, especially Janus. getting this value from the Opa. If he can keep this Janus so alive. Seeing... Oh, oh, he lost exactly. it. Oh. Uh, he's got a second Janus. It's just really close. They've both done, basi they've basically done the same thing. They've gone for a vehicle push with the comm in the center. Yeah, but Cartouche has max advantage at the moment. The problem is... Ooh. I still can't call it. This is so close still. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if this flat this continued instigator spam from Cartouche is actually worth. And Cartouche is going to decide for expansion. That might be very important at this stage of the game. Though Cartouche has just lost that max, so they are on equal terms in terms of economy. These stumpies getting caught out a little bit here. Yeah, some good metal here for Cartouche.
should be able to get that mix. Ah. Oh, oh right. didn't get it. Yeah, that was pretty close. This might be risky for Cartouche going for the slasher. Um, in low, in low numbers, they are really not that great, and you might be behind if you invested in those. Ragnar only now is starting to think about expansion. So he's, he's struggling on metal is the problem. I think he needed to make it work early on with the push and it. Now he's sort of on a time limit because Katusha's starting to get the south and ramp up a little bit. Yeah. I didn't I didn't mention it because I thought Cartouche was going bots, but Cartouche is actually doing what you would want to do if you were going bots, you know, it's expanding to the sidelines, while Ragnar's strategy was pretty much uh, very directed at pushing in the middle. Cartouche's got energy problems here. He's got three LTs, but if he's not got energy, then he can't fire them. Uh, I don't know if Ragnar's going to notice that, but... That's the another thing sure. about um, wind maps is that if you... If the wind is good on a map, you can pretty much guarantee that your opponent is going wind as well. And then when you see the wind drop and you're having energy problems, then it's likely that your enemy is as well. Uh, sometimes you can time it and attack LLTs at the right time. These slashes are not... slowly chipping away. Yeah, I'm really surprised by the value that he's getting from those. I was expecting Ragnar to get to be able to micro against those, but yeah, they are really, really getting some great value. Though, Ragnar with these two, with these two stumpies, oh, maybe, yeah, I don't think it will work. Oh, he's gonna, is he gonna get a self D? No, not quite. Um, Cartouche has still not addressed the energy issue and just lost an additional wind generator here. He's going with the comb to, to supplant that efficiency. While well, Ragnar expansion at the top is a little bit uncontested right now. And as the game goes on, I think Arkush is in a good state here with these slashers. I think he needs just some units to be able to distract the Genesis, maybe a few scouts for the shots. I think it all comes down. This this whole game has kind of been about this micro in the middle of the map. And uh, the, the slashes for Katusha are just so good at range, but if he can, if Ragnar can get Janus in, in range, which he can't, but if he can get them in, then he can take out the slashes quite easily. Yeah, but the slashers well. deny, deny the commander support, because if you just have enough slashers, you can get commander, you can target the commander quite easily there. I think targeting the commander would be a great charge for Katusha, denying commanders, and I think that's what he's doing, perhaps. Some of those were targeted. It just doesn't seem like Rag's got an answer for them. They're just slowly chipping away at everything, and Ragnar can't heal his own calm, so... Yeah. Now the fact that Ragnar decided to go top and just now Cartouche is going to deny that expansion while the southernmost expansion for Cartouche has been uncontested might be huge and play a big factor here soon. Though Cartouche really needs to micro these slashers out of that zone, otherwise it is lost. Ooh. Oh, the Janus are getting in! There's two, three, okay, okay. Yeah, a few scouts there could, could have helped a lot. So all those shots and Cartouche really nice raid on the back of Ragnar's base. Yeah, dur during that attack, yeah, he sent the gators round. He's gonna clean up this expansion. Now this is this is a really risky move from Ragnar. I think he he wants to make something happen because he knows he's losing expansion all over the place, so he he's trying to get some damage done. Cartouche needs to be careful about the commander. Ah, uh, Ragnar's uh, fourth in. Yeah, oh, that's GG, unfortunately. Alright, we're going to a game three. Yeah. Really Which is nice. next map? Um, I don't remember. Who's set at the tournament? 
<laughs> all right, all right. Um, <laughs> Falendale, Falendale, yeah. Not yeah, seen too I'm much really of it. Interested in seeing, I'm really interested in seeing what's going to come up from there. I think bots are strongest here. At least at this start. Yeah. Where's Ragnar gone? Because they're... Oh, I think there he leaves sometimes so between there. games to fix an issue or something. I've seen him do that quite a lot. Uh, fair enough. Uh, I'm just going to go AFK for 30 seconds. I will be back. No problem. So, Badosu, based on what we've seen so far, who's your favourite for game number three and why? Uh, between Ragnar and Cartouche, right? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I think they are very, they, they are matching up very well against each other. Um, I am actually very surprised that Cartouche has done so well, since I didn't see him practice a lot over the last few weeks. And from the results that we've seen at the moment, I think if Ragnar went more conservative with the style he's used to, he might uh, be able to do better against Cartouche. I don't yeah. think the risk strats are are the strongest suit for right now at the moment. That's a fair point. Do you think we'll see something different this game? On Falendel, I mean, I think both players are required to start bots there. The only difference is how much how much they are going to differ in terms of the greediness. I would expect Ragnar to go uh, do his usual build, probably take three maxes, make an LLT, then start with two comms. He likes to do that. He starts with two comms, goes for none, and then pushes out. So um, I hope for the, I hope that if Ragnar goes conservative, um, that is what we are going to see there. As for Cartouche, I'm really not sure what to expect from him. I just watched a few games, but from what I've seen so far, I think he's pretty up to the task here of beating Ragnar. I don't think any player has advantage over another. It's just the difference over these small details, the decisions. And when you get to a higher level of TS, that's pretty much what it amounts to. What Hello, basic. Hey, what's up? Yo, sorry, I didn't see your invite. I think yeah, that's fine. I think next time we should probably just have an open channel because <laughs> I'm juggling so many different things that I keep forgetting to check the Discord. But uh, yeah, I think it was it was okay. Uh, when yeah. We did the NBA tourney. But actually, um, last game, um, Ragnar did go for the safe start, right? He made two LTS while uh, Kratush made none. This is actually one of the reasons why, despite the fact that uh, Ragnar started so up front, Cartouche somehow managed to get uh, the initiative in the center. Yeah, it, so it I was. Think, um... I think it was all about micro that game. The the vehicle micro is so important in the center. Yeah. By the way, if I remember correctly, Falendel also is like Altair Crossing in the sense that you need to you can gather a lot of resources with your resers. Um, so... I don't know about metal, but I know there's there's lots of energy. I think there might be some rocks, but not as much as um, uh, I'll tell you. I think I think there's a lot. Like I, re I remember playing uh, like I a could small be wrong. team game, and I remember I remember you have a lot of resources at the beginning. Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm not sure though how how much experience both of them have on that map. I don't, I don't remember uh, seeing uh, many of them play that map uh, in the last two weeks. Yeah, same. I think most people have been practicing the best of one maps. I guess that makes sense. Uh, by the way, while you guys were streaming some games, I was actually watching uh, Gotti play against uh, Trolloshka, and uh, he lost. And it was all due to the fact that he's not used to the uh, build power. Just yeah. That doesn't... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so different to Zero K. He just didn't ramp it up, and he had he was accessing metal in both games. Played. So, I'm not sure if the game does not start right now. Uh, we are having Sanya versus Rolashka. Oh, that'd be a good one to catch. Are they in um, in losers bracket? Are they? Um, or are they in winners? Oh, they're in winners. Nice. Yeah. So, I I would say um, if you asked me who I think was going to win, I'd probably say Katush or Ragnar. But um, in terms of who I want to win, I really want uh, Senya and, and Troll to do well because I've seen them just practicing games like every day. 
for the past few weeks they've just been playing one v ones non stop against each other and other people. I don't think anyone's been playing more than them. I think they're I think they're new to bar. I don't think they they played BA at all. So it's it's cool to see some new people doing well. Yeah, I hope they're enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little bit bummed. I was a little bit bummed that Mitvit dropped so early uh, because he was he had some really good matches against Ragnar earlier yesterday actually almost to old Ragnar in Red Comet and I was hoping to see some of those crazy wacky build. I mean, as far as Cartouche versus Ragnar goes, like Cartouche won the last tourney, right, in BA, which uh, Ragnar was uh, participating in as well. And yeah. uh, uh, in terms of gameplay, I mean, BA and Bar are almost identical. Yeah, I think that the subtle differences can definitely make the difference, though. If uh, I think it might be more of a hindrance if you come from playing BA for a long time and then you just play Bar for the first time. I think you can get yeah. tripped up quite easily on some of the costs and, and small differences. Well, I think that uh, more than that, you'd get tripped on like unit build picks and uh, you know just the controls and it's, it controls a bit differently, right? But, yeah. Uh, in terms of in terms in terms of costs, the differences are really negligible in my opinion. At the same time, I'm really excited to see a lot of the that mature knowledge from the 18 games being brought to bar. Um, we've seen some team games being played out very differently recently with this influx of PA players, and overall I think that's good for the competitiveness and variety in the game. So, uh, shouldn't we just uh, watch uh, Senya's uh, game? This yeah. Just oh, this one, yeah, sorry. It was, Katush oh. was downloading the map, but I think he's just finished it. So we should be getting into the uh, third game here. Pretty shortly. Future's got AFK. Fingers like crossed. <laughs> As the downs are such high quality maps, they are quite large. If this doesn't start in uh, in a minute, then we'll we'll swap to. Um, are they still on? Oh, here we go. They have started. I started up. Someone should keep their eye on the um, some of the other games though. Just see what scores they're on. It's actually going so much faster than the. Uh... You know, the BA tour, I guess it's because of the uh, one out of one games. Yeah, even though we've got 32 people, the, the best of ones are making it a lot faster. I do think that this is better though, because that tourney was so, it took so long to finish, my god. Alright, we're in. So, I think this tournament is map... good because it's organized so well, and that, that's all I can So, for this map, do you think these. Do you think there is room for any cheeky strategies, or just you know take the three maxes and go conservative? I think no, on these on these see, smaller maps. Look at the amount of rocks. Just, you see how many rocks there are. Uh, yeah, but how many? How much metal is there? Yeah, not much, but nonetheless. <laughs> Wait, aren't, aren't they all zero metal? Yes. <laughs> no. So by not oh, that much. one's ten. So these these ones are ten. Okay, these ones are ten. All right. Yeah, I've I've looked at the reclaim before. Uh, it's not really that significant the amount of metal that there is. Mm. At least not well, enough to invest in defense for your razors. Oh wait, is there are, are the rocks in uh, Altair Crossing? Are they more uh, metal rich? Yeah, the, the rocks in Altair are, are a lot. They're like eighty metal each or something, which is is a massive difference. Oh, guess we have to uh, see what happens. Although they're starting at different corners. Yeah, but, uh, it's the symmetric, the symmetric position. Do, what what side do you think, for example, uh, thinking about top, uh, right versus left? Do you think the asymmetry there favors any of those sides? I would say that it favors the left. Yeah, it think... has has four maxes so close nearby. Yeah, you got a much stronger and more secure starting position. Yeah, I think that they're going to go conservative with bots here. I'd be surprised if they went vehicles. I think vehicles is definitely viable later on, but in the early game, with the even though there is not a lot of metal that still adds up, and you've got the trees as well, which make a big difference. And it's just yeah, hilly it's bots. Hilly, yeah. Yeah, hilly maps. I think they really favor bots, but. Uh, it's a double-edged sword because the artillery from vehicles later might be uh, overwhelming. 
if the player can take advantage of it. Yeah, both going probably for three maxes. Yep. Yeah, start positions as the crow flies, not crazy far apart, but the terrain does slow things down a bit and you can't just charge up the hill with your units as soon as there's a couple of LLTs there. Yeah, uh, I think I this was a good call. As, as far as 1v1 maps, this is kind of medium sized. I think this was a good call for both players to go conservative, and I'm pretty excited about it because we'll probably get a longer match here. Now, looking at Reclaim, each side has around 500 to 600 metal. Yeah, something like that. One of the interesting things is that people seem to skip radars occasionally early on. I, that's one of the things that I'm not so sure on. I always go for radar first before LLT, to be honest. Think about it this way, right? If you, uh, let's say you make two LLTs in your base, essentially covering your base from any uh, early scout invasion, it isn't really that much point making a radar. Like, you can skip it at that point, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, what are you actually, you know, worried about? You can make it later because it is 60 metal. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think yeah. If you've got two LLTs covering everything, then you can you can think about skipping it. But I guess the alternative is skipping all LLTs and doing radar and units instead, and just uh, defending with micro. Well, you yeah, can, you know, uh, if you go one LLT, you can then use a unit or two to defend you know, the other side of your base or something. That's also possible. What is it was mentioning? Fleas can cross the water. Normally, yeah. fleet can't cross any water. I wasn't aware of that. Is that water? Right. Yeah, there's a very thin stream in the middle of the map, and normally fleets wouldn't be able to cross it. Uh, some of the spectators were asking if fleets can cross the water, and I confidently said no. And then moments yeah, but... later, as fleets run across the water. But that's not water. Is it? Yeah, there's the blue stuff is water. Looks like water to me. Yeah. Hmm. Why am I not getting the water effects on it? I can't comment. So there some are. people are pointing out that the water level is so low that fleas can cross it. So there is water there, but it's very low, which would explain, which would make sense. Anyway, so I'll... Regna went. Regna went for his usual to come nano expand. He was a little bit starved by it, and while uh, Cartouche has been going for the three constructors. Um, <laughs> And Cartouche has been favoring pushing with the commander. What do you think should be an advantage here? Or are there not any difference? Rag Ragnar's gone for a second nano already. I think um, well, in terms of build power, what, that... what you said is really interesting. Because I've seen some people that always, they get a nano. Like as soon as they get their first constructor, they build a nano. And other players just get more constructors. Um, and it's quite an interesting oh. sort of decision. Well, I mean, nano nanos are, are kind of more efficient at building, but when you have cons, then you know you're more flexible. Like suddenly, one of your con dies, you can immediately to yeah. you know to keep expanding. The nano is actually but, uh, weaker in the tier one uh, con bot as well. Bots have five forty health, the nano's got five hundred. However, build power per cost, the nano does edge out the three bots. Yeah, but in terms of like con pushes here. I don't know. I mean, like the center isn't very, isn't a very powerful place on this map, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually, you know, the better the better it is to go to the center, the better comp pushes are. Like if yeah. all things uh, um, being equal, right? But here the center isn't that that uh, powerful of a position. Yeah, Cartouche is got to the three max spot and he's going to secure that. While Ragnar is expanding with only the constructor, which will take a while to get those maxes. 
So we should see an economical advantage going to Cartouche soon. I think Cartouche really likes these hammers. I, I've seen him build hammers and thuds a lot, and uh, not many other players do that exclusively. Do you think Rag has picked up on this love of hammers yet? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Oh, he, even if he knew that there were hammers coming, I'm not sure he'd change anything because Pe Pee Wee's a changing to vehicles. Pee Wee's are not terrible against hammers if you can get a surround, but it depends on the terrain and and the micro. Well, Rag has already switched to vehicle. Yeah, he's reclaimed his bot lab. He has two nanos, and he's now got a vehicle lab up. I think that's risky. I don't think he has economic advantage to do that. Let's see if it pays off. Maybe he's seeing something that I am not. But Additionally, it's a I lot of territory to cover with vehicles over hilly terrain. Yeah, in terms of uh, metal, they're identical. Right? The only reason Ragnar has an advantage is because he reclaimed the lab. Yeah. Um, Ragnar is actually producing ever so slightly less than Cartouche, actually. Cartouche is on 19, Ragnar's on 17 production. I mean, if, if Cartouche messes up the the Hammer's micro, um, Ragnar could get back to the game. Ragnar is going for his usual strategy, which is closing the middle with the LTs. He really likes to close this, uh, the map, but at the same time he's exposing the middle and uh, Cartouche just denied there. I think it's still that Ragnar has all his arms because of uh, Peewee's while uh... Ragnar's army, while well, Pertouche went for hammers, and so he has an advantage in terms of pushing, in pushing mid. Like Ragnar should have ideally been able to use those Peewees to raid Pertouche in some way. But, uh... So the yeah, thing, Ragnar does this a lot where he, he swaps out to vehicles at uh, an almost predictive time. Um, and when he swaps out, he's like, he's lacking the production during that time, and while he's building up his vehicles, he's kind of vulnerable. So if Katusha knows that's happening, he can definitely take advantage of that and and push I mean, in early. Katusha right now can actually probably finish the game if he just went for the commander snipe. But he has a good chance Ragnar. of being able to do that. Does he know Ragnar Ragnar could go for I don't think he knows he's there. Ragnar is going yeah. for it? No, he doesn't. He's not on the radar. Oh, wait, that might be GG. Yeah, oh. yeah, I, I think he's going for it. Too bad. No, Katusha is not. Great decision. But. That's no. a lot of metal that Katush can now grab. I think I think that's probably game there. If Katush realizes, um, okay, he's going to the right side of the map, uh, which right is interesting. Is I thought he would go in for the kill there and kill the base, but yeah, that was it's going to be very hard to come back from that. It was a lot of metal. Mm. As long as Katush has well, it, it's a lot of metal. Though he's got the uh, commander Janus. Yeah, the commander is a bit exposed. If he is sent like two or three Genesis there, he could probably got a good snipe. I'm not sure. Um, Cartouche will be able to secure that wreck. Well, at the same time, the Tuds are closing into the commander, but they are uh, the commander is on a hill, so the D-guns yeah. oh, here we go. Must be pretty good. Oh, he's realized. Oh, he's in trouble now. Yeah, there's stuff flanking around from the top. This could be bad for Ragnar's got nothing to defend this at all. Yeah. Cartouche a little bit idle. Okay. okay, he's moving with the units to further surround. Yeah, this is going to be very hard to, to, I think it's to get away from. It's game over now. Yeah. He's kiting on both sides. Nice to, uh, to get the... Oh, nice micro. Not enough. I don't know, it's possible that the switch, like his plan to switch from Kipos to vehicles was what lost him the game. Because I guess he, yeah, he's, he's going to go... Yeah. The fact that he didn't also have any economical advantage to do it, I think, was an important fact. Because if you have, if you don't have, um, if you have some time idle, and you don't have economical advantage or the build power, it's just very big disadvantage. Well, he just lost the initiative, and I guess he was thinking that he's gonna make some fast units to kind of pull pull through in the in the early game and then switch to uh, uh, vehicles, but. That just uh, you know, made him lose initiative, and he couldn't really do anything against the uh, the hammers that Cartouche made. So this was two one, right? Uh, yeah, for Cartouche. Yeah, so yeah, Cartouche is gonna so. gonna go ahead against Senya. Senya be um, troll troll all worker. 
Um, <laughs> so I think c can someone tell them to like hold on because I want to cast. Uh, I want to yeah, see Andy on. versus a mighty sheep first, and then we'll we'll see their game after maybe. Is this whole game going on right now uh, between Duck Duck and Zayt? I think I think we should skip losers and just watch winners until um, until we get <laughs> to the finals. The, I didn't mean losers as in like the loser. I meant the losers bracket. <laughs> Ouch! Uh, yeah. The losers bracket is actually looking great. We have some great matchups there. Sandy's Back actually in there, so he's hurt. You. He's not going to start just yet. Okay, cool. Itaku versus Teddy, Trollalashka versus Duck Duck, Ragnar versus Ekros. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Let's let's watch some losers. Uh, I I want to I want to see Andy versus Drone. I don't want to miss this one. What? When are what holes are they? Uh, right it's, now? Um, 01, I think. 01. It's just started. Oh, I see. Yep. Again, they keep on moving around. <laughs> I, so, I'm taking notes of the features we can implement for the next tournament. So, yeah, this is um, best of three on Baron, then Flooded Valley, then Red Comet. I think uh, Andy's coming up. Much more prepared for this tournament than he did in for the last BA turn. He's been playing a lot of one v ones, right? Yeah, in bar. yeah. I've seen him play yeah. quite a few. Yeah. Is it worth starting a site that anywhere other than those four maxes? Um, that's a good question because it does almost look plausible to start in the other corner. Because it's only you're only a, another mechs down, but you're it's maybe a bit more secure. I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know. I think I think it might be a bait. Yeah, uh, what I've seen often players with high tiers do here is going for uh, two maxes on the top, a little bit of energy LLT, then two maxes on the bottom, a little bit of energy LLT. I think we'll probably see that here. I think I think you could start in the corner with that um, cliff if you were going to go for like an early comp push up the hill with thuds or hammers and, and get those on the hill and above the other person's base and shoot down. I think they, that could be a, a good strat. Oh, uh, Andy's going for the long uh, start while uh, Tron seems to be going for a faster one. Actually, no, he's making out these. So, uh, he's also going to make four maxes. Yeah, but Randy didn't go for the LLT on the bottom, which was a little bit risky. Maybe he was anticipating that Drone would go for the long start, but that was a little bit of a gamble. If Drone, for example, went for a very aggressive start, he could have got those two maxes on the bottom before Randy gets a factory ready. Yeah, that's Though true. The, the distance, distance is considerable. Yeah, but it is a very risky start uh, to start like with two maxes. They really don't have much metal. Like one of them is 1.8 and the other one is 1.0 or 1.4. That's a very low metal start. Both going Armada. We're seeing a lot of Armada here in these matches. Yeah, I They're think. Much stronger for the tier one stuff, I think, especially for bots. Yeah, for especially for. Um small maps because fleas and peewees are so good at small maps where you can get they're fast and they're they're cheap and you can get map control quite quickly am so i correct in thinking we have some larger maps later in the tournament yeah so um yeah especially that the winners finals and the grand finals are, are a lot bigger so hopefully there's there'll a big, be a big longer C closer map, right? games yeah, a big C map. Map. Lost yeah lost paradise is the c1 yeah, it seems also Maybe. that players have practiced a lot of Ravaged, which is a bigger one as well. We've not seen that yet, I don't think. Yeah. Only on the later stage. Is Comet Catcher in the, uh, on the map list? Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think the, the loser brackets, they have different maps, right? Um, I think there's a lot of similarities with winners, but there might be one or two rounds that have got different maps, yeah. Yeah, so in the winner's final, which is just the round after this one, we have Titan Duel, Ravaged, and Comet Catcher. Pretty classic. 
And for some reason, players have practiced a lot more Ravage than any other of those <laughs> maps. I think it's just a nice map to play. It's one of my favorites. It's just, uh, it gives good gameplay. Drone going for a greedy com constructor ahead, and Randy won't capitalize on that. That's, yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, how do you know to capitalize on it? If the opponent exactly. is defending well and preventing your scouts from getting nearby, you don't know that they're being greedy and you can't do anything with it. Well, you can you can send a few fleas to to or to park on the critical spots. True. But you'll only know that he's gone greedy after the fact. Yeah, I, I really like Drone's start here because he's expanding in every direction. His comm is going straight down the middle, which is where you want it to go usually. Um, yeah, and, and the fact and he's take control. The fact he managed to get that max on the left is, is very good. And at yeah. the same time, he's exciting everywhere, but he's also keeping tabs on Andy. Yeah, he's got peewees everywhere. Is Drone trying to secure? Uh, spot on Randy's side? Uh, yeah, you got no, I don't think trying to secure I think he's just trying to expand everywhere. Yeah, the, the come no, through the middle is. is really aggressive. Good grief, that's, I thought he was just going to sort of stop in the middle a bit, but no, he's yeah, he, he's trying to claim more than half of that. That's amazing. Well, I mean, that, you know, the steep corner isn't really a very strategic place for your common. Yeah, if he's gonna be able to catch the ST, uh, to capture this, uh, the uh, enemy side, I mean, uh, Randy's side, it's gonna be a big thing. And now he no, has to take his commander all the way back to the center. I, I feel like there's missing units from Andy. Has he maybe idled his lab or something? I feel like there should have been more from his lab at this point. So well, he does have metal FK. Produced, but yeah, he, he's floating quite a bit of metal. Ah, uh, yeah, he is, yeah. He has just finished the nano tower though. Drones done with the, the multiple constructors route. If Andy's commander gets scouted out, he's in serious trouble. Well, the thing is though that Andy right, is using peewees and they require a lot of energy, while a drone is making hammers, they don't. So this is why a drone is actually making better use of his resources while uh, Andy, well, now Andy's uh, making energy, but yeah. He's forced to make more solars just because he's making peewees. That's a good point. Uh, drone needs to expand to the right as soon as possible. Even though, yeah, they are on equal economies and Andy has not have had briefing room to expand to his side as well. So yeah, but Drone's Drone is expanding. just going there. Yeah, that's a pretty good move. Oh, um, Drone's cutting off Andy's commander from the rest of his forces. I mean, Drone's looking really good now, especially because Andy only has peewees, though he's making Rockos now. Is this the best of three? Yeah, it's best of three. Game one, or...? Yep, game one. Could be quite telling. <laughs> like, Andy has a few... some like some time now to and push uh, Drone away while Drone gets his uh, hammers to the center, because he will like, pause it a bit to make some energy. There's a bit of a gap in this unit. Uh... Yeah, but Randy, Randy needs to react fast because Drone will will soon capitalize on the map control that he has. And however, Drone is not is not uh, scaling his build power very well, and the units take a long time to reach that position. Yeah, he can potentially, and he can overwhelm Drone's commander right now. I think uh, uh, might be a bit risky, but he definitely could if you want to. Oh, he's going for the laser. He's. I mean, oh, look no. how many peewees there are. Right? It's like 20 peewees. Ooh, risky move. Think, uh, drones this, in trouble. This, this, this is good for Andy. Yeah, drones in a lot of trouble here. Oh, and wind, wind has just fallen to three, so he's the. Oh. Oh. Wow. That was a superb turnaround. I was like, yep, drones, drones got this, I was thinking. Yeah, that was really yeah, good I timing from Andy. I don't know if he did that intentionally, but when the wind dropped to three, he sent his peewees in at exactly that moment. I don't think it was intentional, but it worked out quite well. Mm. Um, I think Drone is, you know, the chances that Drone is going to win on Flooded Valley are low, I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he, he played this map at all while Andy did. 
So, and it's quite a tricky. I wouldn't, map. I wouldn't count them out just yet. I, I have seen him play one or two games on this map, where okay. I, uh, I wrecked him. But um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure I'll do fine. Humble brag, humble brag. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think that they start with uh, uh, vehicle or bot lab for the nano and wind is worth it. So if both go ships, which I think would be a more balanced matchup. Um, uh, the only variance that we should see is whether they go for subs first or for a regular composition. Subs first without scout, um, without scout from the opponent could be a very cheesy way to win the match. Yeah, this this map is quite cheesy. Well, I mean, if you some. just make a, if you um, you know, if you make a torpedo launcher, right? and uh, radar, you can defend against the sub pretty well. Yes, that's why I think scouts are really important at the start of the matchup, if go, both go for ships first. Yeah. Do you think either will go for air? I doubt that a lot. It's actually... Gone. No, that, that's, that'll be losing. That, that yeah. It's like an auto loss. There's no way to win the game like that. There is, uh, like, the... the What's what's uh, weird about the this map is that you have these rocks uh, at the corners, 200 metal, but yeah. they're really out of your way, like to get them. So it's always. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen some tricks air... that people have used to get those rocks. Yeah, Zekros has a very. Uh, the, I wait, is Zekros playing in the tournament? I think I think Andy's going to do it. If you watch Andy, I reckon he's going to do it here. Yeah, it's possible. The thing is, mm -hmm. I just... Uh, I've seen it quite a lot, but I think it's a bit slow. But we'll see. Yeah, I could be wrong. Factor, it's slower. Any, slower. any factory that you build before the ship factory here, I think puts you at a severe disadvantage. If the opponent can scout it ahead of time and just deny your shipyard. Yeah, he's doing it. So I'll explain this for anyone that doesn't get it. Um, so he's going to build the metal storage here, but not finish it because that lets him reclaim the rock because he's used the metal to build the storage which uh, frees him up to reclaim the rock with, without excessing and now that metal storage is going to slowly um, uh, deplete over time and feed metal back into him slowly rather than all at once so he's gonna, that's giving plus 7.5 metal now so he's going to be able to build this lab and uh, make use of all that metal but yeah I... Um. The other thing is, I you can, at the, at the north position, you can just reclaim this rock with a, a sea constructor. <laughs> it's, uh, I'd, I'd say that's probably more efficient. I don't understand, what is the advantage of going for this build from Randy? You mean with the metal storage? Yes. It no, no, with the, with the additional, additional energy. Um... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, what was the logic there? I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. But you see, despite the fact that drone started a uh, lap first, like a lap faster, without defending the rock, um, he couldn't get the rock. Did not. Yeah, huh. but that you know, his earlier lap didn't actually give him an advantage in terms of uh, being able to somehow grass on Andy's uh, later lap. You can definitely reclaim this rock with a constructor, but I think maybe it requires a bit of finesse. I'm not sure. I, I've seen it done before. Well, it's I'm sorry, I miss. Drone probably doesn't know about the walk in the water because he's not reclaiming it. Well, he's going for the rock in the mid. I'd say, yeah, he's, he may well be aware of the rock under the water. He's more focused on the strategic position of the middle along the two mechs there, and the rock's there. So, Drone has been super greedy with the the two constructors and Andy's just been pumping out units um, and he's not built any constructors yet. He's about to build his first constructor. If Andy Randy... is 200 metal ahead of drone at the moment. That will probably change him right now, drone grabbing stuff in the middle boat. If Randy gets back to this game, he's by denying these underwater maxes and he needs a unit capable of doing that. But that said, Drone does not have any static defense on base, so if he gets uh, caught by surprise, that could be a factor here. And he has less 
Well, he, they, they are heavy comments on board right now. It's a nice surround. That's great. That's a very nice Getting surround. That, get the that one decade that's got damage. around the back. It should get cleaned up. Yeah, it didn't even get the tidal generator. If you can get a res bot out or a res boat out, those are. I've I've not seen those at all. The Grim Reaper Resurrection subs, they're new to the game, I think, to bar anyway, and... Uh... No, no, they, they've been here for months. Yeah, but I mean, um, BA has never had them. It's quite an oh, interesting right, unit. How much do they cost? 210. Yeah, yeah, they're That's just underwater res bots, basically. A lot of energy. It's in interesting that Randy has not made a sub. He could have with his... Uh... Oh, these these decades come in from drone on the right. Yeah. They're gonna be uh, or corvettes, decades of corvettes, same thing. Yeah, but the yeah, corvettes can, uh, the... help kill them. The Just issue is that drone also took the center uh, while. While this is happening, oh, I think he's getting this constructor over here as well. Yeah, even if they're just a diversion, they're really good. Ah, uh, he might not get it. Yeah, you can, you and can he's going to get the lab. Oh, this is painful. Oh, he's going to. That could be game. He's got is three this title generators, four, five, six. I don't see how Andy can come back from this. In his lower start on this map, I think it's it's really not great. No, but like it's not like he... You know, the problem was that he had a slower start. Right? Well, I think Drone was only able to overwhelm units from Randy because of uh, the amount of infrastructure he had at the start with the metal income. Even though Randy had a good metal head start, he wasn't able to use it as efficiently as he could. <laughs> well, as you can see, like since, I mean, this uh, res can just keep on resing endlessly. Mm. It's a big deal. There's no anti submarine stuff in Andy's arse at the moment. Plus, Andy still only just rebuilt his lab, and has very good energy production as well. Yeah, it's right, really the... very bad for Andy. Like so nice to rest him. He took out a nano turret and a tidal generator. If Randy does not make any unit capable of taking out the underwater maxes, uh, the only thing that Ron needs here is just to defend his base. Yeah, I mean, John has a lot more metal income. He has all those wreckages to replant. Okay, now Randy. Now Randy is making two subs. Yeah, he's making two subs. Yeah, he's making two subs. This could provide some leeway to well, do some damage and perhaps do some. Drone, drone is making a torpedo launcher. He actually has two now, each on, <laughs> one on each side. Yeah. It's a bit too late now for the sub. Yeah, that sub is not going to have a good time. Well, it can just... Uh, I mean, oh, the sub can kill uh, a torpedo launcher if it doesn't actually, have radar. Actually, sub's going to avoid the right-hand torpedo launcher. Yeah. That's oh, drone, has, drone has not... Drone has not gone for defense. Oh, he's going for a destroyer, right? Oh, right, yeah. The destroyer will be out in just about in time to take out the sub. That yeah. is bad timing for Andy. Well, and it's just drone has so much, so much resources now that it's uh, kind of lost. Seven point one versus five point three k, and the razors are doing work. Yeah, yeah, he's realised now. GG. Yeah, he's controlled. Okay, I'm surprised that drone managed to win. All right. Um, are we going to a third game? I forgot who won the first one. Um, Andy won the first one because Drone overcommitted. Remember? Third game, yes. <laughs> hey, and it's Red Comets, a map they should both be familiar with. Yeah, this is uh, one of the most classic one v one maps. Are we going to see only Flash Spin or Pee Spin, or something else? I imagine. I imagine they'll both start bots, but yeah, vehicles are, are definitely viable still. Okay, 
Dren's just having some issues, so it'll be a few minutes. Let's see what other games are going on. Um, he's, he's, I don't think he's realised you don't have to update every time you reload the game. Plus, if you want to use the experimental version, guys, it updates very quickly. The first time it'll be a full update, but after that, it's a couple of megabytes. It's insane. It's like it's like a game on Steam. So just looking at the the brackets, there's uh, Teddy's been knocked out already, which is a shame because he's uh, he's a good player. I don't know if it's um, a, a tournament game or not, but uh, Mitvit versus Goda is happening on AU zero zero. Um, yeah, that is a tournament game, but that's losers round three. They're um, they're they're quite behind. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. The game is starting. Okay. Yeah, after this one, we could maybe we can jump into losers and catch a bunch of those games. Yeah. So um. Right, so Senya is, uh, is playing against Cartouche at some point. That should be interesting. I mean, based on what we've seen so far, what are your guys' predictions of who's going to win this one? Of this game, I don't have a clue. <laughs> to be honest, this whole tournament is uh, is quite balanced. I thought um, I I would have said Katush would be the favourite to win, but honestly, I think there's there's like five or six people that that could take it. I think uh, Katush, uh, Mighty Sheep, Andy, Pitak, uh, Ragnar. Even saying yeah, is, is in the running. The who are still in the running? That's it. Yeah, you're basically. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, isn't? Oh, it's red. Comment. I was looking at the wrong place. I thought it was comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, in this map, green moon, you've gone too far. Yeah, in this map, you can theoretically both start uh, bots or vehicles. Though bots are usually more common. I think Andy's going vehicles. He's got two solars first. Oh no, he is going bots. And arm again. Um, I'm not getting it. I, I think, I think Cortex on bots in this map is not so bad. Cortex on vehicles on this map is pretty good as well. There's a lot of options here. Mm. I think because of it, it's start, but usually you see it's corner versus corner, but that's. Uh, usually because it's fixed position, but in in start boxes when they both yeah starting in the mid is okay. is quite strong with bots. Andy made a bit of a mistake by uh, going to solos before the uh, the lab. You don't actually I have to do that. These are more favored because of fleas, do you think, or is there anything? Yeah, else? massively. The flea is something that is without parallel in the core armory as a bot. So you're able to have the easy start of bots, especially with peewees as well, but you've got the flea and the core has nothing. If, I, if I'm core against you and I'm, I'm bots, I don't get a counter to your flea. I get AKs. Yeah, I agree with that. The, yeah, but AKs I are think... pretty good because they're, they're the cheapest. Like, aside the, from the uh, flea, they're the cheapest. The, the AK is good, but it's not as good as a flea for what the flea is good at. The flea is so much faster, cheaper, and a good scout. The AK is good at what it does, don't get me wrong, but I don't have a counter to the flea, or I don't have a, an opposite to the flea if I'm caught. Yeah, I think in these higher stakes matchups, having earlier intel is crucial. Oh, yeah. So I really like I really like AKs, I think they have a good advantage over uh, PeeWees if you can micro them. In this map, I really like AKs. Yeah, completely agree with that as well. The only thing you to be careful with the AKs and a lot of the core units is your energy balance. Or they stop firing. And any micro mistake, you can lose all of the AKs pretty easily. Yeah, Pee just bunch up, throw them into the into the opponents, and hope it works out for you. It probably does. Well, I'll be honest, you also have to, um, micro the Pee as well. Yeah. Like if the, if the enemy player micro sees AK, you're gonna suffer if you're not microing your Pee Yes. I think it depends on how many you've got. 
As the numbers grow, the Pee-wee gets stronger and stronger. With smaller numbers, the AK is stronger, I agree. In equal I skill, I think... You what? first? Uh, I think in equal skill, uh, AKs should be able to push Pee-wees, but Pee-wees, they have advantage uh, for raiding on open maps because you just can't cover the whole map. But this map, I think it's small enough for AKs to be very useful. It's kind of yeah. strange that Andy went um, top. Like he's expanding top as opposed to just uh, towards the center bottom. Neither of them are expanding center. That's what I was about to say. Um, it's quite unusual to see that in any 1v1, let alone a high stakes one. I suppose maybe, maybe because they're... it's possibly the last game of the series. Well, it's, it's the last game of the series for both players. Maybe they're both playing more conservatively as a result. Even if they don't realize it. I... Yeah, I think so. I think they're both going more conservative, going for the maxes first and making sure that they are able to stabilize from the early game. I think it's just the start positions. Uh, charges. I think in fixed positions where they're both in the corner, you always see the calm go towards the center because there's not much else to, to do. But in when you start in the middle in, in like this, um, yeah, I think you just want to go towards those two mixes that are quite close to each other. I guess the middle is fine as well, but... Yeah, Randy might be able to catch that constructor, that would be huge. Okay, he does not have intel on that. No LLT so here. he'll be able to take the Yeah, that was a good catch. You can actually get the... Uh... Oh. Yeah, really uh, Randy, got, Ray, uh, Randy also got a, a good defense back at home and he, he is able probably to see that constructor building that LT and he will be able to defend his commander and project against that expansion from drone. So I'm liking Randy's position at the moment more. I think that's completely fair. I, I think I like Drone's position more if he can uh, if he can protect all his expansions because he's got two constructors expanding or well two that should be expanding but um, if he can if he can secure all of that um, he's going to be able to to steam ahead with economy. Well, uh, Randy could arguably just send the PUs he got there and kill the constructor in LOT. He actually has stalled a little bit on doing that. I think it's a mistake going here just to 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 go around after that single PoE. Because he, if he if he takes top, he has a direct direct uh, line to drone's base. So that said, he might be able to deny those three maxes on the bottom from drone. Yeah, if he can get these PoEs, oh, and he stalled with the. He hesitated with the PeeWees. I think they're just on maneuver. Yeah. It's a lot of PeeWees going after that one PeeWee. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah. That said, though, if they don't catch it, it's killing off a couple of mexes, so probably worth it. Me meanwhile, Randy's uh, raiding uh, top mexes. Yeah, if Randy just takes that LOT and kills the commander and the two mexes. I think he he has already a good income advantage for a while. I'm not sure why he's not prioritizing that. Okay, right, he sees the constructor. constructor. We see a lot of of Pewies around drones commander. It does yeah, not seem enough. For him. Yeah, it doesn't seem enough. <laughs> And he's got two nanos, and uh, Drain's only just starting on his nanos, so he's got a lot more build power to work with. Yeah, and Andy could arguably go for vehicles now to use Andy that metal. Has more solars. Is Andy going to see these peewees coming around the north? Oh, he, uh, he has a raider. Them. Yeah, but he might be distracted. <sighs> well, he has seen them. He's definitely seen them. Sorry. I might be able to get a lot done here. Yes, I'm re really surprised by the lack of reaction. Yeah. Both players floating a bit of metal at the moment as well. 
Shows how much time it's only the micro. I think that uh, they would have done better if they were cool. I went for that top of stop max of the one LP. Now yeah. they're just uh... Those Peewees up top right. will overwhelm the NLT and they won't be seen until yes. too late because I don't think Drone has a rate on it. Uh, Andy's it, backing uh, out. Oh, that, that could have done so much damage. Yeah, I don't know why he backed off. It's because he's going to support the commander. He might uh, be afraid of not having vision there. Yeah, it's a lot. Alright! Yeah. Oh my god. Drone resigned. Okay! <laughs> Kratush and Sanya are going to play next, I believe. Uh, they were wait. They wanted to start playing, but I asked them to wait until you'd until we'd finish this one. Awesome. Okay, are they in here? Yeah, they are. I think. Yeah, so they might just jump in. Now. All right, Kratush against Sanya. They both in this game. Yeah, Synth's still here. Just an interesting match that we have in the losers round, meet with the versus Gade. I wonder how it's gonna go. So this will be a best of three again. Baron, Flooded Valley, and Red Comet again. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited to see what I'm excited to see what they're going to come up with on Flooded Valley. Oh, well, Senya doesn't really like Flooded Valley, unless he changed his mind, mind last week. <laughs> he, he might, if he wins, he might start liking it, you never know. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, we got Ragnar that's available to talk. Alright, let's get him in. Hey guys, Yo. good game so far. Yeah, GG's. Very nice games. We like your playstyle. You're still in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm up against the winner of uh, Trollolo and DuckDuck. Uh, okay. So, why do you think you lost against Cartouche? Uh, the last game, I, um, I was a bit nervous and I went all in. Because I think he's a better player than me, so I wanted to go for an all-in, but it didn't work out. And afterwards, I, I saw I was actually ahead economically, so I shouldn't have done that, I guess. Who do you think is going to win this game? Between... I guess favored. Yeah, yeah. So Senya is really good, but uh, he, he's a new player, um, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on him but he, he's, he's surprisingly playing. good he's been playing a lot in the last two weeks like one v ones yeah senia i think he's a very strong player um, in terms of the decision making he does not make a lot of mistakes beginners do uh, but he lacks the the multitasking and micro we see on these top tier players but otherwise senia does not have anything behind in terms of you know the decision making and uh, being able to assert the, st the state of the game. It's just, at least in my opinion, it's the multitasking and a little bit of micro as well. Looks like the same start from both of them. Arm um, again. It's a really uh, interestingly, nice Sene is not going for the long wall. Uh, both players are not. Like this is essentially the income is 2.8 metal. That's uh, it's a bit more than a than a single max in the, in the, on most maps. So it's a really low metal start. I think if you go for an infrastructure, that makes sense. But given the distance, I'm not sure raiding is too viable here for very early aggressive starts. At least, yeah. But if, if if you expect if you expect that to be true, then you expect your opponent not to v defend very heavily against early raids, and you can go for an all in that way. That's true. That's true. Yeah, which is actually happening. Cartouche uh, is investing in two constructors, and he does not have an LLT, so 
Yeah, that's a pretty good point. Yeah, but he's gonna make fleas now. Just in time. Though this one coming from the hill might be able. Oh, okay. Hard to see, isn't it? A lot of fleas, actually. That was a very good timing. Yeah, I wonder if he calculated this due to the map side. I don't know, but it was very good. Moving out with the constructors as well, while the fleas provide vision. Yeah, this looks like a really strong start from Katouche. He's got four constructors out. Meanwhile, Senia is not expanding, just now moving the commander out. And his base is exposed, and he's not protecting his base at the moment. If just one of these fleas go around and sneak there, it could do some good damage. Yeah, I'm not sure what Sina is trying to achieve here. Going up that ramp, you know. Yeah, the issue is that uh, Kratush is gonna get the wreckage here. Oh, actually, Senior was able to distract a little bit, but that single... He might be able to get one constructor even... if he's fast. Yeah, he could be reclaimed. Not quite. It looks like Senior is just going full-on aggro, rallying all his units to the other side of the map, but... I don't think he's got as much done as he hoped to. Yeah, maybe he feels like the underdog in this match, so he wants to try and achieve some something by being cheesy, mm -hmm. but it has not done a lot yet. And his base is quite exposed. I'm really surprised the cartouche has not tried to sneak in a flea on the bottom side. Yeah, no, he's really exposed, I just realized. He's gonna be able to reclaim all this all this package. Might be might not be that much, but still when the game's close, it's important. Swapping into his hammers. I mean, he does love his hammers, so can't blame him. And if you put them on top of the ramp, they are very powerful. Is it yeah, the they're right great on map. I was expecting a lot of these players to go for Rocco Spin, and I'm really surprised they are not. Uh, Rokos are quite bad against PVs though, like really really bad. Oh, okay. Senior's gonna try and... Yeah. Okay, Katush backed off. Probably saw these PVs and thought it's not worth holding it. I thought... So Katush likes to do his little trick where he... Um... Uh, it builds an yeah, LLT no to bait the com and then stands in front of the LLT and enemy no T-guns his com. Disadvantage. Like, there's nothing he can do, the Kratush can just push in with his hammers. That said, Kratush is... Oh. Kratush has been slacking a little bit with those two constructors. Yeah, I noticed while that. Senior, hey. Senior is going forward. I think Senya could have all in here. There's a. Uh... Is... I don't know why he's still making views. Views offer him the possibility of map control out of matches where he's thinking. Yeah, but he can't really do anything with them because otherwise Kratush is going to push him. He's going to get some good raiding done, Senya, with those three yeah. Peewees at the north. He's, he should be able to get three mechs here. 
Yeah, the three people at the top could be huge. Um, but uh, there's he's calm. No, there's no um, LLT in the base itself. They could get the mexes and a bunch of the wind. Yeah, Katoosh just realising. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely disagree that he cannot get stuff done with you. <laughs> he's gonna. He might just have to ignore his base and just go in for the kill here. It's definitely a good move, but the problem is that. Uh... Yeah, it looks like he's given up on his base already. Yeah, Cartouche, Cartouche might be able to cut off with the hammers if he spreads them on the side and he's doing that. Oh, no, this, no. this calm is yeah, just he, dead. He... And it's GG. Probably, yeah. Uh... First two guns good, the second just not good enough. That was a nice uh, quick win there for Cartouche. So, do you think it was a legit start, the strat for Sunny on the start, or maybe he was a little bit nervous and I tried think, to do something against? I think the map experience came into play there, because Baron is an old map, it's been around forever, so Katush is probably quite familiar with it, and um, his start was a lot more know. explosive. I've often noticed Sunny uh, making uh, peewees, uh, like, uh, um, like he, he's making them when he should have already stopped. It's a man after my own heart. That's what I do. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I, I don't necessarily agree with you about the Peewees. I think that the way that he used them could have been better, and the bit of raiding that he did do got him some massive gains. He just needed to be fast with it, I think. Yeah, and I think you have to defend that hill, because the hammers have very low range and speed going up the hill, so you can actually defend the hill with, with LLTs and Peewees. I was really impressed by that build from uh, Cartouche. Uh, it was as greedy as he could do with the timing of a uh, decent start from the opponent. So I think that point about map experience was valid there. It must have be interesting. All right, flooded valley, cheese map. I think the only cheesiness is if both players one goes sub and the other does not scout it. I think Any there's more cheeses. That is I think there's more potential cheeses here because the the boxes are big enough to start on those little islands, which is like, uh, I think there's something there. I'd like to see people experiment with that. But um, I, I think you, you can go air and you can go amphib as well. Yeah. I don't know. I think any start that is lower and does not go for the ship first is is under favored here. At least that's my opinion from what I've seen so far. Because if you can just deny the shipyard from the opponent, you have a lot of control. The only the only thing you need to do is a early scout. Oh, did they just add this? The uh, game starting in three, two, one. Yeah, yeah. It's been there for a few days now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really nice touch, I think. Uh, a big thing is that wind is is reasonable here, and tidal is very low. So if you have a land construction unit making winds, that's extremely handy. It's a good point. I wasn't aware of that. That is a really good point. But at, at, at least for the very early game, I still think the shipyard is very important to start instead of uh, bot or vehicle web. What if you build the shipyard with your comm and then put the comm back on land and build wind turbines? Well, the problem is that you won't be able to stop the opponent from getting mid if they come walk there. And then the opponent can just make wind in the middle. Yep, that's fair. Now, Cartouche uh, is on. going for a very, very conservative start. Uh, he's going for a Corvette, which I think is a good choice. Um, it's, it's the, the funny thing is that the Corvette is actually cheaper than the Scout. I, I'd really like to see some cheaper Scout here. So Cartouche has done my exact start. This is what I would do probably every game on this map is just... You get the initial economy and just make a lab and just spam as many decades out as you can and just try and uh, stop the opponent from doing anything. Although he's actually abandoned his lab.
The cartouche seems to be going. I'm not here. a big fan. I'm not a big fan of the Corvettes. I think um, the other units just are better. Yeah, the it's most cost efficient unit. I've seen this uh, tournament actually. The most cost efficient unit, at least for CLT start, seems to be the Frigate. And then the only thing that, at least that's my perception, uh, the only thing that you need is some way to deal with subs. So for example, some Rise for range harass and defending against the occasional subs. But if you can make as much con Frigates as you can, uh, I think that's a good way to get some advantage. And Cartouche is going for the middle here. Um, I really like his position at the moment. This is something you don't see very often as players just leave their C lab with no constructor. I have seen it before. It's got a, it, I think it's got more build power than a normal lab, and uh, units are oh, a little more expensive. So you, you can get away with just skipping constructors, assisting the lab, especially on this map where there's not much uh, metal early on. Yeah, Cartouche is putting pressure on Sania, so. Um... It's a little bit of a bold move because he does not have intel on the map, but if yeah, he's just retreating because he was not feeling safe. But yeah, so he doesn't have build power though. Like he uh, just left his lab. Well, I guess uh, Cartouche did as well, but he's, he has a con now. He has two cons next to his lab. Actually, Senia does not have any constructor in the queue. Instead, going for a sudden fight for that is that's. A little bit scary for him. I think he's he's in a very bad position at the moment. He just lost me. Cartouche doesn't have anything yeah. against uh, subs queued though. Yeah, but he can't get into the uh, into uh, Senya's base. I just destroy his left. He just needs to. Dis oh, and he, he reveals the sub. Yeah, he, he just needs to disengage or micro round it and then get his own counters to serve. Yeah, he's losing. In fact, he's gonna lose that. Uh, yeah, that lab's gonna gamble with the titles. Yeah, subs are really bad to micro. Uh, yeah. Senya might be able to do the exact same thing. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting turnabout. Oh, no, I think the Corvettes are slightly worse at, like PBs versus AKs, they're slightly worse at raiding. Yeah. But I think they're better in skirmishes. Because they're more accurate and like, maybe slightly slightly bigger range. A sub now. You will need to make good use of a sub. To have a chance. Uh, some cheesiness. Yeah, um... What's that? Uh, <laughs> Cartouche saw the submarine, right? Because well, he's not making any counters to it. This is an alpha tournament, He's by the way. Making... Maybe he didn't notice. He's only uh, making Corvettes. If Senya loses his uh, Corvettes, now that would be a shame. Okay, he's going for a sub now. Okay, yeah, I think I think this is... I don't know if that's recoverable at the moment. Though, Senya got the shipyard back, but he's not supporting it. It's even idle, so... Yeah, what, I'm not what sure. is he doing? Is the sub gonna get there in time? Uh, he's, uh, he's, going for, dead, I mean. he's going for frigates. If he had like three or three, he could perhaps hold that position, but just the one here won't be enough. He's not microing the sub. Yep. Yeah. Why is it? What is it doing? Oh, no, no. uh, he could. Oh, Cartouche, is, Cartouche is not microing that sub on that Saras in his. Like, okay, no, no, he's dead. He's gonna lose his lab again. <laughs> this is a... This is oh. a... So yeah, sub micro is a little bad. Wait, are they missing the lab? <laughs> oh, no they're not. Got a UI bug. Uh, not bad turn. Good turn. Nothing, nothing you can really do now, there's no way to escape. Yeah, interestingly, Sonia has now the same metal income, but... He won't be able to make that shipyard anytime soon. Yeah, GG. Jeez. That was a decisive victory there.
All right. So any of any of you think that a slower start is viable on this map, and which build is that? Which start? Any start. Any start that is not cheap, conservative. I've, I've Rex said uh, I've not seen it, but Amphib start with a vehicle lab. Yeah, so you do vehicles. You make one um, Amphib uh, attack unit and an uh, Amphib con. You can easily take maxes in the sea because usually the opponent doesn't go subs, and you can raid the enemy island because people don't usually make LLTs there. Uh, you are a bit late on sea, uh, but torpedoes are, are quite cheap, so you can easily defend your sea lab with torpedoes, and you can get nano up as well. Uh, but you do need uh, the enemy not to go frag it first. That's that's the one counter to it. Okay, I'm jumping into uh, a different game. Let's see what we got. PTAC versus Gode? That sounds like a very good game. Uh, Ragyo against Troll next, I think. <coughs> Alright, I'll be heading. Alright, good luck. Best games. Thank you, cheers. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Right, yeah, Godi vs. Uh, PTAC should be starting soon. I think it's... is it 101? Is it a... Yes, um, 101. 101. Okay, I'll be right back. Will, uh, like A lot of viewers. Yeah, 75 at the moment, isn't it? I've not got the stream up at the 85. moment. 85. 85 grief. Well, if you want to build a stream, just uh, put some money into a tournament then. That's the solution. I'm surprised that Duck Duck has dropped. At the round four. Yeah, I was I was quite surprised that as well. He's really good. I, I think the level the of this. Yeah, he dropped on level four as well as Teddy. I think the this tournament level is very exciting. Mm. Even in the losers bracket, you can see a lot of great matchup. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Troll In versus episodes? Ragnar, winner versus that is against Mighty Sheep, and then Gade versus Ptek, and the winner of that is against Senya. Any of you think there were any upsets so far? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think Gade, Gade beat Triton. I think that's an upset. Oh, did he? Yeah, because Triton mm -hmm. was like second on the uh, on the leaderboard for True Skill. Wow, yeah, and Godet doesn't play bar at all. That is true. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't play bar at all. And yeah. Triton hasn't been playing for hasn't played for like half a year or something. Yeah, but he, he used to play a lot. Um, but yeah, I guess they were both um, kind of rusty. I I don't think Godet he... ever played much BA. So. Yeah. And this week, Meet Vito had had a pretty good. Uh... A lot of matchups in practice, and he even got some good matchups against Ragna, and Godi handled it well. So, yeah, very good job there. Are we gonna watch the uh, Godi Peter game? Yo, Andy. Hey. How's it going? Uh, pretty good so far. Got any interesting thoughts about the games? Um. No, it's been quite straightforward. Learned quite a bit about uh, Flooded Valley. <laughs> How are you feeling against uh, against Sheep? Easy win? Uh, well, he's always got the potential to win. It's not like straightforward at all. But... all right. He played well.
Are we watching the uh, Gotti Peter game? Yeah. Yes, it's starting right now. Oh, Gotti didn't actually beat Triton, apparently. Apparently, Triton dropped out because his laptop ran out of battery. <laughs> yeah, apparently, he's. Uh... tournament without a power supply. I mean, that's, that's next level optimistic, really, isn't it? He was powered by solar, and apparently, it's not very sunny today where he is. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he ran out of battery against me in the winner bracket. It was near wins. the end of the first game. Yes, uh, Pitaki versus God. It just started. Yeah, I'm I'm casting it. Oh, oh, you've got the wrong overlay. There you go. When I was, when I was young, we had the constant power sources. So, any interesting builds here that we would like to see that are not conservative? I think uh, Ptac's quite good at this map. Yeah, He's uh, yeah. quite aggressive with uh, Peewees and Fleas. Apparently played a lot. I think a trap of this map is to try and push too quickly with Rockos and you can get flanked. Do you think, for example, uh, one max start going to live is feasible? Try and harass the opponent if they go greedy. Uh, I think it's quite a gamble because it's not too hard to cover off uh, starting in a corner with uh, one LLT in your commander. I think two's pretty good. Two max. Possibly he changed uh, to a different camera? Oh yeah, got his weird camera. Maybe we can see a bit of that this oh, game. Oh yeah, he, he likes yeah, that, that, that tilted that. camera. Bed's eye view. <sighs> Is that what gives him the edge <laughs> over our other players? Definitely gives well, him a unique perspective. <laughs> yeah, he... Oh, maybe it, it works well because of the uh, scrimmage eye and... Uh, Okay. I don't know. He likes to he likes to align it so it's bottom versus top. So he got into a mind state where you know he's very used to it. Uh, I I have some of that as well. For example, some maps I prefer to go left to right or top to bottom or bottom to top. It's very specific thing. You get used to it. Yeah, that's true. You get used to a certain position, so you have to invert or set the map to what you expect if you start it on a side that you're not used. In this case, it's a little bit more extreme because, at least from what I have saw on the BA uh, tournament, he likes bottom versus top, and since he's starting on the corner here, he's going to be in a low angle position. Got it, just having some issues getting into the game. I think he quit, right? Because he had the camera problems. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to rejoin now. I think the, the most amount of specs that uh, any bar game had at any point in history. I think it is a, a new record, yeah. Yeah, the tournament. I don't think I've ever seen a 32-player tournament in uh, in any spring game before. I think Zero K's had some big ones. Maybe Zero K had a couple 32s. I can't remember, but certainly any sort of TA-based game has never had anything this big. Interesting. It's ha has to be to be uh, a trailblazer then. Just cash. Well, but um, what? How, how does it feel to be a trailblazer of the tournament scene then? What is what's a trailblazer? The, the one who leads the way, who, who sets the example, who who sets the bar higher. The bar. Sort of <laughs> that was not an intentional. <laughs> I only realised it after you said it. I kind of wanted to play. I think I think if there's any future tournaments, I'd I'd like to maybe organise it, but I'm not going to stream it because I want to play as well. Yeah. So interestingly, God uh, has done that. He's going bottom versus uh, bottom against top on his camera. <laughs> so right, anyone looking at the stream, this is uh, 
This is Gade's camera perspective. Oh my goodness! Little known fact, he actually lies his monitor down on the table and bends <laughs> over it and stares down while he plays. He's got one of those smart I'm, tables. And just I'm surprised he's it. not like a hammock that he sort of like hangs from the ceiling above it, to be honest. Well, if he wins the tournament and we have an interview with the winner, uh, the first question I'd like to hear is why he does that. What are you smoking? What's wrong with him? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be very impressed if he beats Pete Take though, because he just doesn't have the game knowledge that I think Pete yeah, will have. Yeah. He lost the, the Troll Oshka because he, he's not used to the build power. Like, he was accessing metal. So, well, unless he this... figured that out, he's going to have trouble. Yeah, he'll have strong to... micro and macro, but not the strategy, I guess. I think this might be part of his decision to go aggro here. Or at least going forward. That's and nice coverage from Ptek. He could get that flea and Ptek moves. Yeah, this is why I didn't like one mech start. It's quite easy to cover off in a corner. Well, God, he does not have anything to protect in his base at the moment. Okay, he's got a, another PV now. Sneaky flea. That was some nice micro. Ptex splitting the fleas here. It's a good micro. Should be able to get that max. Nice. Really well done. He can get the other one now as well. Not quite. Close. Oh, really? When you're against Godry, he starts to type in all chat. That's when you know he's uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's starting to tilt. <laughs> if you don't type in, it's a good sign. I mean, obviously, it means he's not actually getting orders, so yeah, definitely. This might be Gutty's last uh, tour in the bar. <laughs> I feel like he's not happy to find this out now. Well, he should have practiced. He didn't play any warm-up games yeah. that I saw. Yeah. Well, if you can look at his chevron, he's got one chevron. He's, he's got almost no time in the game whatsoever. And no defenses on his maxes. He might lose those in the middle. Yeah. He's, he's not learned to lesson on those. Taku is splitting up his PBs as well. Yeah, this might be unrecoverable. I mean, unless yeah. Taku messes up. I just think that God is not used to losing this badly, yeah. consecutively. Interestingly, both players have produced almost exactly the same amount of metal overall though, so even though Godi has lost a lot of metal extractors, he's not as far behind as it might look. I think that's going to change very quickly. I, I think so as well. Taku is now on plus 9 versus plus 5. Well, that positioning from his commander is not nothing, but he might not be able to hold that, especially if that res are reclaiming. Got it. Might be able to get a constructor here. Respite Anacon. Yeah. Oh, did Taku just get another Mex? <laughs> yeah, I think he sniped another mech. He's really shutting down uh, Gotti's metal. Yeah, yeah but yeah, but Gotti got his uh, column down. Mm. It's still plus nine versus plus five. Oh, that's gonna dig on this LLT. Oh. Uh, oh, that's great. Oh. you must know that he's gonna lose that fight, right? Yeah, I think he's he's not too worried. Uh, he's just a bit nice raid. Game. Nice Very raid. nice raid. God, he's really not looking that bad, considering. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he has a horrific all... start, but. If he's just able to secure that choke on the bottom and use the advantage that he has to get the middle to Maxis. 
Oh. That could regret getting his let his commander get low when he didn't need to. Uh, yeah, Pitaco is really. I'm not sure what he's going for there. He could lose if God uh, went aggress right now. He feels like he's overconfident almost. God, they're like, gonna go in. And his raids he's really thinking about it. Him. He's thinking about it. Oh, he should have mm. done. His com can just laser the opponent com. Oh, hang on. There's another flea. <laughs> Can the fleas again? And there's the more boys. Yeah. Maybe oh, God is waiting for that wind to drop. <laughs> might have yeah. been. Would have been a good I doubt he knows that, but mm. he might do. Okay, that flea will get it, Max. Or not? He does not. Okay. Ah, God has sent some uh, some peewees around. If he gets this LLT, then he's in a good spot. Mm. Uh, it's going to kill all the peewees. Not quite. Oh, that's really bad for Taki. Yeah, this is gonna get a lot done. Oh, God is holding on to this game. I'm really impressed. And yeah. he has that position. I, I think he's, he's more than holding on. He's clawing it towards him, I think. He didn't quite get that mix, but they come the reinforcement. God, he's on plus nine metal. Taku's on plus five. Any additional second that God does not use that that constructor on the bottom right is screwed. God is also producing twice the energy of Taku at the moment, though Taku did lost in metal. Windmills. Yeah. Oh, in terms of uh, metal produced, they're equal. Yeah, that's not something that he can do at the moment. Oh, he's the constructor. Is... Damn. Yeah, th yeah. Th that. Oh. Do you think that was worth it? Or yeah. Possibly, right? I think that was definitely worth it. God is base is still unprotected by anything. This radar is nice from Godet, right in the middle of the map on the high ground. Yeah. So he he, he does see this coming. Oh, that's a good <laughs> The flea got through. Here we go again. <laughs> oh no! God, he's got PTSD at this point, isn't he? Do you not build like uh, defenses in ZK? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like small ones, like LTs? Every time I played against God in Zero K, he just he didn't build any LTs. He just goes pure like aggro and naked expand because he's he knows oh, how good he is. That's that's very painful. He's got all his energy. Mm -hmm. And the three will take the other max. Yeah, oh. that is painful. <laughs> he's just move commanded his commander towards Pitax. I wonder if he's thinking something here. What, like do or die? Yeah. <laughs> Might if be. God, if God Pitax is... commander is absolutely defenseless. GG. God, he's got <laughs> nothing to back this up though. He's got. He's actually gonna lose now. He's got we five bring, PBs, uh, but uh, he's, he's, no... <laughs> he's losing another max. I think maybe. Some advice for Godet would just be put an LLT next to every mech. Yeah, kind of <laughs> yeah. God, he's got no energy, so he, he can't dig on any units, but. You got slightly more health than Tack. Ah, Tack needs to not block his commander with those peewees and slow it down. <laughs> oh, Over the hill. Oh, this is okay. rough. Tack has no energy. Oh, God, he's gonna win. Oh, no! Wow. <laughs> oh. That was not the end I was that, expecting. That was impressive. Nice play. That was very impressive. The fact that Godet pulled that back from the start that he had losing his mexes every five seconds was uh the start he had losing it. That well, the whole, the whole game. game. Yeah. He's still angry though. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you be? <laughs> like, even if you win, it, it, winning that way, you, you feel that you got outplayed and you won by luck almost in some cases. Uh, why? What? What was God complaining about? He said commander inaccuracy. Yeah. So his commander missed some of the shots against the fleas at the start, 
where he was expecting a 100% hit rate, but against scouts, the commander sometimes misses. Gotcha. Is that related to the turn rate of the commander, or are the shots inherently inaccurate by a I think it's the commander is inaccurate against scouts in general. I don't think it was turn rate related because it's a point it's a point shot laser. I could be wrong though. What's the next next game we're gonna watch? Um, um is that... these two still? Yeah, are they done? Got it's, a... it's... I think it's one one. Oh, so yeah. oh it's one one. Yeah, I assume so. Okay. So it's falling down now. Yeah, okay. Best of three. And God it knows this map because it's uh, in the ZK yeah, ladder ZK. pool as well. Is it identical, like in terms of features um, and metal? This is the remake. They very recently updated to this uh, version in the last like couple of days. Before that, it was an old version of Fallendale, but very similar. Got it coming. What's he doing? All right, here we go. How long did that game last, by the way? About Ten minutes. Twelve minutes, I guess. Really fast games. 14 minutes and 32 seconds. Yeah, I think... It probably includes that as disconnected time at the start, though. The fact that... I, I picked smaller maps so we'd have quick games because of 32 players. But yeah. um, I think if we did a... Makes sense. If we did a sm if it was a smaller tournament, then we could have bigger maps. Because the, the smaller maps are definitely cheesier. I'd just like to say that I did recommend Coombe Valley as a map and everyone else voted me out. <laughs> I wanted Coombe Valley as the uh, as the grand final a grand final map, just like a super macro long game. It would have been quite interesting. I don't know this map, but I like the sound of it. Coombe Valley. <laughs> it's a massive twelve player versus twelve player. Yeah, it's a big lobster map. As a refresher for those, uh, the final maps are Tundra, Seth's Ravine, Paradise Lost, Savino, and Nuclear Winter. Though. Next Nuclear round. Winter, holy shit. It's, it's a beautiful remake, actually, at the moment. Um, oh no, that's, that's the grand final. The winner's final is Titan Duel, Ravaged, and Comet Catcher. It's the best of three. Yeah, so the maps do get do get a bit bigger and Macro comes into play a lot more. Mm. Uh, loser's final includes the Eye of Horus. And loser's round six includes Sertilinia, Moon Q20X, and Ravaged. People have been practicing Ravaged, but all the other ones you mentioned, I've not seen many people practicing on. Because it makes yeah. sense that you'd practice on the uh, the early the early maps just to make sure you can get through the the first part of the bracket. But yeah, should be interesting to see people play some of the maps for the first time. Yeah, I remember I played Ravaged a few times, and the first couple of times I I got thrown a bit by how you could move around certain parts of the map. I think I was playing against someone who's way better than me, which didn't help matters. Start boxes is interesting as well, because a lot of those maps people have n barely played, let alone playing them on start boxes, so it would oh, be interesting to see people's the... decisions. I was about to say, they're not to start top. Yeah. yeah. Go go is, that, is he doing that to throw attack you off balance, or I... does he think there's a strategic advantage in it? I don't think... I think that they're, they're fairly comparable. Like, the... Yeah, the south might be closer to some other mexes and stuff, but uh, I think I think both are equally viable, to be honest. Well, uh, Gaudi has the advantage of the the ridges being oriented to horizontally, while Pitaco has only ridges to the bottom. So the only way that Pitaco can overcome, for example, an entrenched position on the right, is by going bottom.
Are they gonna ready up? Wait, is Max placement different than ZK? He's getting his camera ready, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get it just the right angle. All right, I think in decay it locks to the exact uh, max, uh, like the exact metal spot location, right? Yeah, I think, so, uh... I think in zero K he just doesn't have a start box, so he'll just start the game and he'll have to place maxes from where his commander lands. Whereas here, he's trying to put his commander in exactly the right spot, so he doesn't have to walk as much. So he's queuing up like yeah. the rest of the game or something. There we go. Yeah, yeah. All that for two windmills and a mech. I thought we were going to see like labs and solos and LLTs. That'd be cute, but I'm sure you would have placed the other mechs just to see. Why would you go to windmills for? Because he doesn't know the uh, the balance too well. Because <laughs> he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's a bit hard. <laughs> Sorry, Gade, I didn't mean it. <laughs> well, I, like, I like the way that it's as if he's listening. He knows to build the extra window. He'll, he'll, he'll watch the replay if he wins. He'll watch the replay. Like, that jazz cash is so horrible to me all the time. <laughs> Gade, Gade's already impressed me so much. Like He's not practiced this at all, and he's beat P-Tac already. He's, he's already exceeded expectations. I remember him winning all sorts of obscure tournaments, like Colonel Panic tournaments and S44 tournaments and stuff. Just turns honest, up with that practicing. Peewees and uh, Peewees in TK and Peewees in uh, Bar are pretty much the same. It's like the most simple unit in the game. The Glaives in in Zero K have like regen. Yeah, Pretty they cool. did, but yeah. I really like the it's Glaives. Not that big a deal. You would like the glaze, Pee Wee Man. <laughs> God is happy now. He's seen the other commander miss. It's not just his. <laughs> it's not Taku using those mod hacks. He leave the lab. Uh... With little um, build power though. Yeah, but he's gonna take all this expansion quite quickly. Is he not opted for res bots? I think he skipped all the res bots, hasn't he? Yeah, and ptech has gone for two. I'm not sure he knows about the the res bot advantages to reclaim. Trying to get some some raiding done, but not getting in. He's seen P-Tax res bots, so that might trigger. Like, him what to the think hell are they? Them. Probably just clicking on them now to read what they are. <laughs> oh, he's killed them both! Nice. That was a very nice. Pick. They they cost like as much as constructors, don't they? Are ten ten metal less, but that's that's still a massive deal. They take a long time to build as well, it's worth bearing in mind, it's not just the, the metal and energy cost, it's the time on the factory. Yeah. Goddy has a really good position this game. If He's got a notice. He's turrets around his metal extractors at the time. Um, maybe P Pitek doesn't even know that Goddy started top, so he's just expanding middle. Oh, that's true, yeah. There's no LLT on the side of these. Uh, oh, he's just he's seen the com. He's, 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 he's seen just the seen the com now, so he knows the, the start position. Oh, another mechs. Well done. Some good raiding. It's the glaive experience. But Pitek really needs to do something about that. Uh, God, he's a commander brush. Pitek's really struggling for metal. The raiding paying off from Gode. Yeah, Gode took a leaf out of Pitek's uh, Taku's book and uh, really did it better. He's getting very cheeky with the commander. He needs to be careful. Yeah. Is he just going to try and waddle up to the lab and degun it? With no energy. Oh, he, he really needs to be careful. Oh, Pause. he paused it. 
tactical pause. Oh. <laughs> he loves a little pause. What the fuck? Why are you attacking my commander? Yeah, I thought we said Can no you stop that? that? <laughs> no attack for 10 minutes. <laughs> Sad, eh? <laughs> I might just I might just enable spec chat again. I've got it disabled because of this uh, new setting, but it still beeps every time someone talks. So I just hear the beeping, but no messages. <laughs> uh, I might just Can enable you turn it. Down the specific notification or turn off the specific notification. No, I don't think there's a way yet, but I'm sure it'll come soon. I think I can find something. Suspect you right though. Um, if you go to um, audio settings um, under advanced, you can change the interface. Does that do it? Um, I've He's doing this with no energy. Oh no, God, I... God, I, you had it. Oh what? You had such a good start, God, I... You do that. Sad. Yeah, he was bit... empty on energy that whole time. A bit cocky with this commander. A bit. It's... That's suicidal. That's not cocky. <laughs> I think that's just an experience thing. He lacks the knowledge of how much a commander can take on or not. Maybe he thought he upgraded it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, isn't the commander in ZK even weaker than in the bar? Or am I, uh, uh, I, I don't know about the level 1 commander, but overall it's a lot stronger. I guess also, it doesn't have to be good. Uh, ZK, you don't lose once the commander dies as well. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, we're done with that set. We've got Mighty Sheep versus Ragnar. That should be good. Are they started yet, or are they in this lobby? What? Yeah, they are. So if if those guys want to hop in, yeah. What uh, what map are they supposed to be playing? Um, so it looks like it's Satellina. Satellina, then Moon Q20X, and then Ravaged if it goes to a third. So many people in this lobby <laughs> trying to join. Let's go wait for Ragnar. Where is he? Wait, he's saying losers out. Isn't he in the losers bracket? <laughs> is he not aware of how this works? I think he's talking about God, eh? <laughs> This is ridiculous how many spectators we've got in here. It's a good sign of how well the engine works though, isn't it? Mm. You say that and it'll probably fall over. <laughs> yeah, why, why would I do that? What a stupid thing to do. I, I do like that uh, Dabble points out that on Chobby it shows minus 18 players online right now. <laughs> <laughs> alpha, by the way. Alpha. In, in all fairness, it is actually an alpha. And the bug has never come up before because there's never been that many players online before. Wait, now it shows minus two players online. It's a good stress test. Yeah. For me. Again, I'm really glad that my stuff is not worth running right now. <laughs> Why is Daywalker not playing in this journey? He's here. That's a shame. Daywalker would be very rusty. I, I like how Striker, someone who I think might be new, is not showing a rank for him. Yeah, you just join us like, oh, this is this is not the game I meant to be. Is it? <laughs> Where is Rack? Um, message him.
So, uh, Randy, what are you going to do with your uh, 200 bucks? If you win. Uh, <laughs> probably invest in Dogecoin. <laughs> That's the right thing to do. Good choice. Dogecoin? Don't you mean Dogecoin? Jesus. Do your, your research. It's not his Once I'm invested, I'll learn these things. <laughs> Okay, Rag said he's just taking a little break, let his eyes rest. Um, we could do, we could do, um, if he wants to take a little break, we could do Katush versus Andy. I don't mind. It would really be nice if the, um, you know, if uh, Choby showed uh, the amount of spectators in the room as well. I think maybe a lot of newbies would be, uh, would uh, join in if they knew that uh, there were so many spectators in the room. Yeah, I think, I think Rag's on his way. It does show the players, but it doesn't show the spectators specifically. In fact, actually, no, it does. In the battle list, if you mouse over it, it shows 1 out of 16 players in this room and 35 spectators. Yeah, but it would be nice to have a number, like, on the room itself. Because, like, why would you ever check if you see the room as, as one player or something, you know? Oh, I see what you mean. So, hello guys. Yo. Hello. Hi, so, what what game is next? Um, is it well, a final, a semi-final? It's losers round six, bracket. so it's the one before the losers final. Um, we've got Senya, ah, Senya versus p -Tech. Is that, we can do that one, right? Or did we do that one? Is that... Don't think they've played yet. Okay, Senya versus p -Tech. We could do that one. I'd be impressed if Ptax uh, played Senior after got us so quickly. I was going to say, yeah, he has only just finished. Okay, Rags, Rags here, finally. I guess some of these guys are from ZK. Yeah, God he is. Like, easy, uh, easy raid. Yeah, easy raids. Wait, is he in it? Near the top of the zero K ladder as well. He didn't play the tournament, but he's been spectating. Oh. Yeah, Se Senya was like uh, a StarCraft uh, diamond player or something. I've heard. I'm not sure Which how StarCraft good or bad it is. Which StarCraft? <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know. StarCraft 2 has the diamond league. Oh, right. Diamond's alright, it goes well. diamond then. Uh, masters, masters and then Grandmaster. Or Grandmaster, I don't know. What's the percentage there? Like, what, what top percentage are you if you if you're in Diamond League? Five percent? I think it. I think it got Slack. higher recently because there's less players. I I played my placement games five games and didn't do that well and got placed in Diamond. Diamond's top twenty four percent. Yeah, it's quite big. Right. So yep. I guess he either was a master or a, or a grandmaster then, once. What did you get to, Andy? Masters. Um, I was masters. I peeked into grandmaster a few times during the beta. Oh, nice. Didn't you play versus? Uh, is it the Marga or the Muslim? I'm sure, I uh, saw you playing against one times. of them. Yeah. The Muslim I met quite often because we were both UK, so we 
played in the same qualifiers and stuff. Wait, is it, was that his nickname, or is he actually a Muslim? No, it's just his nickname. It's his nickname. controversial. Okay. All right, Alien. This is Alien Desert, right? Satellina. I think it's an Alien Desert remake. Although I've not seen Alien Desert in a long time, so I can't confirm that. I'm who do you think is the favorite? It's identical. It's the same right now. The favorite here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think they're very even. The wind is really high, whereas drone hasn't changed from his solars. Yeah, I don't have a clue. Well, the, when they started building the wind, it was at 22. It's obviously dropped to 13 now, but Ragnar starting off with the wind seems like a smarter move. Because you always build the solars later when it drops. Well, wind is really good here, so solar is just the right uh, thing to build. We've not seen too many um, lab uh, mix-ups. Like it's always been bots versus bots or vehicles versus vehicles. Be cool to see some uh, some differences there. Yeah, oh, the no flash fleet. tanks. Flash tanks to be so glorious. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, different meta now. Rag doing his usual uh, quick nano. Yeah, he's the only player that gets a nano anywhere near that fast. Most of the other players don't even get a nano, I know. He's gonna get a mex. He got a mex. Small victory. Yeah. How many cons is a nano worth in build power? Um, oh, it's like yeah. two and a bit. So, two yeah, two and a half. 80, and the nano has 200 build power. I'm writing this down. Come on, give me It's good knowledge. There are obviously pros and cons to each approach. I guess the uh, nano is the pros and the cons is the cons. No, not quite. So the structures, <laughs> that's the tenth of the pan, obviously. Uh, no, the constructors are the advantage that you can get one of the cons out before the nano, and you can also split them up and go make buildings with them, whereas the nano is stuck where it is and can only help the things in that area. You could also say the, the pros go cons, but the cons don't go pro. Hey. Hey. Hey, Lamau. Anyway. Who is the favorite to hear? Um, the drone has the hard TS, so. They're very close. I think. I, I can't. I can't say, but. Looking at the game state right now, I'd say. Uh, I'd say, I'm going to say Drone is, is favoured, just because he's expanding quicker. Yeah, looking at the BAR leaderboards for Duel, Ragnar's 29.36, Mighty Sheep 29.44. Wow, that is super close then. It's only 0.08 difference. Has uh, Drone been playing uh, 1v1s uh, recently? Uh, he's been playing another game. So he's been a bit distracted, but he, he was playing quite a bit a few weeks ago. Hmm. Played well, I would, I'd say quite a bit, not as much as Ragnar. Ragnar's been playing a lot. Drin's been uh, dabbling here and there. Ah, oh, Ragnar just won that little PB battle on the left. He's going to get some good harass going here. He's going to get a constructor as well. This is starting to snowball. Yeah. He's already got an advantage in metal production. <laughs> oh, Drain's going to get a constructor. It's not no. over yet. Wait, no.
Jazzcash, message from Discord. Could you turn spec chat back off, please, on the stream? Apparently, I don't know if you turned it on or not. But yeah, I turned it on because the beeps were happening, but um, it's still seeing messages. But sure, I'll turn it off. I think yeah, probably a bit better idea. <laughs> You're really not going to be missing anything. I can promise you that. <laughs> it's a huge lead for Ragnar, though. Got eight maxes compared to, was it five? Every max Ragnar has is unraidable. Got an LLT next to it. Three res bots from drone. Four res bots, which is interesting considering this map has no features. nothing in his base. Rag swapping into vehicles. Signature Going move. Into, went yep. uh, to the side of his commander. Interestingly, Rag yeah. looking under swap slightly later than normally. Normally it's about 4 minutes 30, it's 2 minutes delayed this time. I guess it's resource dependent or... Yeah. Yeah. Changing it up. He's also producing nearly twice the metal that uh, Drone is. Just really makes no sense to have the commander go to the uh, side here. Like, not only is the center more strategic in general, but it also has more mechs. Or, I mean, metal spots. I suppose the only downs I can think of is that if your commander's in the middle, you can get surrounded much more easily and taken out quickly. Maybe. <laughs> this is gonna stress that mix endlessly. <laughs> Artillery from Ragnar. I like it. That's an interesting choice. Yeah, it's it's good to get one out. I think it just uh, you can just fight commander and it'll just slowly push all the expansion back. That's true. Yeah. Another peewee flank movement from Ragnar there. Yeah, he's just really not letting drone get any ground at all. Yeah, and drone sent one peewee in a res bot to fight it. Drone is trying to change into build it uh, into. Uh, I resigned. <laughs> yeah. I can't blame him. Ragnar won that one quite hands down, I think. All right. One nil to Rag. <laughs> Rag's left again, as he does every time. It's part of his good luck dance. He just all F four stands up and T poses in his room for a minute and then <laughs> relaunches it. <laughs> No, no, he doesn't T-Bose, he dabs. <laughs> He's not very cool, he just thinks he is. Alright, uh, Avalanche. Wait, no, we're not on Avalanche. We should be on Moon. Yeah, I was gonna say. Moon's gonna be interesting. No one has played Moon 1v1 at all. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, the big one? I played it with Ragnar probably about nine months ago or something when I first tried BAR. Just one random game. Uh, Lionheart beat me on this map in a 1v1 about ten years ago. Yeah, but he was uh, spec cheating, right? He was a hacker. Cheat, yeah, yeah. He was a cheater. And that come out. That's why he beat me. I'd have never lost otherwise. <laughs> Uh, it's such a shame that he's not playing anymore. He's a good player. It's such a shame that the cheater's not playing anymore. Does Flop Flop not play anymore? Because I've heard him mentioned a couple of times. I've not seen yeah, Flop in a while. He? He's usually well up for tournament stuff. Probably in the casino somewhere, drinking his troubles away. Yeah. He's a gambler, if I understand correctly. 
That gives uh, Ragnar the top place of the leaderboard back. Oh yeah, this is affecting all, all their true skill, isn't it? Yeah, so now Ragnar's got a 0.5 lead over Drone. Did Ragnar just call a balance command? In a 1v1? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a, a, power, a, a power move, isn't it? Oh, maybe he's looking at the... the Because um, Spads prints out the, the deviation. It says balance deviation 2%. <laughs> is he trying to show like, yeah, I'm 2% better? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a certain dominance before it starts. <laughs> yeah. The leader board should probably only have uh, at least a slow DK. In terms of... Uh, the true skill. So, I know Rag knows this map quite well, because he's played it in team games quite a lot. And he knows that the crater, you get more more metal for the mexes in the crater, I think, or you get the... the yeah, see, the mexes on the other parts of the map are, is a lot of 1.8s, but in the crater they're all 2.4. You start next to a rock as well. There's a lot of uh, reclaim on this map. There is, yeah. Huge, loads. huge amount, yeah. Okay, Drone knows it as well, both starting in the craters. Yeah. These boxes really are too much for uh, one. I, I would say that Ragnar has the advantage here, because not only does he have a lot of experience playing team games on this, he has a lot of experience playing team games with people like me on his team, where he has to carry the entire game. <laughs> so as far as he's concerned, he's just got more resources than normal. I think this I, is going to come down to, to bot skirmishes again at the start. Hopefully there's a lot of raiding. I think it'll be a prolonged... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think the raiding is going to have a bigger deal than you anticipate because of the size of the map and how far forwards both of them are. Neither of them have a safe back line. Mm. Yeah, there's no real natural trait points on this, so it's going to be very micro intensive. It's not like the last game where they start in a corner and have two sides where they can't be raided from. Mm. They're going to have to worry about all oh, 360 degrees. So I think we'll be in the raiding phase for probably a good 10 minutes this game. If it goes that long. We finally got a core versus arm game. It's been a while. Uh, we had one on that uh, C map. Yeah, we had we, we had some core. dotted around, but um, yeah. not too oh, many high level. Rags drawn his heart. Ragnar decided to go core this game. I guess you look like studs. Could be, yeah. Thuds would be really good on the uh, the high ground. There's gonna be big, um, big groups of AKs and people running around. Mm -hmm. I think at some point as well, Ragnar's gonna reclaim and go advance K bot and start spamming pyros. That'd be sick. That would be, I think, the first game in the tournament that's gone to Tier 2? Yeah, I'd, I'd, none of the games we've seen have gone to Tier 2 yet, but maybe there were some uh, some ones we didn't catch. Well, it's, it's a metal-heavy enough map that it could happen, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. He's not kidding, it is 5k metal on the rocks as well. It's kind of strange that uh, Drone is not making fleas. Yeah, especially with all this metal at the start, I think it would just like. <laughs> mm, I... He's a uh, he's Rezzer. You know, he's, he gave him my reclaim com command command okay. the entire map. He's going for the uh, the early nano. Got a nano Whoa. before Ragnar. Ragnar's going for an ADV solar straight away. That's, that's gonna. That's interesting. That's that is really interesting because that costs a lot of. Energy. I'm wondering yeah. why he's doing that. Because he's expecting to be flooded with metal with all the reclaim, I guess. It is worth noting that Call's advanced solar is only 4,000 rather than 5,000 energy, so it's quite a bit cheaper in that regard. Uh. Yeah, you might be right, because he doesn't have to worry too much about metal for a while. Mm. So he might just want to get the ADV solar up and get some nanos and just start pumping out units. I don't know if it matters or not, but the advanced solar is also approximately three times as healthy as the normal solar, so more resistant to raiding. 
I, I doubt that's the reason, but... I, I think I just like Drain Start here more because of the... He's got a fast nano, he's just started making units and he's not... Um, he's expanding as well. Just seems a bit more high tempo. He's expanding yeah, it's, and he's exploring. It's yeah, but it's pointless to spam tons of units if they're not actually you know, doing something. I they're just running around the map. They're if he around, can. They're telling him that Rag has not expanded. That, you know, that, that, that itself is useful information. I mean, look at the drone. He's accessing already. Mm. And has no energy. <laughs> yeah, he should probably uh, put these res bots on weight. He should build some more advanced solars. <laughs> Alright, Peewee's coming in. Not gonna get too much done. No. Drone's got three nanos now, going for a fourth. He's expanding in every direction. Now Rag's got his three ADB solars, so he's he's fine on energy. I think Rag yeah. is uh, overdoing it on the other uh, solar. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I think he's prepared to build more nanos and get a load more mech and just massively upgrade his production slash tier two. Yeah, I think it's not like he doesn't really have that much metal left. Mm. It's going to be very soon when the uh, reclaim starts drying up, and he's going to be sat with. Three or four metal extractors. Yeah. Well, he has got uh, seven solars worth of reclaim right here. He's, he's, you know, why why need basic solars when you've got advanced ones at that stage? Yeah, I mean, one big disadvantage is the fact that uh, Drawn was able to push out uh, cons early on because they take uh, a while to get to the mixes. Drone just does have 6.6 .6 versus 4.4k of metal, so that's a huge advantage at this point. Yeah, that is a big advantage. I've never seen this start, the one uh, Ragnar's uh, doing. Mm. Me neither. Even from Ragnar. I don't think you'll see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if he turns the game around. I think Ragnar does something different quite a lot. I I've seen him try all sorts of stuff in practice, but I thought once it came to the tournaments, he would just uh, he would do a very similar thing every game with his uh, early nano into a fairly early vehicle plant. He just needs to keep spamming uh, AKs because they're uh, energy. He's just got no metal at all. Yeah. He's producing 40, sorry, 14 at the moment, whereas drones on 27. Uh, it's a really big difference, man. Rag's actually naked at spending as well. He's not even putting LL2s next to these, so drone can harass quite easily. Ragnar's got so much build power, but just needs the units. 
Air switch on the drum. Air oh, switch, drum. nice. Yeah, drum's making air now. I think a uh, gunship switch would have been good, but he's gone for the bombers. I guess he's looking to bomb the uh, those advanced fusions and the production. The fusions? The solars, oh, sorry, yeah. solars. Oh, uh, Ragnar's doing the same thing. He should have went for the uh, for the gunships because uh, he has a lot of metal. And they're uh, metal expensive compared to bombers. That's true, yeah. This Peewee's gonna get some mixes. Oh no, backing out. I think this is exactly the kind of game Drone likes to play. Yeah, He's been able to expand Peewee, not been raided at all. Definitely. If this is his strength. Ragnar's not been able to apply nearly as much pressure as last time. I'm surprised he hasn't as well, actually. Got these aggressive uh, res bots coming in. <laughs> um, the res bots. That max is really efficient. There's a lot of value out of that. Yeah. Good against res bots. <laughs> Opportunity bottom right is slipping away. Ragnar's also making air. And he's getting bombers as well. Yeah, but and drones are really attacking. The I was going to say, Ragnar's bombers are in danger of being spotted in the moment as well. Here come the bombers from Drone. Oh, wait, GG. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it GG against Ragnar. Yeah, it's Degan in his uh, top tier. No, Can he Degan planes though? The, the bombers might be GG. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not a lot of oh, it, the, um, the gravity is... Uh, lower on this map, right? So all those bombs are just that. like... <laughs> They're not barely touching it. Oh, the fighters. Ragnar's got two fighters out. Death in slow motion. Oh, really I'm not sure it will. The gravity has really bad. fucked up those bombers. Yeah. Oh, it didn't stand still though. Yeah, because if he stands still and just does nothing, he's going to die. He just needs to like set a move command somewhere. Just let it... He needs to zigzag. <laughs> These bombers are terrible. <laughs> These pilots are awful. <laughs> He's driving those things. Maybe Ragnar will pull uh, off a bomber. He's got you too. He is going to have to do yeah. some incredible stuff to make a comeback here. Well, it is true that the um, you know, drone is really doing much now. Drones at plus 54 metal to Ragnar's plus 22. Yeah, but he also is, also has 3k <laughs> store for some reason. Saving it for a rainy day. Yeah, on the moon where there's no rain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see if uh, 52 can uh, help Ragnar come back to the game. Yeah, Drin's... There's a lot of metal cap in the back. It's just his energy, that's why he's got so much metal. He's just really underestimated how much energy he needs. Yeah. And because he's making ADV solars there. now, that's taking up a lot it's of his a, energy. It's like a little uh, outpost at the back. Oh, yeah. That's nice. We need reinforcements. Pretty cheeky. <laughs> they need reinforcements now. First pyro is out. Here they come. What's the self view LTs? Come on. <laughs> I don't think he has time. Yeah, this isn't over yet. Alright, Drin's finally tacking up. Oh, Ragnar is building pyros. Here we go. What do we expect seeing return? Fidos? Yeah, it's gonna take a while there. Not sure. Drone, Drone has just burnt through all of his stored metal. Well, 
Well, he's made so many, so, so many solars. Could just make a geothermal. It's a lot of fancy. There are a few, actually. Yeah, one of them he's got uh, quite well defended already. The warriors are a weird choice because they're so slow. It's quite a big map for them. Yeah, but I'm not sure how, how good pyros are against them. Yeah, I have no idea. And AKs definitely aren't. Pyros are good against uh, everything, I think. It's a decent little warrior ball, to be honest. Yeah, but it's not we do have a not much to attack. I think Ragnar's biggest chance of win winning this game is happening at the south now. That's where these pyros walk into us. Maybe they could find the commander. Yeah, it's a long shot. Oh, the warriors need to retreat. They're just charging forwards. Especially that max. That max is okay. Mm. <laughs> So yeah, Ragnar might just be able to get these pyros in and fan out and kill a lot of expansion here. Oh right, he has his pyro in there. And they are great at raiding. Why is he making a decoy commander? That's interesting. That is very interesting. <laughs> I like it. I've never seen this in a 1v1 before. Maybe, Maybe one of the ways he thinks he can lose is uh, getting his commander sniped, so if he gets just to spot this instead, he's, his other boy will be more safe. He's sending it like a bait, like he's going to try and bait Ragnar into into attacking it, but... Yeah. Um... Ragnar forgot about his pyros, and Andron has, hasn't even noticed them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they Does are he have vision? the lions as well. He doesn't see them, that's why he's not got radar he, coverage of that area. They might actually kill the uh, commander as well. <laughs> That would be amazing. The one time a decoy commander is used and it's not even spotted. No joke, uh, they can potentially kill the commander. Yeah. Well, they are spread apart. I bet Drone's heart rate's just gone up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> His watch is beeping and desperately saying, mate, stop running around everywhere. The fighters are not too great against the pyros. No, not when you're that close. Would Zeus be best? Zeus no. is so slow. I, I, it's hard to, to know what would be best here. It's making zippers, but zippers are so weak. Anything that counters pyros relies on being in position prior to the pyro attacking. That's okay, it's done. I didn't even need, know that decoy commanders could build stuff. They can capture as well. These two warriors in the top right are probably going to clean up a lot of uh, this expansion. Oh man, all that. Because there's, there's nothing defending any of it, it's all naked. Uh, Mortis. Yeah, I think, I think Rag's got the uh, the tech advantage being core. The core bots are just so good. Oh, no, That's he teched up a little bit faster as well. Fighters are strong. Fighters are strong, but Ragnar's got the really good uh, combined arms with mortars and cans. These pyros are still causing a lot of trouble in the back. Yeah. Mm. Just two of them as well. Cans are... There we go. It's still going. Should have went for the uh, T2 con. See, yeah, I don't, the, uh, don't, know if you, don't know if you'd seen it. It's a lot of zippers. I'm not yeah, so they I don't know that they're the counter to pyros. These metal incomes have become a lot closer now than they were. Yeah, All Drone's at much. plus 67 and Rag's at plus 62. Let's mm. really close that and gap. Rag Ragnar's floating metal as well. And also building about 20 extra nano turrets. This is on uh, uncharted grounds. Mm. <laughs> the Drone's slowly building up some gunships to uh, 
Oh, he's going in. So has Rag got any anti-air at all? He's lost those fighters so. that he had earlier. It looks like Drone made his own fighters he, he just, to took him out. He just built some sa a SAM in his base, so he must have just seen some stuff. Um, Jazz Cash, if you go to the settings, notifications, volume there will apparently change the notification volume of chat messages. Ah, uh -huh. hopefully that will do it. Cheers. Thank you, or Bados, you told me what the setting was. Cool. So if it's wrong, blame him. These pyros on the south again, you know, do a lot of damage. Yeah. Those warriors cleaned up all the backline though of Rag. What are you trying to do with those gunships? I think he's Scout. just trying to take out the uh, mexes around the back. Yeah. yeah. That warrior's not going to get much done like this. Firehead can't raid my mexes if I don't build them. <laughs> yeah. Getting kind of scrappy. You just mm. need some gunships to defend against those pyro raids. Fighters are gonna die now. Oh, for drone's sake, he's not mentally feeling behind because of the pyros, because he is still in the lead, I think. I think he's in the lead, but the mental distraction of the pyros, I don't think that should be underestimated at all. The rag well, might go for the com hit. Yeah, it's going in on the decoy com. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love the confetti. <laughs> uh, it didn't really achieve anything though. <laughs> it just no, stood yeah. there. I can still. I would have loved it if Rag typed offensive GG then. Right, drone is not even close. Does he think he's winning or losing? Can still hear the chat beeps. Uh, I'm sorry, I was told that was the right thing to do. Oh, there's still one pyro there. He just needs to make a few on, like pop-ups and yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, Andy. I, I reckon he's feeling really behind, but he's not really at all. Jazz Cash, quick question: You did change the volume slider all the way to zero for the. I can't change right? it to lower than 0 0.05, but it still sounds the same volume as when it was at uh, one. Fair enough. Yeah, Bados, you just realised that uh, yeah, it doesn't get to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Drone has like 50% more metal produced in the run. He's got the metal produced, but where where is it? He's got some Zeus out, which uh, are decent units, but they're they're so slow it's gonna take a while for them to uh, to get anything done. They also have significantly less DPS than Pyros. They're 130 versus the 242. I think they're yeah they're a bit tough. They're quite a lot tougher though. Yeah. This warrior still being a pain in the ass around the back. I thought he got them. <laughs> yeah, one slipped through. That's amazing. I'd love if it finds Ragnar's comm and uh, Drone goes, right, airstrike. <laughs> Not bombers this time, though. No. All those uh, AKs killed the commander. Eight? Probably not enough, I'd imagine. He does have energy. Jazz, uh, sorry, Ragnar knows this is the real one now, though. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, I suppose he's yeah. a decoy. Can you do like a fake degun or something with the decoy? Just, like, I think de so. Do like zero damage with it. I think it actually does damage. I don't, I don't even need zero damage. 
I wonder why he's going bots again. Ice is confirming you can degun with the uh, decoy commander and it does do damage. Oh, cool. It doesn't one hit though, right? <laughs> I think it depends on how much damage it does and how much damage you need to do. It doesn't do the a same as a, a normal commander though, right? No, no, a lot less. Yeah, Very little yeah. damage Floris is doing. You should just make Fido's uh, of Michael. You should be just fine. Just sending those Zeus one after for the other. I think both players probably feel like they're behind her. Yeah. They'd both be right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that pro AK behind the lines now. <laughs> it's the thing with large maps is that you try to establish like a, a pork line in the middle, but y you don't expect stuff to get through it and so you've got loads of like naked expand at the back and as soon as stuff slips through it just kills everything yeah well people really like uh undervalue uh, pop-up turrets they're still not really uh, made that often in the team game mm. definitely not the ones you want it's morty's are slowly chipping away <laughs> well i would Very say that but they're missing all their shots away. so yeah maybe not they're barely hitting Drone is building a pop up now in the back. Yeah, he's also building one at the front. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, I missed it, he's built several. Oh, a rubbish commentator. Yep. Oh, that pit bull at the back missed a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So Ragnar's on plus 56 metal, and Drone is on plus 90. I think it's yeah, just because he's reclaiming. Oh, he yeah, doesn't know how to finish the game. I, I can't blame him though. Ragnar's putting up a really good defense. Every time he does something to hit in hard, Ragnar's there ready for him. It's just that zippers aren't really good with their... Like it, you know, assaulting the the, uh, the main base. Got two snipers yeah. out. Mm. The snipers require energy to fire. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Five hundred energy to fire, and they cost twenty thousand to make. He has a fusion up already. Though. Cost two hundred to oh. keep it cloaked. He got cloaked snipers and no energy to fire them. This is <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh dear. Fusion. That's what's eating up his energy. Um, additionally, uh, those snipers, it. though they were cloaked, they were obviously appearing on radar, so Ragnar knew exactly where they were. He's got a second fusion, yeah, two fusions now, so he should be able to fire them <laughs> if he gets any more. Yeah, he's got three left. Should be the operative word. You should put him on fight, though. Not necessarily, they've got such a long reload time, having them as uh, mobile defences can sometimes be a better idea. Yeah, but now they're just standing there. Yeah, that's fine, he's waiting for Ragnar to attack into him. If he pushes forwards, he, those snipers become exposed. Remember, they're really slow. Ragnar's need to run forward to cover pyros, and the snipers are gone. The snipers really, the sniper shots really need, like, a visual effect. Oh, you know when you're against snipers very quickly, I find. There's a lot. W oh no, they're not. I thought they were cloaked pop up turrets, but they're queued. They're just ghost <laughs> icons. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. If you, if you move them forward, they've gone down even faster. I don't think this is enough from Rag, and I think Rag's on a clock now because Drone is slowly ecoing up at the back. Yeah. Ragnar's winning a lot of fights, but he's not taking any territory, and he's not making use of any territory. Yeah, he really needs to secure this, these back mechs if he wants to have much longer in this game. 
drone's got a lot of res bots going on in the mid as well. Yeah. Oh, here come the flea spam. That's why he went back into K-Bot level 1, just for res bots. Yeah, don't blame him. Do you reckon it was more the res bots or more the fleas that he's did it, done it for? I don't know, a bit of both I think. Uh, usually you don't use the same lab for both. He's got two, yeah, he's got two separate ones. So oh, both. Right. I didn't that. Yeah. It's a bit awkward otherwise, because you can't set like a, a waypoint on them because yeah. the res bots kill themselves. <laughs> Warrior still here. <laughs> yeah. Bottom right. It's been there all game. It's a disappointment that Paralyzer Drone doesn't gain experience for shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> Warrior's just in cryos, point, waiting for the mexes to be rebuilt. Got a mobile anti nuke. Is this, uh, John just going through the checklist of ways he could possibly lose still. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Sensible choice. Makes sense. Yeah. Though the mobile anti nuke is being sent to the front line, so. He's got two. He, he has it on repeat. He's making a third. Oh, <laughs> interesting. He's, he, he's making um, anti nukes and advanced constructors on he's the speedway. He just stopped the advanced. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he's uh, protected against the nuke now. Yeah. I thought um, I was going to learn something then. It was some all, crazy all strategy. Of building nukes. <laughs> Ryan doesn't even have a single fusion up yet. There's so many res bots here and he can just sustain them with the amount of fusions he's got. Yeah. I think Drone's gonna take this one. It's gonna For take sure. a while, but I think he's gonna win it. I think uh, these red res bots working, there'll be an overwhelming red tide in a yeah. few minutes. Yep. He's, he's even ignoring the res bots, he's still at 50 to 100% more metal income than Ragnar. Yeah, Ragnar's, um, I mean, he got the T2 Mexes, but he got harassed so much and he, he hasn't really scaled up his uh, his economy properly with fusions, but Drone playing the long game. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Drone can still throw it and Ragnar can still steal it, but yeah. I think so it'd have to be a pretty big throw at this point. Completely like 15 Zeus's. Rack hasn't even got the energy to fire these cans half the time. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on here. I like how Drone's just going full res bot army now. He's got 42 in the front line. <laughs> oh no, they're all going to get burnt alive. Oh no! Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I think we'll I just them back. 42 on the front line. They don't you leave Rex cut, do they? No, you can't res a res bot. Well, you can if they leave a wreck. They don't leave a wreck when you blow up the pyros, though. Uh. So if they die to knees or light laser turrets normally, I think they do leave a wreck. Oh, right. In fact, um, just where I've pinged, there's two res bot wrecks right there. Oh yeah, that's him. Oh yeah, there we go, he's risen it now. Exponential. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rag's given up. That's a decent game. That's very, uh, macro-oriented. Well, that was a superb had game. a major advantage, like, since the 7th. Hmm. Drawing 119 masks a minute over that long. I've forgotten where we are now. Is that, is it 1-1 one, one now? That's 1-1, one, one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Alright, so now we're going to Ravaged, which should hopefully be a little bit quicker, so we can get into the later games. <laughs> I figured out how to beat Tech 2 Arm. You spam Resbots and rest the core units. <laughs> Did the snipers pay off? Do you guys think the snipers paid off? Yeah, but... Probably, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to tell those. You're just randomly getting shots that you don't see that often. It's hard to see the projectiles. They need to have like the uh, like the the effects that XDA had. I don't remember that. Oh, it's just a yeah. So you know that there's actually snipers firing. You know the the owner of the snipers knows what's going on. There's some activity going on. If you have snipers, you don't even know if, the, if you, you, like, you can't really quickly spot if they're actually doing anything. Maybe uh, it's worth considering adding an effect to them. Okay, this is probably the most practiced map. Uh, my game right. crashed. I'm just gonna reconnect. Out of the entire okay. roster. I've only started playing it since the BA tournament. I, before that, I've never seen this map. It's based off a uh, Starcraft 2 map, Zelnaga Caverns. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Zelnaga Caverns has got um, destructible rocks by the lower mexes. Mm. That you can't you can't get to them until you kill the rocks, or you go all the way around. Be tasteless oh, secret hallway. And it's got the um, the vision towers in the middle as well. So if you've got a unit of them, it gives you like loads of vision in the middle. Would be cool to see some stuff like that in uh, in bar. So what's uh, what's the usual meta on this map? Um, bar. I think it's it's usually just uh, just bots. I think I don't know. I think anything's viable here. You could, I've seen air starts work here. Vehicles. I, Looks like, uh, like let's say you start where Ragnar started. It seems like the best thing with the commander would be to go to take the three mech and then go med, right? Yeah, I guess um, that's usually what most people do. I don't know actually. People go around the edge and get the the six mechs at the the edge. But yeah, you definitely want to get the get the mechs in your base and put your commander at the at the ramp to stop any. Fleas or peewees or whatever getting in. I want to play Ragnar on this map about a week ago. He was doing so many crazy lab switches. I wonder if he's calmed down on that front. Uh, I wouldn't put money on it. Rack does some crazy stuff in uh, in practice games. Hmm. We should be seeing the best version of Ragnar now, though. What's he found out to be the best? Airlab! <laughs> wait, he forgot to build wait. Up. No. Is he memeing us? <laughs> I think he's just he positioning his commander. So you can kill any scout. Hmm, yeah, maybe. What? Vehicle lab, okay. Yeah. Changed his Changed mind. Changed his mind. Does that show you that he's nervous and not entirely sure what he wants to do? It might have just been a misclick, to be honest. Like, he'd only placed two windmills at that stage, so too soon for a lab. Certainly not an air lab as well. Maybe he's just baiting us. 
that would not surprise me. This is quite a hype game because the the loser of this gets knocked out. <laughs> and they're both good players. Yeah, I could I could see either of these two going on to win the whole thing. Yeah. Again, this super early nano turret for Ragnar. He loves it. Every game. I like, that he's, I like that he's taking advantage of the wind being so high and using the commander to help the nano turret straight away. Probably neither of them have any solars. And I'm like a couple on this map just for when the wind drops. Yeah, that's really sensible. Trend getting the early expansion on the west side. Might pay off if he uh, doesn't lose it. Ragnar's going for flashes. Is this the first time we're seeing Flash as the main unit? It might be, yeah. I know Ragnar loves flashes. Mm. Wind not too strong at the moment. Seven point three is average. Oh no, ten would be average, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm a software developer, not a mathematician. Okay. Right, I'll let you off. <laughs> two peewees, one flash. Two peewees win. And he's, oh no, this is devastating for Rag. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Wait, drone. Well, it drone. would be devastating for Rag. <laughs> Drone's watching the battle. Yeah, south side. distracted. Yeah. He's coming back in. He should be able to get that constructor. Yeah, you got it. That's painful. Very. Drone expanding everywhere here. He's got, he's got three constructors out in the middle of the map, just getting all the all the different uh, expansions, and he's got his commander here as well. However, just, it's looking really strong. He's only slightly ahead of Ragnar, seventeen to fifteen in metal production. That will that will definitely change really soon. He's I just so, yeah. just getting these LLTs up. Good way to play when you're against vehicles is K-Bots because the vehicle player will find it hard to split up flash to keep you from expanding everywhere. Yeah. Because the Peewee can just overwhelm you in numbers in different places. He's going to get another constructor in the same place. Damn. That's, That's really good. painful for Rag. Damage dealt 6.2k for Drone at 2.9 for Ragnar. That's a telling statistic. I think he might be able to get some stuff done. Yeah, need some good Yana shots. That said, Stumpies and Januses are starting to be produced now. Oh no, I don't see Flash could possibly see the one Jana shot just blew him apart. The Flash. Just yeah, the... based. Oh, the, the warrior, warrior, warrior on the ramp should be able to defend the base, but the expansion yeah. looks pretty doomed. He's not going to bother even going up the ramp with the Flash, is the thing. He missed oh, that max. Oh, he's gone back yeah. for it. And then he turned all three round. Oh dear, yeah. the warrior. He's, he's making so many mistakes. I think that it's just uh, split attention for everyone. Yeah. Rocco's in the middle of the map, pushing this back quite well. To clarify, I'm not suggesting that I could do better than Ragnar. <laughs> Uh, 
Damn. All that effort that he put into expanding is uh, yeah. getting deleted. That said, he's plus 26 against plus 18 for metal production. I always find it funny when players have time to type to specs. <laughs> I never even think about that when I'm playing a tournament game, I'm too busy. <laughs> Arag still looks so behind in territory, but I think right now he's got the army advantage. He just needs to uh, make use of it. Getting his shell shocker out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's got a fight move now. Trying, trying to swap into vehicles, but he's got no metal. Yeah, because he's not retaining his bot lab yet. <laughs> he's building a solar plant. He's not stalling now. No, he's not stalling. Um, yeah, I suppose he's, he's got plus metal, so yeah. This is not good, though. Might be able to. Uh, Commander's looking for Block off the commander, yeah. This oh. is not looking good for Drone. Does Ragnar the commanders there? He sees dots, but he doesn't know that it's the commander. I think he must suspect it. Oh. Yeah, he does now. He's just seen it. Drone in a lot of trouble. Uh, Ragnar's in a lot of trouble. I think once he kills this LLT, he'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, Drone's the gunning. Yeah, not quite that enough. Was it, was, it was kind of close, yeah. Just right. be disappointed that he lost that game. Drone is out. Ragnar I mean, moves what, on what to fight Peter. Pickaxe. Oh, they played. Yeah, so Peter beat uh, Senya. So we've got yeah, Peter versus Rag. <laughs> I win get to get some tea and the game's already over. Yeah. That was fast. <laughs> Smaller map. I think in hindsight I put a sh I should have put uh moon last on that one. Moon is quite a bit bigger. Are we doing Patak and Sing uh sorry, Patak and Ragnar or me and Kart? Um, I don't know. Let's uh I'm good we to play if Kart is yeah, maybe we should do the the winners now, and um, yeah, we've probably got enough time to spectate all the remaining games, right? I don't Give Ragnar a little break from that game. It's 8 I p.m. So, yeah. It's 8 p.m. We could, yeah, it's up to people uh, whether they want to see all the games. Has p -Tech just played? I'm aware I that so. Katush and Andy haven't so. played in a while. Okay, should we give um, give Ptac a break? And do the winners final first. Let's do let's do the winners final. I'll hop off. All right. See you guys. Good luck. Andy Cheers. versus Katush. Good luck. While the game sets up, I'm going to make myself another lockup. I remember what, what happened the last time these two played on this map. Oh, you mean in the BA tournament? With the <laughs> with the mines? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe we'll see a repeat. Um, oh, this is the, the new map. Oh, I've not got this downloaded yet.
Yeah, how is the server dealing with all these aspects suddenly wanting to download the same map? Hmm, good question. Maybe that's why I can't download it. It keeps saying failed. We might have to do a different map if we can't get this downloaded. Yeah. Wait, is this the correct map? Titan Jewel. Um, I think so. Hmm. Yeah, it should be Titan Jewel, but this is a newer one. I think Bereth redid no, I mean, the lighting. Is this the, is this the right uh, version? Yeah, it's a new one. Right. Well, you can just maybe revert to the old one. Though. I don't know if the old one's on here. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so we've got... Titan Jewel, Ravaged, and Comet Catcher. I'm going to say we should replace Titan Jewel with... Uh, I'm just going to pick, pick one. Um, what have we not seen much this tournament on the stream? Um, want some thin, sort of medium sized. Let's go with uh, let's go with Sertalina because we only saw one game on that, but we didn't see uh, didn't see it for very long. Okay, they're, they're giving out the map link to try and get it working, but I don't know how long this is going to take. Are you going to basically say we're going to do a different map instead, or...? I think we should, but it looks like they're slow. people are slowly starting to get it working. I just I'm just downloading it manually, so I'm just gonna pop it in the folder. Ah, oh, fair enough. See if this works. Yeah, you can uh, change it for Tundra. That could be, or must that be a map from the from one of the existing ones? Oh, in the the grand finals. I've got a really good suggestion: Coombe Valley. <laughs> Tundra might be decent, although we're definitely we're gonna see that anyway. Maybe Savino, because that's only in the fourth game. No, it seems... I don't know. Um, okay, I've installed the map, but... Yep, everybody's getting on. Okay, it's working now, I think. It's, yeah. It's downloading. Okay, if you... Uh, my lobby just crashed. Oof. Okay, give me a sec. The, the game has not started yet, so we're okay. Can you tell them to just uh, hold off a sec while I sort it out on my end? Yep, they're saying okay, no problem at all. Cool. Alright. Ready. <laughs> Seems to be working. 
Uh, wait, 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 wait. Cool. Where's the boxes? Oh, oh. oh, that's a really good point. I don't know if this is going to have the boxes set up because it's a different version to the old one. I did just split it across the middle, but um, it's not a massive deal. If you can remember the command, they can just put it in themselves, can't they? Yeah. Um... <laughs> that would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, split V50 is the best. All right, here we go, finally. I like the way you're like, yeah, I'm choosing this because it's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll uh, affect the start positions at all, but... Yeah, potential for um, shenanigans. Bottom left and top right mean that you've got a very high defensible position and a geothermal nearby. Turn research. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah that, that position's are released to the phone. Though it's only one mech, so... Oh, wait, wait, is it? Yeah, you've got one oh. mech on the bottom left or top right, but then you've got the geothermal in the corner and also further along the ridge. Yeah, you can do a two mech start. Yeah, yeah. I think the the middle is uh, viable, for sure. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Oh, wow, he's got a mirror uh, corner start on the the one max. Hashtag just Oh, saying. not quite. <laughs> Katusha's changed to the middle. right spot to blow when he's calm. Yeah, three awesome. heavy mines kills a, a calm in one shot. I don't know if it's the same in bar or if the, the mine layer can even make heavy mines, I'm not sure, but... The uh, mine layer can make heavy mines. Cool. <laughs> uh, it'd be so funny if we saw the same thing. You will cripple your energy economy when you try to do it, but yeah, you can. I think uh, Katush only did it because he was uh, two games up. Mm. Yeah. If he tries it in this, he's got massive balls. <laughs> in the first game. I can see him trying it. <laughs> Corner start yeah, is going to be so interesting. Cartouche's uh, start is better in the sense that uh, yeah, it's easier to expand to different locations. But it's harder to defend. It's also, he can still get up the ramp to that geothermal. I didn't realise how the slope wasn't as steep as I thought. I, I don't reckon that's going to occur to either player. Probably not, no. Because I think that people probably play this map in the corners, like fixed positions so much that the geo doesn't usually come into it. So I'm, it's probably... actually thinking... I'm not even way. sure, like with this wind, I'm not even sure how much more efficient the geo is than uh, just making wind generators. Yeah, it's decent wind. I was actually thinking, putting wind up there, to be honest, much harder to harass and raid. Yeah, it's not a bad shout. Mm. 
So yeah, Katusha is going to be uh, expanding a lot quicker because of the the two mixes being right next to each other, and Andy's gone for three mixes, and he had to do a long walk all the way over over to the other two. Yeah. But he did get the uh, the extra constructors straight away. This is a lot safer from Andy as well, starting in the corner here, because you only need like two LLTs, and this whole base is is covered. Yeah. Katush is a lot more open. So many fleas. That's, like yeah, it, I was going to say, are we, are we seeing mass fleas? Which is <laughs> suicide in the flea. <laughs> and he's self-destructing the flea to de deny the, uh, <laughs> the flea wreckage. I love it, this is next level. It didn't level. go off, but there, there was no wreckage, sadly. <laughs> flea suicide should be instant. Straight oh, away. Really should. Like pyros. Oh, nice. So katusha has got a radar and it just can barely see these three peewees coming across the top. So he's going to be able to defend these two cons. Oh, <laughs> oh I would hope Tricky he would. I don't know. He's, he's only got fleas and one peewee. We'll have to see. See the micro. Do you think you put the radar there specifically <laughs> to catch that or it just happened to go there? I think it's just you a good spot. those fleas. <laughs> <laughs> Have a better chance. Hmm, Andy's not going in. Uh, two peewees are gonna start to... Oh, okay, no, they got deleted. I think I think Andy oh. could have got more done there, but... Didn't want to take the engagement. You know, no, oh, he's got a lot of peewees started. coming in. This is a lot of peewees coming in from the middle. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Depends how brave he is. Yeah, uh, usually yeah. you see people get a big ball of stuff and then they just sort of play safe with it. I like this, he's going in. Not a bad defense, but... Okay, okay. Mm. Might be able to hold this. Three peewees, two are quite low. I think he's going to hold this. And he's going to get some mixes though. Has no energy. Cartouche. Compared to his uh, build power. He's got five cons. Yeah, he's gonna get those cons potentially. It's oh, gonna be no. major. He was just so good at raiding. Changer. They just melt stuff. That is, yeah, that's painful. Okay, he didn't get the mixes, but. Yeah, that is uh, it's pretty big. He got two cons, but um, his five more. Meanwhile, Andy's just expanding without any trouble. Yeah. Oh, so managed to salvage that. He's expanded without any trouble, but um, Red's Red has actually got a better metal income for the most part. He is salvaging at the moment, though. Get that peewee inside the oh base. no, that peewee. Eh, did some damage. Ooh, and he's gonna come out on top here. This is, yeah. Oh, that's a nice, nice concave from Katouche. Very nice. Yeah, Pretty even. He's gonna get all that metal. Pretty even. Ok, 
He was coming around the back of the base. He's oh no, gonna Katusha's, yeah. Katusha's split here, trying to defend both sides. Yeah, and his commander's all the way out. It's actually the start, and this location is actually playing a major... Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like actually important here. Here comes the second wave. Oh, his comm is so exposed. Meanwhile, Andy is still expanding without Andy, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's just playing Challenge. the, uh, just being super aggressive and expanding behind it. Mm. He's donated a lot of wreckages here, but I don't know if if Katusha's got the the energy to make use of it yet. Katusha has no radar though. Another peewee? Uh, not quite. Those peewees are might do a lot of damage. This is probably game here. He needs to not clump them though, because if the explosions, mm, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not matching at all, this is game. <laughs> Lost almost all probably. of them, but <laughs> <laughs> this is probably done. No, Andy just needs to hold. Is he is he going for the comm snipe, thinking you're down the bottom right or something? This is, yeah, yeah. Katushi's only way back now is to find the comm and just try and... Oh, they've GG'd. <laughs> well, he hasn't surrendered yet. GG'd, but they've not right. surrendered, so it's yeah. not GG yet. <laughs> maybe he meant, uh, you know, maybe Kritush meant GG that, you know, he's going to win. <laughs> yeah, so far. This is a good game so far. <laughs> I, I'd fallen for that as well. Like, yeah, GG, you can leave. Woohoo, Typhon wins. I think in some games, like, GG, Typhon GG yeah. is considered, like, forfeit. Mm -hmm. The game's over at that point. In the Dota Battle Cup, if you type GG, you get five seconds to cancel yeah. it, or your team forfeits. I remember that, yeah. So, do you guys think it was important that the Kratu started in the center? Yeah, uh, that had a huge, you were right, that had a huge impact. I think I think the center's I know, still maybe it was fine. Something else. I think it's the maybe early raiding down. that made the difference there. Andy was just full-on aggressive and didn't stop. He just put Peewees... Once he got the two constructors out, he just put Peewees on repeat and was just like full aggressive. Yeah, I think those cons were a pretty big deal as well. Once you get into that rhythm of defending, it's so hard to like turn it around and start counter raiding and stuff because you're just spending all your time fixing your mistakes and taking back expansions and stuff. Alright, next map, what have we got? Uh, Ravaged. Cool. I guess those um, those fleas were kind of... I don't know. Didn't really do much, or enough. Yeah, they were not a good choice, I think, is what you're trying to find. I don't know. I, I've seen fleas take on peewees before, but that was in old BA. I don't know about bar. I don't know what the differences are there, but... Fleas used to be uh, pretty versatile for stuff like that, if you get enough of them. Okay. Yeah, they can shoot over each other. Times. They can, but the problem is, is that as soon as your opponent has any even small amount of ranged defense, the fleas are so outranged and killed in one shot, they don't even get close enough to do stuff most of the time. Yeah. yeah actually, come to think of it, I guess the, the, the start was just fine. I don't know what was the exact point where Grichter started losing. Maybe it really was when the, those two cons died. Uh, I think it was the raid. Once he took out his energy production, that was it. There was no coming back from that. The cons, you can come back from that. Yeah, but the issue with cons is that, you know, you can have them, but it also takes them a long time to actually get to the mixes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's I completely agree with that. Andy should be uh, quite familiar with this map because it's in 0k and played quite a bit. Mm. 
I think he also played a lot of it uh, the last two weeks in bar. And it's a StarCraft map, which he's played a lot. <laughs> Not that there's a uh, transferable <laughs> skill, but... I was well, gonna maybe. Say quite different games. Yeah. Yeah. You can still block the uh, the entrance as well. You know, make a lab there if you sell it. <laughs> Remember when Andy said he doesn't understand people that have got time to talk during uh, tournament games? <laughs> yeah. What a liar. You try to fake us out, obviously. <laughs> He's just showing off. Yeah. I would, I would love to see one of the guys go air first on this one, except the only time I won on this map was when my opponent went air first. <laughs> Air is definitely, uh, I, I don't know actually, it's different to BA, because in BA I think bombers do more damage. Um, uh, I've not seen it as much in, be, be successful as much in bar, but I, I reckon it's still doable. It's doable in the right position, so here you've got a really defensible base, you pop a couple of LLTs in the front, they're not going through for quite some time. You can build up some bombers, and as long as their commander is out in the open without air, air defense, they're dead. Well, yeah, yeah. Air also has another issue, and that's that the cons take ages to construct, and then they also take ages to construct anything else. I, I'm not saying build uh, air cons and use those, because yeah, you're right, they do take ages to build and take ages to build up things. I'm saying straight away rush bombers and then go bomb their commander with five to ten bombers. The the usual one v one air start is um, you you build one bomber, and as it's building, you reclaim the lab, and then you, yeah. you finish the bomber, reclaim the lab, and then just go into bots or vehicles and you just use the I mean, bomber to kill mixes uh, and wins. If you want to if you want to um, make like bombers at a decent speed, like let's say with two nanos and a commander, because that's you know at, at that point it becomes decent, right? Like decently fast to make bombers, you would need about forty wind gens. Something like that. That's a lot. Pretty nuts. Is this flea gonna yeah. get in? Not quite. No. Andy uh, opting for the, the solos this time, after he saw how bad the wind got. So the flea didn't get in, but he did see the vehicle lab. When was that, Zekris? Was that recently? Is that a recent change to the uh, aircons? Maybe he's not here, listening. A few months ago, he is listening. Oh. Well, so far, it seems their their starts are very similar. This is core vehicles against arm, um, so might actually see some right tanks for the first time. I don't oh, think yeah. we've seen any of those yet this tourney. Levelers? Mm, no, I have. Looking forward to it. They they just smash apart balls of bots. <laughs> that was so much fun. They're just really slow to get anywhere. Yeah. Taku says he used levelers against Sanya. Fair enough. Did he win? No, he must have done. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't see them, did he really use them is the question. <laughs> if we didn't see them. Sneaky Flea, might be able to get a mech here. Ooh, that's oh, that's not fine. Katusha's seen it. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. I think though that um, Rocco's and the rocket units are pretty good against levelers. As long as you micro them so they don't actually get in, in range. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with pretty, that. Yeah. Slow. You, you can't slip up though, that's the mode. problem. As soon as you you look away for a second, the levelers come forward like an inch and just destroy them. And he's got a lot of cons. He's got two cons making wins, he's building an energy storage. Wow. He's got two cons expanding in the middle. Oh, 
That is a lot of uh, energy production. He needs it at the moment, though. These gators should be able to clean these two cons up after they kill the peewees. Oh, yeah. If they, if they were brave enough. There's four. Cons are going to finish the deep. LT. The cons finished the LT, so maybe not anymore. Oh. But... Wait, he's going to the Andy has the not got the unit he needs to defend this. Whoa, he's going up the ramp. I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he can defend the ramp. <laughs> okay, that was interesting. I thought he would just go for the expansion there. Yeah, that was a foolish idea, I feel. He's still going to get two mixes. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. I feel he didn't need to lose that there. I think he could have got the, the three mexes and potentially more. He could have gotten the three mexes, then gone down to the second expand and gotten another two, even though the commander's there. Just, you know, delays the commander moving on. I think he just he saw there was no LLT on the ramp and decided to try his luck. <laughs> Well, Card has more uh, metal income. Yeah, moment. 26 to 22. <laughs> Nano's it's reclaiming the gate. Produced. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting position for Nano, actually. <laughs> it can heal the units down the hill. It's pretty cool. That's Ooh. what I was just about to say, yeah. Com skirmish. Ooh. Ooh. Not quite. Uh, I'll see on top of the hill, the hill. That's a nice spot. Usually you see the radars up there so they can see everywhere and don't get blocked by the terrain. Andy has a lot of metal stored. Yeah. He's not I mean, quite got the production. Could definitely use more build power. He could make a, a lab there where his calm is. Yeah, forward lab vehicle lab would be uh, pretty standard. This is the weakness of vehicles. If you put an LRT right. at the top of a ramp, the tanks can't do anything. Randy has a lot of metal stored. He's not ramping yeah, up his build power. Oh, okay, here we go. He's finally realizing that he needs to ramp it up. Yeah. <laughs> I think if he can yeah, hold on for the next few minutes, then he might be okay. Yeah. It's a big pack of uh, gators. Looks well, like I a base trade, are... kind of. Raid trade. Well, if he goes along the left and then up the ramp, I don't think there's enough to stop him this time, with this number. I wonder if he will go up the ramp, because even though there's nothing there, it, you don't need much to that. hold on. He's going for it, Katusha's going for it. Ooh. He has a lot of gators. Katusha's also running really low on energy. Too. Oh, yeah. it's not going to be in time. Yeah. No. This is bad. This is probably game. I think so. Uh, but the, uh, no, actually, I don't think it is. Yeah. <laughs> the nanos are going to reclaim them. They're, they're actually not going to get that much done. Yeah, this is... Uh, are they, those nanos are repairing each other rather than reclaiming the... Oh, oh, hang on. That's out of range of the rest of the stuff. If that starts chain reaction in the windmills... Oh no. This one gator is going to kill all these winds. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. He's still alive, yeah, the gator. Yeah. Oh, he got it, finally got it. <laughs> right, and now he's. You know how nanos. Are they? Do they auto reclaim units by default? Because I'm sure mine don't do that. So they've got like a fight command, so it depends on what they're doing and if you need the resources or not. Um, so yeah, they will auto reclaim stuff, but not oh, always the way that you That's a lot of uh, LLTs defending against Oh no, he's turning around. Okay. Jesus. Oh, he's got oh, energy. Oh, and he's still in energy, yeah. That one gator that killed all the windmills has actually <laughs> yeah. changed that MVP. around. 
It's a lot of gators still. Oh, Andy has no units though. Yeah. No units. And that's like 12 gators, not 14, 16 gators. And uh, 8 PVs. <laughs> and his tank was stuck because there's an LT in front of his base. But he swapped over to vehicles now. He's making warriors, they're pretty good at holding against gators. Stumpies and warriors, good choice. Uh, okay, I like this more from Katush. And he's, got, he's floated a thousand, um, thousand metal. He's playing it safe and killing the expansions. Yeah, really good plan. It does seem like he has uh, the advantage now. Metal production is very similar. Katush is at 26 and Randy's at 20. Note that Randy has stopped typing in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly he doesn't have time. I wonder where those gators are going then. Should just be cleaning up this expansion, but there's a lot of LLTs on the hill. Yeah, if they go around the other side though, they've got a lot that they can do. If Andy can get that expansion on the right side, then uh, maybe on the bottom. Has Andy not got a radar up here? That would be so good on this little hill. He does not Wait, have a radar up there. Andy's gonna, he's gonna kill a lot with the yeah. big group of them. At the same time, he's, he might warriors. lose this expansion at the north. About his tanks. I like the warriors here. Don't see that too often. Yeah, I think the warriors are a really good choice. Self destructing the gators. I think the problem is he's not committed to either one. He's been making warriors and stumpies, and it's. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't. It's interesting, but I think you might be just better off reclaiming one of the labs and just using the metal to pump out more units. I think so, yeah. Because they're, they're sort of providing similar roles. You see this quite a lot where the commander comes over to this area and gets split off from the rest of his army. So mm, being yeah. governor could potentially just like split this with LLTs and then just go kill Andy's com. Only like, if he realises it's there. Um, he must know, right? Let's click on his... Yeah, he knows there's stuff up there. I don't know if he knows there's a yeah. comm there, but... I don't think he knows the comms there. Or he'd have done something about it by now. Hmm. There's a lot of LLTs there. up that hill. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll say at least preventing the comm from leaving unannounced sort of thing. He's got six warriors, Andy has. That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> and he's now taking Katusha's expansion at the bottom right. Yeah, and he's also reclaimed that lab. The metal income is almost identical. Yeah. Oh, and he's pushing down with his com. That might be a mistake. Okay. Yeah, Cartouche has now seen this. He's seen the now. com. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said. That's a D-gun spot and a half. Oh, this is so risky. I wouldn't Ooh. even try for the D-gun here, I don't think. I don't yeah, know if you've got a choice, if though. He, if, he if you back off, then you lose. Yeah, oh, no, Andy. Oh. He's cloaked it. Oh. He's coming around the back. <gasps> if he uncloaks no. for one second, he's just going to die here. Okay, he's going to get spotted. He's yeah, he's done for. Oh, uh, no. Probably. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's... Well, I wasn't sure because there was a bunch of stumpies going for the other one. You see that so much where the comm gets split and then, yeah. You should have made uh, DTs. <laughs> yeah, actually true. You don't see those much at all. DTs in a war prism. <laughs> Tar Templars. <laughs> the dragon teeth. <laughs> oh right. Not not dark, dark Templars. Templars. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's the Starcraft map? Yeah, let's go with me. <laughs> Yeah, but like if you make uh, two on each side, it would kind of funnel the tanks to the center. 
here. You don't even need to kill each side. If you just have a couple in the middle, it'll ruin their formation. They'll keep bumping into each other. You don't see that very often, the DTs. <laughs> no, you don't. 1v1. And I reckon they're, they're underrated. Yeah, you know, definitely. This map, they might work. What we got next? Um, Comet Catcher. Comet Catcher classic. Arguably the classic. It's not. It's not the classic comic catcher because it's rotated ninety degrees. So. <laughs> so I mean, it's in like com comic catcher itself is the most classic map potentially. It is the yeah. It's just the map that has probably been played the most apart from DSD. People have been playing comic catcher for a long time. Except this is not fixed positions. This is start boxes. Mm -hmm. So that is gonna gonna be interesting to see. So after this game, we've got Ragnar and Taku, and then the winner of that will fight the winner of this game. And that's the tournament, then. I think we're doing a third place decider as well. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So we'll do that uh, before the grand final. It's a good idea. So I think on this you can start anywhere. There's middle two spots in the middle that are viable and and the corners are viable, which makes this interesting. I think most people would opt for the middle just because there's so many mexes and you want to just like fan out and expand everywhere and, and get as much metal as possible as quickly as possible. But I uh, found the corners be really good because it's so defensible. Yeah, that's the other thing. Then my only question is, is that is that a noob trap? Because you know, when you're new and you get rushed and you're like, oh no, then you overreact the next time, as it were. Yeah, I, I think in, I don't know, it's not. I wouldn't call it a noob trap. I think um, even even the best players, you know, you, you can't hold everything at once. It's there's so much to juggle that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say the corner start to play safe is fine, no matter what. Thank you for vindicating my choice, <laughs> <laughs> or validating my choice, I suppose. Starting in the middle, if you like, if you're confident, is what most people will do because they're confident and they'll they'll think that they can hold it all. But usually, when it comes down to it, stuff gets raided regardless. Yeah. All right, both both opt in for the middle though. Usually, um, in bar, we've seen a bot a bot meta here where you'll start bot lab and just like quickly fan out with cheap constructors and and get as much map control as possible and then swap into vehicles for the actual uh, skirmishes. That's an interesting difference. So Andy's gone with a solar and a laser turret next to his two mexes, whereas Katusha's left his completely undefended. I'm liking Andy's start more. These, this is kind of looking like a possible vehicle start for both of them. With a bot start, you, you, the idea is that you get the two mexes and one solo and go and go bot lab and just get a load of constructors really quickly, a couple fleas. Mm. But with yeah. this three mexes, yeah, okay, so it looks like vehicles for Katusha. Vehicle, yeah. Let's see if Andy does the same. I'm guessing it will be. Because of the second solo as well. Yeah, vehicles are Andy. His lab is so, so far behind though. He's just started his lab and Cartouche's lab is almost done. Mm. So what? LLT difference. Done. Oh. Yeah. The difference being, I suppose, is uh, if Andy gets some rovers round the back there, those mechs are screwed. 
I mean, the the only way this like LT can make sense is if Cartouche would have started really like a, did a really fast start. I disagree on that because the MLT is really good because it means you don't need to send a constructor back over there. You can just push forwards into the sides. Mm. I, I don't mind it. Yeah, but... I think the problem is yeah, you are given you... up tempo. But it's, yeah. it's not game changing. It's one LLT at the end of the day. It's it's a little different, but I think it, it's not going to be game changing. Now this is what yeah. this is. I like this where you get the radar instead of the LRT and mm. just just try and defend with the units. Yeah, because you know where they are. Especially on this map where it's just open flat land, you can see most of the stuff that it covers. Mm. That LRT it paid off. Yeah, proved its worth. Yep. <laughs> there you go. However, so what uh, Katusha said, he's got three. Weasels, are they? Yeah, weasels to defend his way instead. Yeah, I like this much more. It's just, uh, it's just more effective. Now, a lot of people uh, make a lot of scouts, but then they throw them away <laughs> later on. Yeah. Instead of keeping them or scouting with them or. On a map like this, them. they're always useful because. Like there's so many mechs and you can't possibly cover every mechs with LLTs and and defense and stuff. So I think there's always room. Like if you if you play against is it the Barb AI or whatever, it'll just like constantly mm. raid and send units through the little paths and weave them around yeah. the LLTs to get mechs. Well, let's see if uh, Cartouche's scouts survive long. Nah, I don't think so. Might be able to get mechs here, or two. See if Andy notices. Yeah, he should be able to get one. Well, a mech takes about 30 seconds to uh, for itself. I was gonna get the radar. He might get another mech. See, this is this is the thing. It's just he skipped the LLT and he's just got weasels and it's just been really annoying with him. Radar is like the ultimate target for a for a, for a scout. Definitely. Cost sixty metal. It dies super fast. Katush opt to expand south with a commander instead of in the middle of the map. I don't mind it, because there's so many mechs that it's not a massive deal, but it might play, in, play a part later on. In fact, I think it's fairly standard to see the com do this, because you just sort of start to wall off the south side and use the units to defend the middle and the, the north. Mm. Whereas if you go straight down the middle with your commander, you're sort of open on both sides. Yeah. So I think this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, if you just uh, naked expand with uh, Nexus, as long as they uh, survive for a minute or something, that's already very good. I could uh, do a Behereth and build Twilights everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad strat. Yeah. Especially on a map as open as this, where it's like, okay, they legitimately may not have expanded that far. This map very quickly becomes less about metal, more well, about energy, though. I remember, yeah. uh, I remember in BA, right? So since one ones didn't start uh, using boxes, start uh, you know always in the corner. One strategy would be to um, a bit after the start send one con to like the opposite side yeah. and start just expanding yeah. there. I did that a lot. But when you when players start in the middle, it's not really as viable. Andy might be able to get some stuff done here. At least a mechs. Uh, no? Okay, he's uh oh he's, uh, he's thinking yeah. that Katusha's has expanded at the top or he's he's just checking it anyway. If he loops round and Katusha doesn't respond in time, he'll take out those back mechs, but 
so far the lack of laser turret has not been a problem. Cartouche has more uh, metal income. Th 32 versus 27. That's not too bad. No. Well, still, it's something. Oh yeah, definitely, and given enough time, it'll be a lot. Oh no, this gate is gonna get a max, maybe? No, it's gonna no. keep shooting the gate, the flash. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing work! If you, if you do set... Oh, actually, you know what? It might get several maxes now. Wow, if he <laughs> notices it. Not quite sure what this command is, but... <laughs> huh. Okay. Oh, I know what that is. LT? No. no, not quite. Really close. These gators are gonna clean all this up. This is not looking good for Andy. Yeah, There's a lot of flash coming in. Yeah. I wonder if Andy will go for like a Hail Mary here and just kill the comm, or try to kill the comm. It's hard to believe you'll manage to. You really shouldn't try. I wonder if that solar wall is going to work out in Katusha's favour or against him. Mm. It's kind of, yeah, the, the, see these flashes that came oh, around the back wait. couldn't get us around on him. So those solars yeah. actually... Uh, the, oh, the man. These guns are not great. Said. They hit no, the solar, so they all shut okay. off and he, right. he almost didn't have enough energy to degun. I think that if he would have... Turned off. I think if he paid a bit more attention, he might have been able to kill him. He's gonna keep trying, but, uh, but I think the opportunity is probably gone now. Yeah, he's gonna lose all his top expansion as well. Andy will, I mean. And he's doing a good job of cutting off the commander's escape route. Well, there's just no way. It's two LTs there and Gators. Yeah, he's not got enough. Oh, yeah. He can't take out the commander at the moment. Yeah, GG. I think he lost the game now. Oh. Yeah. These these Gators that came around the back were just cleaning all the expansion up. Uh, all right. I see, yeah. So we've got Taku and Ragnar now, I think. Right, yeah. So Katush is in the, the grand final. Now we've got um, Taku, Ta Taku versus Ragnar. <laughs> Pickaxe. <laughs> and then the winner of that against Andy, and then the winner of that against Katush. So yeah, let's go to p type versus Ragnar. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay. Just uh, make sure they're ready at the moment. It's just the right map, Titan Jewel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The right map and the right start boxes. So presumably both Taku and Ragnar have seen that other game. Will that influence their start position? Will we see bottom left versus top right? You reckon? That's a good point. I think. Um, I think. <laughs> I wouldn't have said the the corner position that Andy did was was that good, but. 
he made it look really good. So yeah, maybe they'll opt to, to do that. I, th I think the issue is that it's just so hard to raid a corner position like that, because it's not like the other corner position where it is open. It's a corner position where you've got walls around you. Uh, and he wants in. Uh... Yeah, definitely, because the... I think starting in the middle is... You're sort of saying you want to make a tempo play and just expand and get map control and stuff. Starting in the corner, you're sort of saying, you know, try and raid me. Andy, we were just talking about you. We were talking about the uh, choice of start positions on this. Hey. Yo, yeah, what, what was your yeah. thinking when you started in the in the top right? I liked the corner because I didn't have to worry about getting raided too much and I could just focus on my attention and micro on raiding him because I wanted to go aggressive. That makes sense, yeah. Hash, hashtag a corner. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that a lot because yeah, you, you don't have to worry too much about getting raided. Just such a safe position. Did it occur to you that you could put um, wind, for example, on top of the hill and it'd be even harder to attack? Uh, then I'd need to spend the uh, the movement time. I think I just stood my commander in one place and built energy in a circle around him, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't always do that, where you just set one constructor to make wind. I think I always do it, but if you're going to go aggressive, you kind of just bank on your commander making all the energy that you need. So you want to save that metal for units. So Taku's gone for the, the most standard boring start position possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's like actually the yeah. He, next position. This isn't even the, is... the the fixed position, is it? Isn't the fixed position like no. a little further back so you get the, the mechs all the way in the corner and then you walk forward yeah. to get the <laughs> Yeah, but so he can he can just do like a triangle with the uh, top mechs and uh, metal spot. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's true. That's what he's doing. Um, not sure if uh, if this is better than the top uh, starting position. It's really wide open, and it's like uh, Ragnar start starts with like half the map behind him already. Mm. Much safer. So Taku's going to go vehicles by the look of it. Yep, makes sense if you're going to go three mexes. Yeah. yeah. Will we see a mine layer? Um, no. Very much doubt <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm, very, uh, I'm incredibly disappointed by this. <laughs> I think because I it's it's um, start boxes as well. Yeah, and he's yeah, got PTSD. Yeah, it harder. Yeah, if, you, if you're doing <laughs> fixed positions, then you know kind of the commander's path a lot of the time. Not not perfectly, but if you see it going up to that corner, you know it's probably going to loop around and, and come back down. But yeah, start yeah. boxes, you, you you don't know anything about the commander's path thing. It's true. Well, to be honest, the, the, uh, the mines came at a later stage in the game, and uh, Kratush constantly sent uh, scouts to scout the commander. But uh, yeah, still, boxes make it harder. The other thing is hiding the mine layer, because Katush had to be aware of that, and as soon as the mine layer gets detected, then the game's up. But, so Ragnar waited yeah. until Taku started building the laser turret, then he sent the flea forwards? <laughs> Close. Five weasels against two peewees. I definitely, I think I prefer Ragnar's start here, just because it's a lot, a lot faster. Oh, he might, will he get the con? No. Oh. Oh. Nice defense. Oh, that was very nice defense. Pitax has got um, four gators out already. They're pretty decent oh, wow. against uh, peewees if you can kite them. Yeah, definitely. These might be able to do some damage. He just he needs, no to be, energy, though. needs to be really careful with this micro. And he's making solars. It's gonna cost him. He has no metal. 
Yeah. And wind's also really high at the moment. Oh, it's got it's got one of the mixes. No, he's just yeah, sending that gate gate in. But was it worth yeah. it? You need to he's be so careful with these rally points on hold position. Mm. I wait until Ragnar gets a res bot just to either. Why is his Why are stuff. his two gators so forward? He set target on that low peewee. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Uh, the the micro is um, it's a little bit lacking, but oh, wait. he's trying. Okay, oh. So close to killing that. Just wasting resources now. Yeah. It, just feeding into uh, into Ragnar. So much metal now. Six hundred metal. Ptex built three constructors, but I don't think he can even afford that amount of build power. I think if you're Ragnar in the spot, you're chilling. You've got radar in the middle of the map. You've got you've got peewees all over the place. I think he's feeling quite comfortable here. He's also 18 to 12 in the metal production as well. Yeah, that's a 50% advantage. These peewees are gonna do too much damage. This is probably game. Yeah. Not really attacking the the lab though. They're missing because of the wreckage. <laughs> it's kind of protected. There we go. Doesn't get the lab, but gets pretty much everything else. Yeah. Ragnar's producing about twice the energy of attack at the moment. And I think that the, twice the metal too. I think the start position that Ragnar chose was much better. Yeah. Than, uh, and yeah, bots yeah, versus vehicles as well. I, th I think vehicles, you can make it work, but you have to make those early gators pay off. You need to be really careful mm -hmm. with them. Yeah, but if you just draw a line between uh, Ragnar's base and Ptex. Immediately, you know, like realize that Ragnar has so much empty space behind him that is way safe mm. than uh, any uh, expansion that Peter can make. Mm. You just expand towards the middle and you block everything behind you. Ragnar now will make a very nice defensive position, too. If Ragnar realizes where Taku's commander is, Taku's lost. No, it's game over already. Yeah, I don't think there's any combat for Ptek here. Probably not. Maybe one riot tank and <laughs> and some great <laughs> luck. One riot tank and a dream. He... Instead, he's building two more constructors. <laughs> yeah, and Ptek's tapping yeah, out. That's it. It's a quick first game. Yeah, it's a good first game though. So, so we've got Eye of Horus next. Eye of I... is that how you pronounce that? I have Horus, yeah. Hey. I have Horus, okay. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. How do you how do you pronounce it? Uh, Just search know. for I. Horus. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. What? Hello. Hello. Hey, yeah, of Horus. I uh, shut up. What? <laughs> So is that how you pronounce his name, Taku? Yeah, supposedly. So, cause it's, cause Apparently, it's yeah. I, I never knew that. He I thought it was Pitek. He told me it was Pickaxe as a joke once, so I just carried it on, but it is Taku. Oh, I thought it was Pitek. <laughs> I, uh, I always said Pitek. I'm always going to say Pitek, you can't stop me. <laughs> Oh, 
a lot of people are voting for PTAC. And someone has said it's like Achu. <laughs> Fucking Polish, man. That language is nuts. <laughs> yeah. That said, Welsh, also quite nuts. There's a place <laughs> down the road from me called Llanelli. If you say it correctly, you spit all over the person you're talking to. Do you speak Welsh? No, I know I can pronounce Welsh and I can uh, read out, I can sound out the words, but I can't understand that. They still teach it, don't they? Like, is it optional? Or... Yeah, um, it's it optional in most places. Though several of the schools are 100% Welsh, and if you're further north in Wales, typically people there speak it, but in South Wales, not so much. Right. Uh, Wait, are they? Is it the same map? Okay, he's back. I don't know what's going on with Ragnar, but every game he has to leave and rejoin. It's really it's weird. It's his victory dance, we've done over this! So is Rag and Taku in the same house? Uh, no, I don't think so, but they're... Possibly. <laughs> it's, can... it's Taku's laptop! I, no, I think he sent it in the post, so so yeah, Ragnar didn't have a computer <coughs> or something, and... Or he he, he had sent a... the laptop in the post! Yeah, he, he sent something, I don't know, but Ragnar had a, a laptop with an integrated graphics card and he couldn't run the game at all, and... Taku sent him something and he's using that, whatever it is. That's nice of him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's got no, like a backdoor in it. Him. It's not <laughs> nice of Colin. Well, it's not working so far, is it? Taku just needs to like press the button and turn it off remotely now. <laughs> Windows remote login. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnar starts dropping frames like Zao. Because what's Taku playing on? Oh yeah, we can just check their specs, can't we? Yeah, so Taku's got a 5900X with a J with a 1070. And I'll be Ragnar's happy. Ragnar's got an i5-7400 or 7400 and a GT-1030. It's not too bad, actually. It's good enough. I mean, if I can run a 970 and get, you know, 60 plus frames per second on 1440, yeah. I was amazed at how good the game looks and how well optimized it is. Yeah, it's pretty decent. It's just, just been iterated on so much over the years that they've crept up in performance here and there, but without you know compromising the the graphics. The graphics are so much better than Bar than BA, sorry, and yeah. the performance is uh, is equal, I think, at the moment. Well, I don't know. I'm speaking. I'm biased because I've got decent graphics cards, so it all runs fine for me anyway. I can't really speak. Right. Um, I have Horus. Oh, yeah, that's a nice graphics card. Both starting in the center. Yeah. Honestly, I have Horus. Uh, is nice, but the texture is just too uh, monotone. Yeah, it's hard I, to look at. When I proposed this map for the the tourney, I know a bunch of people said uh, they weren't keen on it. Um, just because it's it's not quite there graphically. I'm sure they'll remake it at some point, but no, but it's not even that like the, the fidelity is a problem. It's the coloration, right? Just to say me, hmm. it's kind of hard to. Uh, I don't know. That's that's how I feel. I just the hard same to look part. It, the, the actual specific colors feel like they're slightly off, especially compared to the other ones. But I don't think it's too samey because you've got the hills. You've got lots of dis different coloration and stuff like that there. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's too shiny then. Like too yellow, yeah, bright. I, I, I yeah. agree with the, the reflective almost. Like those uh, those cliffs are really bright. And Peter has got his lab up a lot faster than Rag because he skipped the second mix, which is interesting. So he's going for the, the super aggro start with the fleas, hoping to get something done. I mean, it is a 2.9 mech spot, so one mech start is quite viable, especially for bots. He's going to get a mech here. Oh, yeah. Nice. And a windmill, at least. I don't know. Not quite. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I confused which uh, flea was whose. I think it's also uh, easier to spot units when their shadow falls towards the bottom as opposed to uh, towards the top. Yeah, that's fair. When can we start rotating uh, and start looking down on the map? 
<laughs> down across the map. Not, not like Goddy. <laughs> God. Never like that. God damn. Yeah. I mean, you gotta wonder why he does that. It's probably uh, has its advantages. Uh... Apparently, you can rotate sun direction in settings. Yeah, you can. That. Reclaimed it, nice. That's I don't know how people do that. Writing. People reclaim flea so easily, yeah. but it seems like it, and I always struggle with it clicking on a flea to reclaim it. I just <laughs> Especially when it's near our wind generators. Fleas around the back might be able to get a few windmills. It looks a bit odd, but I now have shadows underneath all the units. And you're not kidding, you're not, you weren't kidding, it is much easier to spot them. Yeah, all the new maps, uh, all the remakes, uh, the shadows fall towards the bottom, for that reason. What I will say is, the map now looks a bit weird with the sun in that position, though. Yeah, it's probably because the map has some shadows that are, you know, baked into it. Fleas, coming in. It's got one windmill. And then you have... The shadows get in. in one place falling to one side and yeah early res bot again i'm seeing this here and there where there's no features on the map i don't think there's features on the map right yeah there's no um, features on the map but he's made a res bot just for that general utility of resurrected mexes and and just using wreckages total reclaimable wreckage nine metal probably from a flea so into peewee wars yeah I think the the pathing for bots on this is quite interesting as well because these hills in the middle, even though they look like they're they're cliffs that you can't pass, that you can just go over yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, you can. So it's a lot more open than uh, it looks like initially. Yeah, if you if you select like a, a keyboard and press F two, you can see it, yeah, or that you can pass. Yeah. Easily. Flea might be able to get a mech here if he notices. Mm, yep. Nice. Both commanders going into the center oh, about the same time. This is usually well, what you do here. Advantage. Ragnar is still way ahead of Taku in terms of metal production, even though he's had a couple of mechs pulled out from under him. Yeah, I guess he's expanded towards Boris. He's really selling me on this early nano. I quite like it. Yeah. I never do it, but it's it's 200 build power. It's just just really well, good, I think. He's getting a second nano, and Taku's not even got one yet. Well, Taku has uh, four cons. True. Actually, has five cons in, in his base. He's got three of them that are actually helping the structure. Two resbots there. He's got three resbots. I really think this was probably a mistake, to be honest. He probably had resbots on. He's got four resbots on repeat. I'm guessing yeah. that's because he wants to like make use of the the little skirmishes and just heal his units. Oh. And but they're all just sat in his base, not doing anything. This is a lot of people. Right yeah. <clears throat> That LLT is going to be up just in time. Oh, oh no, this is not. this is spooky for for Ragnar. He's got oh. Peewee's flooding. He's probably he's going to lose that constructor. He's, going, he's probably yeah. going to lose both. He needs to retreat though. Yeah, but the left side is uh, is looking bad for Ptek. Yeah, he's lost yeah, both constructors. True. Did Ptek try to expand to the left side? Uh, a little bit, I think, but. So it looks sure. like he didn't even attempt it, he's just gone to the right side, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, he didn't. Sorry, I just saw a blue dot there's a flea. He has a uh, Mexus queued up, but... Uh... Ragnar's not spotted the com where the commander is just yet, but it's very close. Both commanders have like gone through the middle and then they've uh, come <laughs> off to the, the side, which is interesting. It's like a very strange dance. Oh, these res bots are set to guard his factory. On Ptex Factory. It's, it's, the, it's the default because they're a constructor. <laughs> oh no! This this one flea in the top left is going to kill all these mixes. Oh no! That's painful. That is very painful. That's fun. He's going to remember. Going to notice too. Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> okay, Ragnar knows where Taku's commander is now. I don't think there's anything to do about it, but... Oh, that's a nice wave of Pee-wee's going on the top right. There's Pee-wee's yes. coming in behind Taku's base. Two Pee-wee's. Oh. Killing a lot of windmills. Going to get Constructor. Can get more windmills. Oh, half a little nano turret as well. I think they've already paid their their worth. The... Oh, I think Taco forgot about his peewees there. Yeah. Oh, remembered about him. Metal production is near enough identical. There's so much metal on the map. Yeah. Like... However, Ragnar has got, uh, Ragnar's got uh, twice the energy production, for obvious reasons, given what just happened. He's switching to uh, vehicles. Yep, with three, four nano turrets. Yeah, that's really strong here. I think he, is he, he's not got any resbots. I thought he would get some resbots out for all this metal on the map. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, it looks like he's just gonna gonna go straight vehicle rush. Oh, grief! Taku's floating everything at the moment. Look at him. He's got a thousand nine hundred metal. Almost two k metal. Yeah. That's rough. Looks like he's swapping yeah. into vehicles. Yep. Yeah. Probably gonna lose because of that. He's got a lot of nanos, just not not the energy. I think losing those those few windmills that he had uh, really made a difference. Yeah. That's it, he's, he's caught himself. back up to Ragnar really quickly with the energy production. He's yeah. making way too many nanos, I think. He's, yeah, he's, he's, saw, he's seen his metal and just decided to make a ton of nanos to spend it all as quick as yeah. possible, but... I'm not sure if that was the best choice. His expansion isn't great. Ragnar's got both sides going on. Mm. Ragnar's yeah. expansion feels more stable as well because of his forces and positions. Oh, he's got LTs and... Everywhere. <laughs> oh, Taku's building metal makers. <laughs> I love it. He's building way too many, but uh, nice. There's still so much metal on the map. I'm really surprised that none of them have tried to reclaim or resurrect any of this. It's <laughs> too hard to, to have tension. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! No. Override! He, he left! He left! How? <laughs> right, meanwhile, well, Ragnar's calm. Nah, no way. No, Ragnar's calm is fine. He's yeah. surrounded by LLTs. That's GG, I guess. Taku like gonna give up after that? Well, if he loses this, he's out. Hmm. That seemed like the last desperate uh, attempt. Yeah. Oh, this Pee Wee. Oh, I died. Oh well, he got a mix. This is one thing that I see Ragnar do that not a lot of other people do is uh, actually you know, Taku's doing the same thing, he's mixing Janus into his stumpies. A lot of people just just especially me, just stick stumpies on repeat, but I like mixing the Janus in there. It works really well for skirmishes where you can kite in and and back. Mm. The wind is so good on this map. 1 to 30. Yeah. Well, it can be really good on this map. Yeah. It can be I really bad, I suppose. Yeah, that's why Energy I think storage. a good idea. Mm. Energy storage is probably a good shout. Several energy storages. I would actually go for two on this. Taco really needs to expand to, to the left. Piro wants to have any chance of coming back. 
Taku's been very brave with his commander. I think he's tried. I think he sent, yeah, he sent several constructors over here and they've all just got killed. Ragnar's really doing a good job of shutting that down. Hmm. Wow, all those Janus's. Wow. As soon as Ragnar realizes that Taku's commander's there, he's like, well, easy way of winning now. All those POEs are gonna destroy everything on the right. Yeah. Oh man, those cons are gonna die again. One of them. <laughs> yeah. Red. Uh, Stumpies are not gonna be able to kill all of this before it gets through. Oh, unless he just holds them. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's also pushing out the middle. Yeah, he's going in for the kill at the same time, yeah. Uh, Taku's, uh... Wait, did he lose his comm or did he give up? I think he gave up. Oh, his comm unless... is all the way over here. Oh, maybe I missed yeah. it. He might have walked in 10 LTs. I say there's a laser turret shooting him, Maybe. so... Oh! Did the com um, explode, ne uh, kill the Twilight and get EMP'd? Uh, I have no That's idea. <clears throat> Either way, 2-0 to Ragnar. I think that was over anyway. Alright! So... so we've got Ragnar we've... against... Uh, Andy. Tush, isn't it? Um, Ragnar against Andy, I think, right? Oh, right. And then the winner of that is against Katouche, I believe. Uh, oh, I see. Sorry. I'll leave you guys. They were left or right. All right, GG's. Yeah, actually, I think I think that's right. Unless, do they go up to the winners and then they do the third place afterwards? I don't know how that works. You make the tournament. I well, challenge does it all for you. If you report your games, then it'll tell us what what's next. Fair enough. <laughs> So Ragnar and Andy will be playing each other? Yeah, Ragnar versus and Andy, I'd imagine. Then... Yep, yeah. and then the winner of that goes on to the grand final. Yeah. So, yeah, we're talking money now. So the winner of uh, of this oh. next game gets, uh, <laughs> what is it, 20, 25 euros or something? Something like that, yeah, no pressure. It's, uh, it's easily a pizza or two. If you win this game, you are a pro esports player. Pro in the sense that you have earned money from it as a professional. Exactly. Just don't tell HMRC about it. I think Randy's already won some money from uh, from StarCraft, I think. I'm oh, not 100% nice. sure on that. I'd imagine so. He played at top level in the early early days. Mm. Oh, wait, wasn't he like the uh, in the uh, British team or something? Yeah, I think so. National team. Anyway, StarCraft sucks, so... <laughs> Bar is way better. Dead game. <laughs> We've got 52 spectators in this lobby now. Wait, so when are they... When are they gonna play that C map, um, Lost Paradise? So I don't, I don't know if that's guaranteed. Um, let's have a look. Oh. Lost Paradise. Uh, pa is... Paradise Lost is the third map. Oh, Paradise Lost. Lost. Yeah, third map. So it will get played. Possibly That'll be interesting. Plus, whoever loses this round, this will be. Will be. game here, will get to pick the next map. Remember? Ah, so yeah. Yeah, I'd so this love is... it if they pick like coast to coast or Coombe Valley or something. Oh, it's, got, it's got to be a map in the pool that's already in the oh. tournament pool. So it, yeah, it <laughs> can't be like speed metal or anything. But uh, I was literally going to say speed metal. As fun as that would be. Or in Europe, that's also also a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do a cheese yeah. tournament at some point. Not a cheese tournament, a, um, like a metal map tournament, and have non-metal maps and. Sh air maps we don't and... have seven islands. Yeah. Yeah, seven islands is a classic. <laughs> yeah. Can you make a? Can you do like an FFA tournament? Is that even possible? Oh, it would be possible, but you'd have to work out the rules of it because you're not playing against people in the same way. So you have to work out: do you get points for? I think it has to be point stand? based. Probably. Yeah. Do you get points for being second last out? All that sort of stuff. Then you've got the question also: if you're doing an FFA tournament like that, is playing really defensively going to be the best strategy by a long way? And that's why it's a tournament. I don't think so. That depends.
I mean, it's not always the case in regular FFA games. Some people are saying we should do the, the grand final first, but I don't know how that works when we don't know who's in the grand final. Yeah, I don't see how that's working either. Oh, maybe we can just take a five minute break or something. We could we could take a little break if uh, if people want to do that. An ad break sounds like a great idea. Uh, we've got no ads to play. I'm sorry. Yeah. What are we going to advertise them? Um, I don't know. Put some like bar video up. <laughs> <laughs> Only if they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you'll find if you check out the, uh, I think they are actually going to be paying you. <laughs> I'm paying Sometimes them. I'm paying for this, Tony. No, no, if you server. <laughs> All right, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should uh, play some of uh, Ryan Cruz's new soundtrack. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, is this not the new soundtrack? I don't know what you put your set to. This is the new soundtrack, isn't it? Oh, it's starting. Oh lol, I, I was just uh, listening and not watching the stream with sounds. <laughs> oh, yeah, it helps if you yeah. put the sounds on then. Yeah. Alright, going straight into the game. Apparently there's a um, competition between this stream and Ice's stream. He's stolen 13 viewers. That's fine. Very disappointed to hear this. Yeah. Whose stream? Ice's. I mean, it's probably a rubbish stream. It's a shame he didn't do it earlier on. I'd like to have uh, multiple streams to cover all the early games because there were so many matchups that I wanted to cover that we couldn't. But now we're all watching absent. the same game. Yeah, absent for work, here for the glory. <laughs> Alright, so we've got uh, Ragnar versus Andy, Randy, Pro Randy, whatever you want to call him, for the, the third place decider. Um, I think he prefers the king. The <laughs> king. And the winner of this will go on to the grand final to face Katouche. So, apparently Ice is not actually doing his own commentary. He's broadcasting our commentary onto his. Oh, he's just re <laughs> restreaming my stream. Yeah. Very cheeky. So does that, does that make him worse or better? What a leech. He wants, <laughs> yeah. wants that viewership. Parasite. Yeah, we've got mirrored really starts like. here. To be fair, his, uh, the new sounds that he's done are really good. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, sounds really, really uh, like changed the uh, the feeling of the game. Mm. Oh, if we look at the uh, the people who made this, one v one map by Basic and Behereth. Ah, it's a collab. How does it feel to how, how does it feel to see uh, what is partially, if if not completely, your map uh, in the tournament? There, Basic. It feels amazing. Awesome. I'm so honored. <laughs> it's really clean. I really like the sand texture. It makes the units stand out yeah. quite well, but it's not like a boring flat texture. It's still got sort of depth to it. It's nice. Yeah. I'd like I'd like to see uh, Lost Paradise as uh, I also contributed to that one, and I think it that turned out pretty uh, pretty nice visually. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that because I've not seen many people practicing it. They've played a few games on it, I think. I yeah, so, a yeah. couple, but I guess not many people uh, oh, were expecting lost, to get yeah. to the grand final. Paradise lost. Yeah. yeah. I keep searching, really, for it, starting for an L, and like, oh, oh, there it is. Paradise lost, not not L. It really, yeah, it really is a lost paradise. Yep, the grand finals are a best of five, and it's the third map in the series, so it's guaranteed to be played. Are we the starting bots here? Which I guess uh, I think it's because of the the distance between the mixes is kind of makes it you can't a three mix start would be so slow that usually you probably you're probably always going to be starting on two mixes. So I think that the bots are just a little bit cheaper here. Yeah. Wait, but I mean you can you can do a four mix start I guess maybe maybe it's too long. Mm, I think I the distance remember. is just a bit much. Ooh, Ragnar's gonna make a mistake in a moment, sending that con out on its own potentially. He's got nothing to back it up. Is that that's hiding behind the hill, so it, Yeah. That flea might just uh, take him by surprise. 
I mean, the con will kill the flea if it reclaims it, but... So, Ragnar's seen it now, I'm guessing, and he's making stuff, but I don't know if it's going to be here in time. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, that's right, it's not, hap not happening. Little, little cheeky flea. And then Ragnar's just thrown away some fleas to a couple of peewees. What? Yeah. Oh dear. They're, uh, they're in the better war. That they're in the better kills place now. Is go off a bit late, isn't it? Ragnar walking to the middle early on. Andy's going down the side. Yeah. Andy's 10 to the 6 uh, in terms of I don't think, production. I don't think that's a good idea. What? You mean going down the side? side? Yeah, I, I no. think I agree. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, like in terms of uh, reg regardless of metal, well, not regardless, but if we take the metal spots out of the question for a second, the center is always the most strategically important part. Right? Yeah. And on this map, you also have a lot of metal spots there. So. Yeah. On a flat map, it's definitely most strategically important. Sometimes on a more elevated map, the sides can be of more importance. He's got two constructors, so he's not he's not ignored it. He's definitely uh, thought about this. Mm. So. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's going to be uh, game changing at all. Feels also like they're dancing around each other a little bit at the moment. Like, you know, small skirmishes, but no one's actually properly going for some serious harass yet. Well, I, I say that. <laughs> yeah, it, it plays it plays exactly how you'd think a map like this would play. I think it's just a, a bit of a dance at the start. Like, it's like Red Comet, but on a bigger scale. So you're just dancing units around and uh, trying to poke in and... Oh, oh man, that was, got that was some good value, Pee -wee. nice. And the radar. Seem to be arguing about the website. Yep is asking for ways of finding stuff out without joining the Discord and didn't realize that it was on the website. No, nothing especially interesting. Meanwhile, Ragnar spamming LLTs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and he's uh, two metal ahead now, 19 to 17. Little radar on the hill, that's nice. Yeah, that's a very nice idea. I mean, it's quite an open map anyway, so I think a radar, even on the low ground, wouldn't uh, be that different, but it's at least out of the way a little bit. Ragnar's radar, well, actually, if you look at Ragnar's player view, his radar has a massive blind spot just above it, or just above it to the right slightly. So a large portion of what uh, Andy had there, Ragnar couldn't see. And he's bringing his com into the center now, but it's already been taken by Ragnar's com. So I don't think he's going to be able to gain much there. It's a lot of peewees from Andy. Mm. Actually, they, I mean, they probably both got a very similar amount of peewees, but Andy's just blobbing them all up in the middle and Reg's spreading out a bit. Uh, it's coming in for a little raid. Well, I mean, Andy's Andy pulling them all the... back. Okay, just some. Yeah. He really should just raid with his other uh, POEs. Andy, I mean. Yeah, there's a lot to be gained here, I think, from raiding. It's such an open map that I'm surprised they're not raiding more. Yeah, though Ragnar's got a bunch of LLTs. Whoa, he's just, Ragnar's just self deed three LLTs at once. He tried to, yeah, I don't oh. know if, um... Oh, this GG. is it. This com is, uh, is dead. Yeah, too far out of position. Even Ragnar can't degun that. Wow, that was decisive. <laughs> Alright. I love that they went from, oh, they're about even to Ragnar's dead. Yeah, you just, I think that's the thing where you, you move your comm into the middle and you've got to be super aware that there's stuff around you. Spencer move. 
Yeah. It's right out of uh, Sun Tzu. Yeah. <laughs> the best defense is offense. Okay, so uh, Ragnar's going to pick the next map that he wants. From the pool. I know. I love the way you have to clarify that every time. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm trying to trick him into picking speed metal. <laughs> Me well, you know how you said you want to do a, a metal tourney jazz? Yeah. Uh, someone just said metal maps don't really belong in a 1v1 tourney. But we will so... literally have only one metal map, though. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure metal. how a keen Ice and Berith would be to uh, remake all the metal maps. You you can definitely you can definitely make a metal map that is like strategic. You know? mm. Oh yeah. I think they're planning on making one or two metal maps, but yeah, for the most part, no. I think it's, it's a difference like... because you get maps like Speed Metal where the metal is just insane, and you only need like one or two yeah. mixes at the start to last a long time. But yeah. then you get maps like Metal Heck where you, you it's not like there's metal everywhere. But you ha you still have to make quite a lot because each individual mix doesn't extract like a ridiculous amount. It's 1.0, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's pretty pretty low to be honest. But yeah, it's just everywhere. Yeah, it's you need like a minute to uh, to All pay right. for it. Right, let's um, pick to Altair. What I don't like about Metal Hack is that because it has like repeating, um, you know, like hills and. It just seems random. It's really hard to understand where you're, where you're at when you look at the map. There's a lot, a lot of like all these OTA uh, maps. They have like repeating patterns. I guess it was just faster and cheaper to do. Mm. Are they copy paste features or parts of the map? Yeah, on on Metal or Hack, on you map. used to see like turrets on all, all those little uh, hilly bits. Yeah. All right. Oh, I like. Whoa, Ragnar's Ragn Ragn start is like super aggressive. I don't know what he's planning with this, but he's gone for the one mix instead of like a, a few yeah. inches back. It's interesting. Well, we've already seen this in this journey. Did yeah? I remember someone started one mix, but I didn't think they started like right at the front like this. He's, he's started like a few inches ahead just to get this lab closer. Yeah, if you think about it, I guess this is uh, this is better. If you're gonna start with one max. Definitely can do it on this map. There's so much uh, metal in the rocks. And he's gone for the pretty conservative econ start. He's just sending in pew. Um, this is this is fleas to try and capture. This is again. exactly the map where this one metal one mech start works because you're so close to the opponent that the fleas get here like before the lab's even finished whereas on bigger maps it, it takes so long to cross that it doesn't always work out but I think he's going to be able to get a lot done here oh maybe not no, I'm not sure oh that was an interesting snipe well, this, this new version of the map is so much cleaner than the old one it's very nice And he's actually held that quite well. Mm, very well. He's looking good, good for Econ. And see, Ragnar's economy now is he's not he's not doing so hot on. Uh, well, I no. guess I guess you expect the rare spots to make up for that, but it's only got the one for now. Definitely going to. Well, Wait, did uh, Andy not make a rare spot, or am I? Uh, no, not he's not made any, and he's not making any. He's queued. He's queued one up. Is he? Oh, yes, now, yeah. But I think, yeah, you probably want to start with a res bot here. Yeah, yeah you definitely do. Ragnar's gaining on uh, Andy for resources now, for metal produced. Which is so much metal. Yeah. So Ragnar's sent this, sending these fleas around just to look for res bots and yeah. hide them in corners and stuff. Ragnar's now ahead of Andy in terms of metal, but only slightly. And he's gone for the nano. <laughs> really early nano. I think you could get two early nanos here, to be honest. Maybe even three. He, oh, he, have... he does. He did, it, he did it last time. Oh, right. 
he, he changed the vehicles really aggressively on this one last time as well, I think. And he just can't uh, spend uh, his metal fast enough. Grief, yeah. I guess neither can Ragnar. <laughs> well, that that'll pro that problem will soon be solved, I'm sure. Two Peewees so coming again, in here. Ragnar getting pushing forward his common, putting out LTs everywhere. I love it. Peewees are getting uh, bruised quite a lot. Yeah. What do you think of these are uh, flanking Peewees? Do you reckon they can get anything down at all? Mm, we almost Dragon's got that res bar. He's not got a radar. I think he'll get one pretty soon. Oh, he's got uh, he's got one res bot, two res bot. This is what I thought this this map would be about: is sniping each other's res bots. Mm. And he's got this expansion so quickly. He's going to get the north and the south, but Ragnar's taking the middle. So it's an interesting dynamic. I think the middle's probably better here because you get a radar in the middle yeah. and on that hill. You can get LLTs up there. It just it's so much map control. Yeah. There's more mexes at the sides, but. You're sort of banking on holding that. Yeah. And you're giving up the middle intentionally. Ragnar's got his second nano now. This is not so... going to be able to hold these peewees coming down Ra the south. Yeah. Ah, Randy's doing the yeah. same thing at the top. I know, I was like, ooh. Okay. But there's no expansion to kill there, so he's going to try and go base. Randy's uh, not doing anything. It's a shame. This... Ragnar has got a radar okay. that probably saw those peewees though. So yeah, he's got a couple oh, of LLTs a beamer. in position now. I wonder if he meant to... Andy made a beamer instead Ooh. of an LLT. I don't know if that was intentional. It would have been that's... good if it finished, but it, it's Expensive, slower. Yeah. He survived! Also... Oh, that, was... that has now stalled out his peewees along the top now, so that attack is doing nothing. Ragnar's got a yeah. bunch of LLTs there. That attack was terrible, actually. Yeah. yeah. Didn't accomplish anything. Mm. Still a lot of metal on the map. Yeah. Both still pretty even, Stevens. As it, as it, uh, as what's question. what's Ragnar doing here? He's reclaiming his bot lab to make a bot lab. Um, I think that was a mistake. <laughs> no, no, he's, he, it is because he's just realised. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't like that bot lab. He was like, oh, yeah, not big on that position. This bot lab offends me. A different <sighs> one, thank you. I like this twilight. Built a twilight in the middle here. Yeah. That'll probably never get spotted for the whole game. Probably not, no. Ragnar's a big fan of building things from the bottom of the cliff. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a that's a, a great little trick if you Is know that, about uh, it. Andy has um, 22 peewees versus Ragnar's 8. But there are also 3 LLTs, Although, 4 LLTs. Yeah, yeah he might not get in, but he's, he's got map control here. There's also nanos defending those LLTs as well. Oh, and now... Janus and Stumpies. And he's opting for the Roccos. Yeah, Roccos and a lot of Peewees still. Again, very even on metal production still. 22 each. Power's pretty close as well. Can, if Andy can get that radar in the center. These, be, these Janus, are, whenever these Janus poke in, they're just gonna guarantee killing a couple of peewees. Um, Ragnar knows the comms up there. Well, he's seen it, I don't think he actually knows. In theory, <laughs> Fleece could uh, help deal, um, deal with Janus, but yeah. it's oh, just definitely. so much micro. Definitely. We should get like a constant stream with him if possible somehow. You just like get a, a couple fleas and push them right up against the Janus so the Janus shoot their own units and shoot the ground and yeah. stuff and it fucks them up. Yeah, it's just a lot of micro to do that. 
Because yeah. you also need to get those plays, but not just spend. This is tons very of dangerous things. with his commander. Oh. Why is he yeah. target the LLT with the Janus's? Oh. These Peewees might be able to get a good now. surround. Depends on these Janus shots. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's got a lot oh, more man. coming in. Okay. Yeah, these Peewees aren't getting much done. He should be able to hold this. They're getting a good surround though. Ah, uh, he's backing Actually, off yeah. a little bit. They did better than I expected. Killing a constructor. They got like four or five tanks there. The problem now is he's just given away those peewees and his his commander's just left here by itself. Yeah, with four LLTs and a bunch of resers to repair him. Ragnar's com is not the safest either. No. Well, it's it's not unsafe. There's nothing that um, Andy can actually do to take advantage of that situation, I think. Yeah, but the vehicles can get on that hill. That's true. And he pulling back a bit. Oh, oh he needs to be careful here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he can die really easily to those Janus. These vehicles yeah. can't get up that hill, right? So if he just goes up there, he's he's all safe. Yeah. But you know, these Ooh. vehicles just gonna keep going. Ragnus, come! <gasps> oh my goodness! The warriors oh, are uh, pushing it back. They're gonna get it. Oh man, GG! Oh, <laughs> that was an incredible Holy D gun. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> That was oh that was a goodness. game winning D gun. Wasn't the game. Jesus. Yeah. I thought that was over. Yeah, me too. That's what I'm saying. Ragnar's D gun in is just nuts. The warriors are still getting in though. They might be able to to get a bit of damage done here. They're just so hard to kill. They're just, they're almost a tier two unit. Is the thing. Yeah, I think the Janus are gonna mm. kill them easily. He's just making pure warrior though. It's an interesting choice. I love how Ragnar, having nearly lost his comm, is like, yeah, I'll push out with the comm now, great idea. <laughs> it's like, really? Uh, he just need uh, Andy needs to send his warriors for him. Andy's resing some stuff up the top at the moment. <laughs> just don't think that those warriors are going to be able to handle Janus. I think you're right. This commander is the looking a bit. I don't know. He is retreating it straight away. Or it was. The problem is the warriors move faster than the commander and do a lot of damage. Ragnar's floating a thousand two hundred metal at the moment. Wow. He's uh, he only just gotten a third nano turret. That's why. He's been distracted. These stumpies are going to try and chase these warriors down. Oh, yeah, with the Janus is helping them as well. Yeah, the, the stumpies and the Janus are just so strong. Yeah. I think the, the vehicle what? switch is really paying off for Ragnar now. Yeah. Huh. Until they walk up a hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true. Like Andy, has, Andy has no troops. Nice. Uh, so Andy has just built um, a metal extractor next to that twilight, and it's not doing anything, and he's not realised why yet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like, why the fuck is that not doing anything? But also, Ragnar knows where that comm is. It's always a risky idea. Uh, Andy's really trying oh. to make the bots work, but uh, I think it's just not working out for him. The warriors are, are cool, but... It's just not quite enough against these Janus. Oh, Ragnar's uh, depleted energy a little bit, so Andy has now seen the ghost of the metal extract. Oh, he had seen it, it's not anymore. I think this is going to finish the, right the, the game up Ooh. here. Yeah, this might. All these windmills are right next I to the I don't know, and Ragnar needs to be careful. He can't just dive straight into this, I don't think. True. Yeah, here we go. Kiting around, kill the expansion yeah. maybe. If he kills those two nanos or something, that'll uh, give him a nice bit of breathing space at least. The thing about the the Janus is that they, they overshoot quite a bit and they all fire at the same target and then that, that target yeah. is like super dead but then they have to reload and it's a bit awkward sometimes. It takes about 10 days. Oh, yeah, this is bad. So, Andy's definitely lost his base. I don't know if he... Uh, I think he's, he's got anything else in mind. GG, yeah. Yeah. 
that was well played. I usually see people, um, or I've, I've seen people start vehicles on this map and just do that straight from the, the beginning on this, like just Janus and Stumpy straight down the middle, but you have to make it work because yeah, you, you sort of fought in the expansion and stuff. Yeah, okay, a few minutes. Alright. Alright, so we're going to a, a third game. Andy picks the, the next map. Picking Avalanche. I think Avalanche is fairly common in Zero uh, K as well, so maybe he's uh, familiar with it. Oh, he's changed his mind. I'm going to Ravaged. Okay, here we go. Third place decider, <laughs> best of three, the final game. Seems the um, keyboard start then switch to uh, vehicles works well for Ragnar, but uh, still not good enough against Kartush, it seems. Because Kartush doesn't doesn't do that. Yeah, I, I think it def it's definitely map dependent, although Rag seems to do it everywhere. But um, I think the idea is it's just... Uh, it's just more winning and skirmishes. Stumpies and, and Janus are just a lot more effective at killing stuff. Yeah. And then it's, it's the killing stuff, but also surviving being killed as well. I guess Katush, <laughs> he probably just wins fast enough that he doesn't even need to worry about that stage of the game, but uh, I don't know. I think I think he would definitely swap to vehicles given the time. Mm. He, does, he does push uh, the hammers and thuds as long as he can, I think, a lot longer than than Ragnar would, but all right. I imagine we'll see bots out of Ragnar. I don't know, actually. He he, he does uh, he does he does go vehicles quite a lot. I'm hoping for air, air again, to be honest. It's so it's so risky. This is the decider game as well. You haven't got any oh, yeah. room to to play with, but it would be cool. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got the argument that of all the games that you wouldn't expect it, it's this one, isn't it? Because, you know, what a stupid idea. Oh, <gasps> he's doing it, he's doing it, he called it. Oh, yeah! The thing is, he's got that lab so close to the ramp that, <laughs> oh, he's done the same thing that he did the other <laughs> game where he made the air it. lab. Is he just baiting people? Is he just baiting the spectators? He did this before where he just made it a bit and then swapped into the vehicle lab. He's just trolling. <laughs> oh, Solo at the ramp. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, that's only because he said he started stalling E. But I mean, it's Probably blocking the, blocking any sort of raids coming past that. I think. That's a good point. Wait, can does is there actually a path though? 
to the back? I mm. guess yeah, there. you can get to the back, it's just not easy. Yeah. He's blocking all the <laughs> all that bit off. The, the important part is that his stuff can get to the back, but other people's stuff is going to have a hard time. I mean, this is, you know, this is how you play this map as Terran in StarCraft. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> so... wall it off. What do you mean, this map? You play every map that way. <laughs> true, true. Yes. Unless you like going to like a proxy barracks rush or something. Mm. Flying buildings when? <laughs> Funny, Andy also kind of did a similar thing, although he didn't block it as as tightly. Oh, so Ragnar has uh, just found a problem. His truck can't reach the nano turret it's meant to build. It <laughs> can't get behind all the wall that he's built. <laughs> I thought that was oh, the idea. Man. I thought the idea was that he was like walling it off. So oh, no, I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they can't pass really through that. I thought that. It. Yeah. I was... I was pretty sure that was yeah, intentional. He blocked it too much. If you if you just remove that one wind gen, everything would be just fine. The problem with wind gens, you can't even self D them because they explode so hard. You have to reclaim them. That's the idea, I think. <laughs> well. That might be the idea, but now Regna doesn't have any energy. How does he... He queued up... He queued up uh, Windgens with his con, but uh, his con can't get to the back of his base. That's a good point. Yeah, this could be an interesting experience for him. <laughs> Maybe he plans on reclaiming the Windgen with the Inano. I would imagine so, the one just above the vehicle. He needs to realize that, because that is uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, he's stuck. Yeah. If you click on the construction and push F2, it shows you how you can get through. The commander can, the constructor can't. <laughs> Might lose him the game. Yeah, that could. His factory's idle as well. And he's got... He's done this the the same start that he did before, where he builds a ton of constructors. So he's got two building windmills, and he's got five at his lab. He's made a nano as well. Yeah. He's really like anticipating to get a lot of uh, metal. Yeah, I mean, it nice, works, it works. nice D-gun. Yeah. Oh, Ragnar's just realised what's happened. Yeah. Oops. I bet he thought it was so clever faking out the airplane as well. <laughs> I'm surprised he was trying that in uh, in this <laughs> at this point. Yeah. He's trying new stuff out, even in the the deciding match. If you're gonna go out, go out in style, right? <laughs> this is a uh, best out of three, right? Yeah, this is the the last one. Three mechs is expanded into the middle this time for Randy. You don't see that very often. Three mechs, uh, three constructor expand, not mechs. No. So Andy has about almost twice the energy production of um, Ragnar, but their metal production is almost the same. Twenty-two versus twenty. Oh, Andy's swapping three into cons. vehicles already. Three cons is almost. Re reclaiming the lab. Under. I really like this for Mandy. He just needs to mm. to be careful with this con. I just. Uh... These flashes are actually gonna kill this LLT and all this yep. expansion. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's definitely hurt. painful. Yeah. He's really trying to get that self D to work, but it's never, <laughs> it's never like perfectly timed. None of that's time hard though. Five seconds, is, that's a lot of time. Ah, oh, Ragnar's gonna kill this next expansion as well. He's getting six mexes oh. for those flash. That's really. And the radar power at the back there as well. Well, he is not getting six mexes for those flash because he's not losing the flash. Yeah, that's well, he true. Might, he might stop and strike them. Though he might lose them. 
the flashes have also revealed the stumpy switch. They've already paid for themselves, I think. Yeah. Easily. Oh, the now. more fl more flashes on the right oh. in the middle. He's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna get all these as well. This is brutal. Ragnar's got two raiders. The metal of Andy. Why did he make two raiders, one next to the other? I guess he didn't notice. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. He's way ahead now. Yeah. Well, he's actually behind in overall metal produced. So, if he keeps it up, then he's going to be way ahead. He's 26 to 11 at the moment in terms of metal production, though, so... Stumpy's coming up here on the left side of the expansion. That's a nice idea, but there's not, aside from a few mechs, there's actually not much there. It's quite an expensive push. Yeah, he's sort of given up all his army now. Yeah. He's lost two two stumpies there to take out a few mechs and some laser turrets. That's okay, I think. Yeah, Rag, Rag's not got a big army anywhere, so it, it's a bit scrappy. That's true, yeah. It's not terrible. Ragnar knows where the commander is now. It's always fun. I'm loving the micro from each of these players. Yeah, this is really uh, a sweaty game. It's a lot going on. Oh wow, so those stumpies that went up on the left hand side, two died, one's almost dead and the other's slightly injured. Value. Arguably, yeah. <laughs> Andy is going in for the LLTD gun. He got it. <gasps> That's so That's risky, I, it's so scary to see that. What's this? Hey, what's this is, uh, Ragnar's just ahead on the health, but only just. This is very risky. Incredibly. That uh, LLT... Uh, LLTs gain really... gain experience really fast when they fire shoot at uh, commanders. Yeah. Oh, we've got Janus as well now. Ragnar's winning the attrition. Yeah. Okay, this is probably game. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deke up Ragnar. He tried. I mean, he was gonna lose otherwise, so it's worth a, worth a shot. So Ragnar goes through to the finals. Then. GG. No, he's no. He... All right. Um, Andy still gets twenty five euros, so uh, <laughs> I guess it's not uh not the end of the world for him, but yeah, third place. Not a bad result for someone that doesn't play this game actively at all. Yeah. I'd be I'd be happy with third place if I if I wasn't an active player. I'd be happy to get past round one to be honest. I'm terrible at one v ones. Give me a good team game any day of the week. All right. So uh, which map is the uh, first one? Uh, all right. Tundra. Yeah, we got a lot of big maps now for the grand final. Um. I wonder if Rag wants a little break, like a five minute break or something, just before we does do the deserve, last set. Does he deserve a five minute break is the question. <laughs> it's Ragnar. Mm. I mean, you've always got the question, obviously, you know, the five minute break's nice and all, but you're on the high from winning another series. Do you want the five minute break? It's a very sweaty uh, game that he's got. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Katush is not... Not an easy opponent at all, so uh, I'd, I'd take a break here. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Uh, I said, I called it earlier on, didn't I? Ragnar and uh, Katusha are the two favourites. You did! You, well, actually, you did, but you also called out, like, literally every other person who was currently in the running, so... <laughs> I don't know how much I can call you Mr. Nostradamus. Actually, was Nostradamus his first or his surname? I don't know. I'm looking up. <laughs> Michael D. Nostradame. So yeah, that was his surname, French. I, 
uh, they ask you a question, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, does the winner have any advantage at all? Um, no. That's okay. Well, uh, sorry. Um, I correct myself. The the winner has got to win. Uh, if if um, Ragnar, because he's coming from the losers, if he wins this best of five, then it goes to another best of five. That's pretty typical of a double double elimination tournament. So, all right. Because Katusha's in um, the winner's bracket, um, and he's not not dropped out of set yet. He only has to win this best of five, and then he's won the whole thing. So, um, oh, so he does get that 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 set advantage. Yeah, I should have clarified that. Okay. Um, and it doesn't say it on the bracket because I couldn't enter it in. But if um, if we if it goes to a next best of five, then we go to um, loser picks. So the first map will be uh, ravaged, I think, and then we'll go to losers loser picks after that. Why not have the loser of the last series pick? To start with. That works. That works. Yeah, we <laughs> could do that. I'll make it up as I go along. It makes a certain amount of consistent sense as well. Classic JavaScript developer. <laughs> oh, we'll solve everything with callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnar's a sponsored player. Oh, because, yeah, attack you gave him the laptop. <laughs> One of the things I was tempted to do, partly as a laugh, partly as it could be useful, is have like an alias function for TIE server. So the idea is, is that you could play under an alias. Or, you know, if you look at the profile, it shows you who it is and stuff. I was thinking that would be quite good for things like Taco and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to like give people nicknames. That'd be kind of cool. So you can uh, remember who they are, rename Smurfs and stuff like that. It's just all yeah. client side. All right. Um, That's how it plays with the clans. We start whenever you guys are ready. Yeah. Rag and Katouche. Katouche is just downloading it. Uh, just gonna get Andy in here. Yeah. Yo. Hey up. Unlucky. You did well. Good. Cheers. I got weaker as the tournament went on, but <laughs> Ragnar's really good. It's going to be a good final. Yeah. I'm kind of, kind of glad I don't have the uh, prospect of having to play Cartouche potentially two best of fives, though. Yeah. That seems like uh, an impossible task. Well, you got to work for the money. Do you, think, do you think that Ragnar's going to take a series, then lose another, or he's going to take two, or Katusha will win the first one? I'm going to I'm gonna call it. I think Katusha's going to just sweep it, I think. I'd he's love to see it. I'd love to see a back-to-back -back, uh, best of five, but... You think uh, he's going to 3-0 it? Uh, not 3-0. I don't think he's going to 3-0 it. I reckon he'll... Uh, right, I'm going to call it... Um, I, think, I, gonna... I don't think Artouche knows much about the water play, though, especially on the big map. I think he'll 3 1 it. I think 3 1. I'm partly thinking 3 2, but yeah, I think 3 1 for Katouche. I mean, obviously, I'm supporting Ragnar because I know him, but as a spectator, I'm going to be as impartial as possible. FK Man. Alright, here we go. Grand finals. And on Tundra, I've not seen this map at all yet. Um, I know it from old times, but uh, as a dual map, it's pretty much unheard of because it's so big. To be honest, it's not that big, really. 16 by 16. Uh, what size is Comet Catcher? Uh, 24? It's 16 it by 12. So this is this is actually pretty on par with, uh, with Comet Catcher. Well, but not really because the actual playing area is... Uh... It's yeah. not a small one than actual player. Player. You can build ships. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> they can't yeah. do much, but you can build ships. Yeah, you can. I guess you can make hovers, potentially. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The start positions are going to be interesting. Mm. I love the look of this map as well. The aesthetic is so good. Yeah. It's, it's probably clean. like a f 14 over 14 in terms of actual size.
Also, so what has a lot of uh, what do you think the uh, the strategy is here? Um, okay, I can call Ragnar's. He's going to fake out building an aircraft. <laughs> He's going to rush at Nano and then a second Nano and swap from bots to vehicles. That's what he's done every single game we've watched. Well, I mean, this whole center area, right? There's so many mixes here. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's going to key. All become about that. And the 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 sides, there's a lot, but they're kind of just like single lanes, so you can you can get away with just uh, a few LLTs, I think, and and some units. But it's yeah. like 14 mixes here in the center. What about features? Just trees, isn't it? There's no metal. Some cool yeah. trees. It's, I don't know, there's no doubt in my mind that you really have to press the center here and like the sides are second uh, secondary goals. We've got mirrored stats, so it seems they both agree that these positions are the best. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I personally would have gone to the right or, of Ragnar or left of uh, Katush. Now bots versus vehicles is going to be interesting. I don't know if there's any play where bots can get up the hills that vehicles can't. I really like that. I really like the height map of this map. Aww. One yeah. interesting thing about the, the mountains is it will provide um, a big radar shadow. That's a good squads point. of units going up and down the sides. True. Mm. I didn't consider that at all. I mean, look at this cute uh, little water area. It's so aesthetic. Good place to build a shipyard, really. Deep water. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let's make um, uh, a millennium there. All right, we've got vehicles from Katouche. He's got vehicles. Oh, wow. I'm assuming Ragnar's going to start off with bots. I'm not sure. He's got the three mexes. I, uh, usually, three mexes indicates vehicles. Yeah, not always, but. Then. A lot of wind as well. He's getting two LLTs, so... It... Okay, he's going bots. bots. He's going bots. Yeah. He's going air. He's going bots. <laughs> you do this against me. Yeah, he's done it every <laughs> every so game. the vehicles, um, they can oh. get up every ramp. However, some of the side ramps are trickier. So the one to the left of Ragnar, for example, uh, that bit there is the only bit they can get up. The longer bit there, they can't get up. At least a, a core construction boss, anyway. I think this will play out quite well for a 1v1. People look at maps like this and they think, no, nah, it's not a 1v1 map at all. It's just they only ever play it in team games. But I think maps like this are plenty viable for 1v1. It's a long, it can be, potentially be a long game, but it's still, still good fun. I think this could also be a short game as well. Yeah, definitely, because the the mid rush distance is it's not that it's not massive for vehicles. It's really a alien looking uh, map as well. The uh, bizarre in a good way. Yeah, it, it without having snow everywhere, it looks cold, desolate, and barren. Ragnar not using any fleas this time. I assume they can't cross that water because it's deep enough. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Just like that, you know, I thought they couldn't cross the other water though, so what do I know? Is this water like coming in and out? Has they got tide? Is that just a graphical I thing? Know. I don't know. It's kind of cool if that's the actual... Uh... Yeah, yeah it's waves. That looks awesome. Graphical thing. But it, I yeah, it's a graphical thing. Still very it's cool. Creates artifacts. Interesting. Cartouche leaves his lab unguarded. Yeah. Hmm. That is unconventional. <laughs> it's ballsy. Like this is more defensive than usual for Ragnar, I think. So Katusha is, is definitely valuing the early mid push with yeah. the commander. I I think. 
I think this is probably better. You can, if you can lock down all this area and get a, a quick defensive line, I think it, it really pays off. Wagner's getting punished for no solos. Had to reclaim a few wins with his commander. Oh. <laughs> Many um names jumping around. Is this uh, Jeffy going to get the constructor? Most likely. If Jeffy doesn't, the uh, instigator would. Ooh, we <laughs> got it. That's a big deal. It's a lot of value. These five peewees uh, could, could take out this LLT and all this expansion though. Yeah. Cartouche can see it coming, but he's built a lot of cons, so he's a bit light on army at the moment. Yeah, he got to the center first. LT on the LLT. He... Not nice. quite in time. Oh. Took out... Oh no, he did. He took out Pee Wee. He should be able to oh, get this constructor if he goes in on it. Yeah. They're not. One of them's blocking the other. There we go. Okay, so uh, he's got the constructor. Didn't quite get the third mix, right but he's not, he's not draggy. He's just right clicking once. So uh, Kratush got to the center first, but he can't seem to stabilize the moment. There's these mixes in the center that are worth 3.6 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did Katush get that one early? Yeah, this one on the right side, yeah. 3.6. Yeah. So that's... It's uh like he took 4.5k versus Ragnar's 3. Yeah. Ragnar picking up some solars here, maybe? Just one. Those uh, LTs aren't ideally placed. I'm surprised that Ragnar's not tried to expand to the right at all. He tried on the left, but got shut down. Oh, he's sending a con now. Look at the amount of constructors in Katusha's base. That is a lot. Getting more. He, he, well, he's just got constructors on repeat. Has he not realised? I think it's fine. I mean, he's got a lot of metal from the middle. Yeah, he's getting this. He's getting this next three point six mix. He's going to have so much metal to work with. Uh, oh my goodness! Yeah. It's like he's I mean, just... he's not got any nanos, so you've got to take that into account. Yeah. Ragnar's on seventeen. Katusha's on twenty-five metal. Yeah, it's a big lead. That is huge. It just it's just this comp push to the middle. Like it's really paid off this early on. Oh, there's just so many mixes in the center. Yeah. Spots. He's really locked it down now. Rag swapping into vehicles. I mean, a gators are not gonna do it. Like most likely, they will not be able to break through the line. Um, Morty is suggesting that you look at uh, Ragnar's base. Hmm. Hmm. Not, yeah. Not sure. He, he's obviously swapped vehicles. That's classic. <laughs> I, I don't really think that's noteworthy at this stage. That's actually Ragnar. No. He's now on twenty-five. Uh, that's two probably means the gators. Not quite picked up the constructor yet, but he realizes they should do. Apparently, there was a ping in Ragnar in uh, Ragnar's base, but I don't know what the ping was. <laughs> this fucking curse. Wait, how did we? Where did the uh, extra ten come from? We had like forty-four. <laughs> Honestly, not sure.
These four gators around the right side should should kill this LLT and the constructor. Stumpy's out now. Stumpy versus Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, Ragnar's taken out that 3.6 mix. Yeah. It's something. He needs he needs a bit more than that, but it's something. NLTs just don't do very well against Stumpy's or Raiders is the problem. Even yeah. Beamers. You see some James is coming in though. That might change things up. As long as one doesn't shoot the other by mistake. Oh, a couple of uh -huh. instigators down the bottom. He's not the right for right. micro'd them, so the LT might. Okay. He's getting the mixes. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that Ragnar didn't send more there. It's quite a crucial part of the map. And, like, Katusha sent a bunch of gators and he's, like, really blocked it off. Looks but... like GG already. Yeah, I think this is, uh. This is closing in. I think I think it's Katusha's a massive advantage, but Ragnar could pull out a sudden victory from this if Katusha makes an overstep, so it's not worth resigning just yet. No, it's just Katusha's a lot more metal income. Right? Fifty three versus twenty three. Yeah, Jesus. it's just, just completely different. This is not going well for Ragnar. <laughs> it, it is really just a lot of these games come down to the the early harass. And just mm. losing one constructor early on or, or expansion just makes such a big difference. Well, it's really a map thing. There's just a lot of mexes. Like if you if uh, if the map had uh, instead of five mexes, just one that gave as much metal, it'd be much easier to defend. Yeah. It's 17.4 versus what 11.12 k, sorry 11.2 k of metal difference. That's huge. Yeah. Is closing. Yeah, I think Ragnar needs to try for some sort of comp snipe play here or yeah. maybe tap out. <laughs> okay, he's going for an air lab. He might try something <laughs> cheeky. He's actually doing the air lab. He's reclaiming the, bot the vehicle lab as well. Yeah, it's just what you do. At this point, you know you're not going to win a, a ground war, so you've just got to try some sort of cheese snipe on the commander. Problem is, there's a couple of instigators oh, just like that Ragnar may not be aware of. Yeah, he can't see those instigators there behind the trees, and Ragnar doesn't have a radar at his base. So if he flies any, yeah, he's going for gunships. If he flies yeah, to the left, those instigators are going to know, and he's screwed. I think at this point, if you're Katouche, you've got to know something's up because you're not seeing any units coming out. Usually, a good player will like realize that and and just build some safety anti-air. The um, the Ragnar sent the the three stumpies that or four stumpies that he sent around the edge have, have wiped out all that expansion. Oh yeah, it's definitely oh, yeah. not all of it. But they somewhere, might have yeah. an base in a moment as well. It's great, but I just don't think it's enough. Katush is floating 2k metal. Well, Katush has like 15 stumpies in the middle. How's he, how's Ragnar gonna deal with that? So, uh, blade Ragnar's wings, I heard. Yeah, it is. not blade wings, banshees. Like, blade wings from from Katush. You know, you know how oh, right. takes takes banshees got ages to kill a single stumpy. That means. Uh... Oh, he's, he knows the Banshees are on their way now. Does he care? Cartouche can switch into fighters so quickly and easily now, though. <laughs> he's got five gunships trying to target this commander. That's definitely oh, not happening. 
completely take down the gunships. Gunships are not great at killing no. uh, T1 anything. T <laughs> two gunships, they ruin people's days. That said, these these ones are doing better than I expected. Ragnar's going to lose his calm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he is. All right, that's game one. Pretty decisive victory from Katush. Just, just too passive. Yeah, like I said, I think it's just decided at the start. A lot of the time, you you lose constructors, and it it, it it's just sort of a an exponential snowball after that because you just get less metal to work with mm. right from the start. I think this map uh, isn't Ragnar's strength. This style of he seems to struggle against drone on uh, Moon Q twenty, the big macro st style of maps. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is a new version. Can someone uh, post a link to this? Wait, my lobby might get it. Oh, they even made it? Come on, spring lobby. You can do it. Yeah, I got it. Uh, we need to do the boxes yeah. here as well. Um, yeah. I can't see what that looks like. The wrong way. So oh. it's top left and bottom. So that's bottom left, top right. So you want to split so, uh, C, not just C. What is it about Cartouche that makes that's him it. so good? It's a bit of everything that game. So he played aggressively, but he didn't overextend. It's it's that perfect balance. Because if you play defensively, you don't get rushed. If you play too aggressively, then you get you know flanked or whatever, and you lose. So he had the perfect combination of harassing Ragnar and massively extending himself, uh, but never doing so in a way that overextended himself. Ice has posted the link now. Just I've seems got it. like it's all good. Really it seems like he has a really yeah, good handle does. on the, uh, I don't know, balancing out economy and uh, units construction. And, uh... I think Ragnar failed at harassing him, so it was a big map. And as Jazzcash was just saying, you know, Ragnar doesn't do so great at the bigger maps. I think that's a weakness that he couldn't exploit on this one. He couldn't do the flanking maneuvers of like three tanks at a time sort of thing very well. He did it a couple of times. Every time he did it, he did really well, but he just didn't do enough of it, I think. The the macro versus micro skill set is really interesting, because a lot of players, I, I'd say I'm a, a micro player, my macro is not as good. Which, it really, it's interesting in a tournament setting where there's loads of different types of map. But um, I think, I, I'd say Katush is just an all-round uh, a good player at everything. Oh yeah, definitely. Some, some random person jumped in. Hi, can I play? <laughs> Hereth, no, this is a tournament final. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, there's 50 people watching. Can I just join in? <laughs> Optimistic, I like it. <laughs> he really wants to play. I think he's going to get kicked if he's not careful. Nice, let him play one. <laughs> Sub out Ragnar. Oof. <laughs> you surprised us. starting um <laughs> when they start it i guess i don't yeah. know if they're taking a little break or that's fair enough yeah if i was car i'd be like no just just hammer it down at this point no breaks just just start it <laughs> definitely outsmart the barbarians map i think it's this yeah. scenario all oh. right Seth's Ravine. This is one of my favourite maps. It's, I've not seen it in a long time. 
Um, but it, I remember I used to like it. It was kind of StarCrafty because you've got like the base on a, on a hill with a, a ramp coming down to the low ground. I think I don't know if there's several levels of, of height on this map, but um, yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of a StarCraft map. It's a, it's a pyramids. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Can you reclaim those? No, I think I don't remember like if they used to have um, no. reclaimable features, but they're just zero metal and zero energy. The trees rule zero zero as well. Oh yeah, it's deceiving. Wait, this is a a remade version. I'm not sure. What what what's different? I'm not it sure. Say anything for it. Maybe they added some detail. The uh, mix is oh. a, a kind of interesting. Oh. No, there's nothing mid either. <laughs> All clumped up. Oh yeah, Seth Rock one is not got anything. I'm sure that used to have uh, metal in it. Hmm. No, the old version doesn't have metal there either. All oh, right. Okay. Just a big chunk of uh, blurry texture. <laughs> Right, here we go, second game. How much how much uh, metal is that in all those mixes? One, two, it's eight times one point six. It's like thirteen or something. That's a lot. Twelve point eight. Quick math. Ooh, is that an energy storage? Oh, he's cancelled it. I thought we were going to see shenanigans. <laughs> oh, shenanigans! We've got yeah. shenanigans! Oh, yes! Wait, yes. Shenanigans. Is he going to full air, or is he just going to get the one bomber, then reclaim the lab? I reckon it'll just be the one bomber, reclaim the lab, but... Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Most likely. He's one queued bomber up the bomber. Yeah. Transport probably as well. That would make sense. Let's see if it actually pays off. Like, let's see, you know, if he does it really well. Let's see if it, you know. Well, Rack has spread off. out his uh, wind farms a lot. So I would mm. expect to, like, suddenly take out a load of those. I could see one bomber coming through here and, and killing that. Quite a lot well, of yeah, that. Well, it'll be don't get me wrong, but it's not going to just wipe all of them out in one go, I don't think. I think he's supposed to start reclaiming the lab soon. Yeah, I mean, he's making windmills when the wind is at 20. Sensible. Just trying to get as much energy as possible, but... He's reclaiming it. Okay, there reclaiming the lab now. I think he might want to oh, have picked up that mix. Well, he's also he's making a... Blade. Why one blade wing? That just helps yeah. if there's Utility. any, like, uh, yeah, fleas behind right. his winds. Yeah. His commander can only cover one side. That's a good point, yeah. He's got it on land. <laughs> oh, he's got it on patrol as well, though, so... Okay. He set the bomber so you got to attack right where Ragnar's not built next is. <laughs> like, swapping into like vehicle as well. He, let's compare, like, by the time he finishes his uh, factory, let's see what, you know... How the out. how the two players compare in terms of uh, amount of wind gens and so Katush doesn't know anything so he's he's um oh, attacking the <laughs> he's yeah. attacking this spot but it'll come back around once he sees this stuff uh he's uh, he mismickering it so Rag's got two AA already it's this one run is that really mickering this bomber either got one max that uh that's really not enough. And now Rex probably feeling super confident. Why is this cartouche still making cons? That's crazy. This one blade wing is not going to be enough to stop all these fleas getting in. Oh, that's brutal. Chain reaction. Oh, it's doing a good job. He's like, 
He's still making cons. Oh, is that? So yeah, that's intentional. Crazy. Yeah, so he's 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 quickly um, swapping between each fleet to keep them all stunned. You got six seconds after you after you zap each one. That's good. Good micro. Uh, but there's there's okay. six more fleets coming in. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying oh, his man. best. He is still no. making cons. That's crazy. Yeah. He's gonna lose all his energy. Yeah. Now let's see how good his blade wing micro really is. Blade wing. Oh, he got two ones up. That's <laughs> it's not bad. How does that work? Oh. Commander, that was pretty decent. That was a good hold. Good. That was solid. I think Ragnar went too much in for a meme of like, let's just use fleas. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's like. I, th I still think Rags ahead here because. Agreed. Oh, I don't know actually. I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, Katush got four cons out. They're producing the same amount of metal. Um, Katush is mm, slightly higher on energy. Uh, Ragnar has three cons walking around. Katush has four, but they're five, but they're all guarding and stuff in the middle of his base at the moment. So yeah, actually, I think Katush did really well out of this ultimately. Superb hold of the blade wing right now, that was a brilliant idea. If I was Ragnar now, I'd be worried about a mine layer somewhere on the map. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's next game. It's saving it. Yeah, it has to be the final game. No, the next game, uh, next game is uh, Paradise Lost. I think uh, Ragnar's going to do better on that, we thought, because there's water. Oh, you get sea mines. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on it. I think. I think uh, Katush is is going to be decent with water. Yeah. I don't know. People uh, overplay it, I think, and and they talk about subs and destroyers and, and these other ones. But <laughs> I don't know, man. I just like decade spam. I think it's so good. This is already super impressive from Kart. The fact that he's uh, started there, got a bomber, didn't do much with it, and he still looks to be taking back uh, equ equal map control. Well, Racket is also just throwing his units in a few at a time is part of the problem. I think he got confident and then sort of doubled down on the loss. Or doubled down the bad engagement. So these uh, two vehicle constructors from Katusha are a lot faster expanding than uh, mm. the, the single constructors from Ragnar. So he's, he's actually he's taking back map control probably quicker than Rag soon. to a vehicle. Guessing it'll be uh, Stumpy and Janus, yep. Yeah. One shell shocker, Hands one constructor on repeat. Hands up if you're in the least bit surprised. Bread and butter, this is his bread and butter. Yeah, he knows how to play it. There's a lot of gators. Yeah, but that is a bit of a choke point. Pee-wee's not too bad for that. Yeah, for sure. He could, I think he could definitely... Someone made a very good point. Ragnar's base is actually uh, missing one of the mexes that was bombed. Um, he's oh, not yeah. realizing he built it. 
Oh, that's kind of a bug, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's crazy to miss. No, I mean that it, it, you don't see the. Uh, oh, the it's, got, it's not got metal. Yeah, that's Could true. Yeah. Be? Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's a alpha, bug. alpha. By the way, alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't even have matchmaking support yet. <laughs> One day. To be fair, that is a good peewee micro against that uh, uh, radar. <laughs> you nearly killed it. Oh, the gators. <laughs> Cart's got to be careful. Oof. I lost a big chunk of them there. That's pretty brutal. It's going to pull back to this troop point. So that's given uh, Rag quite a lot of metal and he's opened up this side okay, of the map now. Ragnus, six mixes. Can Ragnus, can Ragnus stop that uh, stumpy uh, group approaching his defense? Uh, they're both very low on energy right now. Yeah, 3.8 wind. Oh, so Janus just fired and a tree uh, with zero that beamer did. Shot. <laughs> that beamer did a good job. Mm, very good job. Okay, Card's not pushing his uh, his luck too much. No, coming back out. Here. Rex coming in with his with his own vehicles. And the commanders. This could go either way. Rex com is uh, is already taking a beating. Oh yeah, massively. I'm surprised he's pushing so far forwards with the comm. Is he trying to bait him out or something? All his uh, all his tanks are going to the wrong place. It's that one blade wing coming in clutch. It's a long term investment. So Rex stalling energy because he's trying to build an ADV solo with uh, Regnus two nanos. To the left. Three nanos. I think this Regnus not expanding to the right. That's a shame. He doesn't need the metal, does he? Oh wait, that's, that's a big clump of stuff. He always need metal. Kratush has a lot of... Uh, more than one and a half K. Ragnar's uh, 27 against 37 metal production, so he's, he's behind on that. Yeah, because he's not sending a con to the right side. Yeah. The th thing is, he doesn't need the metal, and uh, Kartushi is actually floating 1,300 metal. Hey, you always want metal. It, like, you can always he's not spend win it. The game with this yeah, metal. yeah, it's just not enough at this point, I think. Ragnar's uh, nano turrets are now helping the factory. That should, uh, yeah, there we are. He's spending his metal now. Two cons have done a good job for Katush. Yeah, really good job. There's a whole bunch of light laser turrets there as well. How long has Rag had this uh, constructor idol on the right? It's um, been, been a, a while, I think. The game. Yeah. Probably five minutes at least. Now okay. he's making a T2 lab. Uh -huh, ah, T2. It's I thought we'd see T2 at this point because. I think it's a bit too soon though. It's quite a forky nice. map. The nice. interesting thing about Reg's composition is that he can get Janus because he's arm. And they're really good at attrition if you uh, micro them well. You just bring them forward and get a few shots off. It does, yeah. does pretty well against the Raiders. It's, it's good at attrition both in terms of you poking them, but it prevents them from doing hidden runs on you. And even if they commit to an attack. The first barrage is so strong, you're always thinking, oh, hang on, have I made a mistake? Do I need to back off and come back later, sort of thing? I love these three artillery from Rag just slowly chipping away at the defences of 
Katush. Yeah. Starting to establish like a clear pork lane now. Yeah. Oh, the piece is to working out. Oh, yeah, he has sent a vehicle construct to those other ones now. Now oh, his T2 lab is done. Just have to turn up. <laughs> Rag loves his bulldogs. Yep, there we are. One bulldog queued on repeat. That's all it is. <laughs> I'd like to see one advance cut out just to make those mechs in base. Yeah. Next, oh, the nanos will come now. up quickly. So that many of these there. Oh, Ooh. I just have attacked uh, Ragnar. Took out a little of his tanks on the right there, on the top. Yeah. I'm surprised we've not seen uh, air, because there's a lot of potential for you know you, you go around the edge of the map and basically you avoid see being seen. Start. Yeah, but I mean, like at this point. Usually, instead of going tech two, I'd expect people to go air and try bombers and stuff. And Katusha's uh, cortex as well, so I'd have thought you'd got some blade wings. They'd have been really useful. Oh wait, he's gonna try and push from the right. I think. Oh, uh, he's taking forever to hurt the uh, raiders. That might be GG right oh, now. Rag heard you. He's just building anti-air. Yeah, this is not looking good for Rag. Oh, that's a lot of raiders. And all his army is on the left side. Serious trouble. Damn, yeah. GG. Probably. That's a shame. Oh, first bulldog's turned up. Yeah, a bit, a bit too late. And it's just the problem when you swap to T2 is that you just get this downtime period. <gasps> oh, I think if his car wasn't there, he had the units to hold. Yeah, 30 seconds later, different story. Yeah, if he just noticed, he could have survived that like a few seconds earlier. Alright, GG, we're going to the third game. That was a shame. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought Rag had that one in the bag, to be honest. After Katush went mm -hmm. air and didn't get a lot done with it, I thought Rag would just like take the whole map and explode. But yeah. I think that the metal made a difference at the start as well, because uh, Katush could get a lot of constructors and just uh, catch up with the expansion quite quickly. So we should be going to Paradise Lost now, which is our water map. <laughs> Katus is like, got, got no idea what's <laughs> going on with the scene maps. You build ships, they float. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah, e even if you don't know the units too well, I think you can keep it simple and just uh, yeah, play a micro game or, or do some sort of cheese with the early yeah. units. But if it goes what, on a while, I think Rag will get the advantage because he knows the sea a bit better. I think that's fair. What? Uh, what's the next map after this one? Um. <laughs> It is Savino and then Nuclear Winter. Yeah, Savino is like um, a snowy map as well. I just don't like everybody keeps playing it with like huge boxes. To me, it seems like it should be played with like 15 or 10 split. Hmm. I don't know if it always makes a difference. Sometimes it does, I guess. This is a really big map, so I'm curious to how well Ragnar is going to do on it. <laughs> this one, yeah. Well, he has played it in the last two weeks. They have played it some. I would say it's pretty porky. Like, those two passages are... Although, I suppose on sea, it's kind of hard to really stabilize <laughs> any any sort of... It's porky in, t in a team game. In a 1v1, it might be a bit harder. Yeah. It's just that there's no way of stopping destroyers with any defense. Well, we'll see. Look, uh, look at this little island. Ah, damn, I can't uh, ping yet. Oh, 
Oh, okay. We've got some interesting starts already. Rag yeah. might start on land. Oh, I like this. Look at this it. makes it interesting. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that island near uh, Ragnar's start. The one on his left. The big one or the tiny one? No, the, the tiny one. The one point. Tell me, yeah. tell me it doesn't look cute. It's oh, the one cute. with all the trees on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played this map with Ragnar a few weeks ago and he liked to start land. So Ragnar's gone call this time, and Katusha's gone arm. <laughs> Katusha's suggesting that he may have started in a bad spot, though. Yeah, I like to see start on this map. Yeah, but I think um, I think in the middle, it's uh, I don't know, I don't know actually. It, I it's think it's, it's pretty defended. I prefer yeah, start on one side. I'm actually scared that they both started differently. So Ragnar says he's gone vehicles, so he can I... build the amphibious constructors. Yeah, I've seen this a lot from Reg. He does it because um, he likes to get uh, land constructors to build windmills all the way at the back, and you know they're just safe and yeah, it's defended. But it, yeah, it just it just gives up a bit too much tempo. I feel. We'll see. Yeah, I think you jump in the sea too late. I think Katusha will just keep this simple and uh, just do do what he knows, which is constructors and, uh, and probably corvettes. Yeah. Oh, this can build the armor transport. Could it always build an armor transport? I thought that was just the hovel lab. It's pretty cool. What can build the armored transport, sorry? The sea, the sea lab can build um, uh, an armored transport ship. I don't know if that's the same as the, the hover one, but... Um... No, it's not. The hover one is actually a hovercraft. This is a ship. Right. Uh, and the core tier 2 vehicles can build that an underwater sense. vehicle, which is like 20,000 health. I really prefer that you know, if they started uh, like the same kind of start. Ragnar has just reclaimed his vehicle lab. Yeah, but now he's going to go see. Vehicle at the same time. Yeah, sensible. I've seen him do this a lot. I think it. Yeah. It's not. Like like I said, I think it's just tempo. It's probably it, it will pay off if he can uh, get his lab down and you know, start getting some of the map, fun. but. Nanobar or Doc. Katusha started with two constructors expanding and his commander expanding as well, so I, yeah. I feel like he's gonna get a sea advantage pretty quick. I think, yeah. Sends to be Ragnar is building the urchin first, though. Does that prevent any harassment? Oh, that. I thought the. Uh, I thought she had new sound. I guess not. Well, well uh, it's curious to see if this uh, land start is uh, up to snuff against the sea start. Yeah, there we go. So Katusha's got his lab on, on repeat, just decades. 99 of them on repeat, just in case the 99 yeah. runs out. <laughs> yeah, you never know. We might <laughs> want to mix like a 1% of construction units or something. Um. I don't know. I, this is usually just because you want to take really fast map control and just kill everything. But yeah, the fact he's not got any constructors assist in the lab. Now Ragnar has built he's the control boats rather than these fast assault corvettes. Yeah, so Ragnar actually knows a bit more about C. So be interesting to see uh, how he plays this differently. Yeah, but he might. He might have. Uh... Beaten himself on start. Mm. This expansion is so quick from Katush, he's getting so all these mixes. That said, he's only slightly ahead of Ragnar in terms of metal production 17 versus 19. 
no, sorry, 28 versus 19. Yeah, okay, that's that's a world of difference. The thing about, uh, thing about decades and corvettes is that you don't really have much to raid, except the main base. It's true. Unlike with the sub. There's a few more coming in now. That's not gonna be enough. Out of that torpedo launcher. Yeah, torpedo launcher would be very effective. You will get that radar. Those uh, sea raiders are, are actually expensive. Assault frigates now, which will beat the corvettes, I think. Why did Ragnar make a uh, troll boat? It's kind of strange. Katush has uh, really <laughs> underestimated his build power that he needs here. He's stalling energy a bit and he's got his, his metal is growing up so fast, he can't spend it. Oh, let's see what happens at the bottom there. No, save your con. He needs to save his con. There we go. I think nice. you could have targeted the con down there. Pardon, sorry? Say that again, I didn't hear you properly. I think you could have targeted the con at the bottom there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. And you could have stayed the other side of this, so they couldn't hit him either with the torpedoes. Yeah. That, uh... Ragnar killed that top con. He's doing a good job of, uh... Pushing this back. Yeah. Thing is, once you've grabbed the mixes underwater, it's hard to kill them. Yeah. Until yeah. so you get some sub or something over there. Yeah, Rex got a well, sub, but it'll be a long time before it gets there. Rex Q is two corvettes, a patrol boat, assault frigate, a sub, and a constructor on repeat. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Healthy mix. Mm. Wait, does the comm have a uh, sonar? Uh, not sure. Guess not. You should be able to see it by now, I thought. You might have a very small yeah, sonar. He's capturing it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, wait, this no, com the, like the comp can die now to the Corvettes. I think it's it GG. Above the water. Uh, its head yeah, is. Its head sticks out. <gasps> uh, oh, no. Does he oh, know where man. the deep end is? Like... Can't de gun. Oh, that's such a shame. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, GG's. Yeah, that's it, we're done. That went pretty quick. That went... Yeah, it's only 11 o'clock. Six, seven <laughs> hours? Okay, maybe not as quick as I thought it was going to be, but... Uh, I think I think it's because we held up the games to, to spectate <laughs> yeah. them all. Which that was kind of disappointing. Like yeah. Really not a fantastic finish, but... Um... Cobbley's crouch ability. <laughs> GG's, GG's. Yeah. Alright, so uh, Katusha's getting, uh, what is it, 100 and... let's have a look. 153 euros, Rag will get 67, Andy will get 25, right? Yeah, and that's Rag versus Andy to see who's third place. Oh, didn't we do that? Doesn't say you have here. Oh yeah, we did, sorry, yeah, we did, my bad. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> we're all, we're all done now. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to head, head off the night now. I'm shattered. Yeah, it's gone on quite a bit, but now, uh, now we can do a uh, thirty, a uh, sixteen versus sixteen. Game. <laughs> I'll skip that one. Thanks. Yeah. I'm alright. Yeah, like... Alright. Hey, thanks for the tournament, Jess. Yeah. yeah. Good games. Good props. GGS. Thank right. you for all. Thank you for hosting it, and thank you for allowing us to commentate with you. You're welcome. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll do some more at some point. Yeah. Thanks everyone for playing. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. GG's. Bye, Z's. Right, see ya. See ya.